Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Double A here with your favorite local podcast. It's just another Friday night. We are live. We are here. It is Friday. You know what that means. We get our buzz on. And we bullshit around. We talk uh, talk to everybody here that wants to wait, uh, talk and listen and jam out with us. Uh, and remember what we always like to say, seize the day and do whatever it takes. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of the mind. A journey into the wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. The hell? (laughs) Where are we just into right now? It's Friday. (laughs) Why the hell am I over here for? Why am I by myself? Up is down and black is white, Double A. What's going on, my brother? Welcome back to just another Friday night with... Is it Adam Adamantium now? What yeah. the hell? The whole, the whole shtick here is uh, is uh, up to do about nothing, I guess. <laughs> MC Chuck? <laughs> Chuck MC? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Also, too, I'm, I'm better dressed than I was for uh, for work today, so uh, we'll lose the monkey suit for now. Uh, Double A, how was your week, man? What was going on in the world today? Uh, for my world, it sucked. <laughs> uh, my little Twilight Zone, it sucked. Yeah, uh, but it's Friday now. It's over. It's let, done. Let me tell you, brother, work felt like a true Twilight Zone for me to, this week as well because it was completely <laughs> not fun, completely insane, and completely uh, a shitty week. <laughs> Truly shitty week, man. So, uh, yeah, we're going to hope that tonight gets a little bit better. Uh, it will get better. Get a lot better <laughs> hanging out with the Friday Night Faithful and all you Friday Nighters. Guys, what are you thinking about uh, our, our weird little intro? Uh, who's in the house? You know how we like to do things. Uh, I'm going to seize control back here from Double A. Uh, doing a great job there uh, leading us in. Did you guys like that? Something different? Uh, one of my favorite uh, Garth and his pre- uh, Punisher stories, Up is Down and Black is White. <laughs> that is a, a, a really, really cool uh, set there, but guys, uh, you know how we like to do things here. The first thirty minutes, we invite you to join us, join in the conversation. Uh, tell us what's up. Tell us hello. How was your week? How's your Friday night go- going and getting started already? Uh, let us know who's in the house. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cousin Let here says hi, love. Hi, handsome. Co- hi, hi, handsome Carlitos. <laughs> uh, hi, beautiful cousin Let. And she says, I thought it was only my catsy. Uh, no, sometimes we like to lead you down the path of disbelief uh, <laughs> into a realm of, of, what do they say, imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very cool. Uh, but I do have some stuff to kick us off. Okay. A little bit here. All right. So uh, number one, I don't think he's here. I'll wait a few minutes to see if he gets here. But first off, and I know you told me not to do this, but you, I did it. It was done. Uh-huh. It was done by us because these were paid for by the Just Another Friday Night podcast. <laughs> Guys, these are the headsets that Double A has on that we started with, and 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 I, you know, I've since bought myself a set. <laughs> but Double uh, A had bought himself a set too, but his lovely wife uh, needed to make use of them. <laughs> she and, needed them for work. And and we don't we don't. Uh, hey, she's a nurse, so she gets she <laughs> yeah. gets uh, she can do what she wants. But. <laughs> But I went ahead and said, you know what? I got to take care of my podcast partner here. I got to get double A set, some new new swag, new gear, new drip, as the Damn. young people say. So uh, take it. let's get these all plugged in here for Damn. you, and we'll get those taken care of, guys. So uh, for our audio listeners, man, uh, guys, what we're getting here is a, a brand new uh, headset from One One Audio. Those are the ones I wear. They're giving us no money. Uh, I wish they did. Um, guys, if y'all are listening. It's got all the cool bells and whistles here, Double A. But um, yeah, let me get you the right the right cord here. But that's what we're doing. Double uh, A, adrenalize me, or really, you should be telling me to adrenalize <laughs> you. We should, we're doing things backwards here, and and I'll, and I'll read the news. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what's going on in the world of pop culture, my brother? Anything happened this week? Interesting. Uh, they opened the Avengers campus. Yeah, uh, so how cool that's, does that sound? Yeah, that's awesome. Man, uh, it looked great from the pictures I saw of Rob Layfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, just a great, great campus. So. I'm gonna dis yeah disconnect your your that set, and I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in this set. And you tell me how it sounds, bro. Bobrowski. Oh yeah. Much better. Oh. <laughs> you can adjust the up and down too on that. Okay. Yeah, guys. So Double H has got himself a, a brand new headset here for the audio listeners. We always want to let them keep them informed. Some people just listen to us just talk on on. on yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we've seen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is kind of cool. You know what I mean? So, um, 
But yeah, man, Avengers Campus. Yeah, I the cannot Avengers wait Campus to see. came out. Uh, Cruella came out. I saw that movie. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. I saw it. Uh, how I, was uh, Emma Stone? I, I liked, liked it. It was good. It was set in seventies London, so uh, it had like a lot of uh, punk feel. Okay. Of that scene. Okay. Uh, you know, the music was great. The soundtrack was great. You know, had the Doors. It had the Stooges. It had Rolling Stones. Nice. Yeah, very different for. Uh, or like a Disney, a Disney movie, yeah. you know. It, I have to remember it was a Disney movie a lot of times, you know. Uh, Emma Watson, is that the older actress? Yes, yes. Right. I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm, I'm. I can't remember because I know there's like Emma Stone and then Hermione and, and Hermione. Who is and, Emma? I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. So, but she was in there. She did great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. She was awesome. Very nice. Uh, Very nice. Then we saw. Uh, the Quiet Place. Did we talk about that one? Uh, we didn't talk. We talked with Gabe that we had seen it, but we're not getting too much yeah. into it for a special reason, which we I, may reveal. I posted a story though that you know that was finally the reveal because you know uh, we didn't know. Still, it was right. kind of like where did the creatures come from? Yeah, right. So, and, and they don't. They can't see. So you're asking yourself like, did these guys build a spacecraft? They don't seem like that and, type and of. Even uh, my wife was like, how the how the hell did they pilot a spaceship? Yeah, you know? right. And I was right. like, uh, I don't know. So. Uh, if you go to the Friday Night Faithful, our group, I posted the uh, the article that John Krasinski himself revealed where they came from. So that's, that's pretty right. cool. It was pretty cool. That's right. So, yeah, a pretty neat article, uh, especially referring to, you know, how kind of like – because the, the creatures in – Quiet Place remind me very much of like the aliens from Alien. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they yeah. could, they you know, how do they travel? They don't seem like that. that yeah. type, they're, the, the hands are all like – Long yeah, they're weird. intelligent, but they're not intelligent necessarily mm -hmm. in that way. Like, she'd be like, oh. right, right, like mechanically, <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is so funny because you can use the xenomorph skin in Fortnite and you're like carrying guns. Oh, and okay. Okay. So it's like kind of weird. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, so he kind of says like, you know, like wherever they came from and they were like on this meteorite and they already had bodies that were immune to most things. So mm -hmm. it's like pretty much if the meteors crashed here and they were on them, you know, like a, like a disease. It's like it they kind of reminded me of uh, Venom with Tom Hardy mm -hmm. about how like all those came from a meteor. You yeah. know, all the symbiotes they yeah. came from a meteor. Or even what about our good friend uh, Jordy from Creep Show? Uh -huh. And he's got meteor shit. Meteor shit. Yeah. So, uh, very scary. Man, it's like a bird flew by your window fucking right now. Um, okay, I got something cool here. I don't think he's in the house tonight. I, I wish he would be. Justin uh, Martin, who co-created our logo along with the very beautiful and very talented Jessica Ortega. Uh, but um, uh, he sent us a really cool care package. Uh, I already opened it and looked through it, so this is just the package. I don't know why I'm showing you that. No. But he's doing some different things from when he initially started Design Girl. Over. Here's his company. Uh, go check them out. Uh, let me see double A get down on there. There we go. Right there. Graphicsplus.com. Yeah, graphics, graph X, like graphics, but graphicsplus.com. That's Justin. He's also on um, Instagram. He's on Facebook. He's, been doing, so he's out of Ohio, and he does some really cool stuff. So check out this first here, Double A. I, I love this because I don't see our logo like this very often in a vinyl, like a kind of oh. a vinyl cut, um, black and white in a round with a shape there. I mean, uh, there you go. I know it's weird being on this side. Yeah, I know. It's really <laughs> yeah, so that is That's some pretty cool, damn cool. It's a cool little bundle of stickers. Yeah. And then this right here, I don't know, man. We got to see if your wife will let us put this on the on her what I call the just another Friday night mobile. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is like a big old decal of our logo. Yeah. Uh right there. And he had to alter the middle a little bit because you know our oh, decal yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our decal being what it is uh, excuse me, our decal, our logo being what it is. We've heard this multiple times from people that help us, including uh, Amazing Annie over at um, Deuces Mercado. You know, this won't peel up on vinyl very easy, uh, our logo, because it's all the little dots, like the little the little mic microphone spray in there. So that's not going to work. So he kind of did like an alternate version, which I really do like, because it looks almost like a globe, uh, but it's you know, the center global. part of the mic. We're going yeah, global. We're going global. And so that would be cool to go on a car. He sent us one in... in uh, in black, and then he sent us one in red. In red, right here. Can you see? Nice, nice. Yeah, see that right there. Right. Look how badass that looks. Nice. So I want to slap one of these on somebody's car. Maybe my own. <laughs> uh, you know, my sister drives it. I don't drive it. Y'all know I don't drive. But uh, I mean, I think that would be fucking pretty rad. So double A. I mean, we want to thank Justin big time for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Justin, thanks a lot. Yeah, man. He redesigned. Like I said, he redesigned our 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 Facebook. Uh, background yes um yeah. not facebook excuse me our youtube youtube background YouTube. you know previously we had the really cool 
classic comic books on there, which I loved. But um, but you can see that in our videos. Yeah, yeah, you can see that in our videos. And also, we only had it was only Marvel books. YouTube has very specific specifications for what you can use for it. They call a banner. Mm -hmm. It has to be a really specific size. And so uh, it was difficult to find to begin with. And then when I when I did, you know, I was trying to find one that suited what we do here, whatever. You know, the thing about our logo is that it doesn't really say too much about us other than we're a podcast. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what we talk about. It could be a sports podcast. It could be a, a, a you know, podcast about comic books, a podcast about movies, but we're a podcast about all those things. Everything, yes. So uh, yes. it's kind of cool that we don't have anything that really discerns Which it. we do try to promote heavily. Uh, yeah. We are everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, so to get us get the really cool kind of, um, what did you call it, double A, the, uh, the look the of it. Andy Warhol. Right, right. Uh, and that was my, my idea. I did I pitched it to Justin, and I was like, I wouldn't know how to make this happen. Maybe you do. And, and he did. So he took that. Um, he took that and, and and ran with it. And so if you go to our YouTube channel and hit subscribe, but please hit subscribe, you will see that really awesome banner there that is our, uh, was created again by uh, the logo, uh, pretty much designed uh, for uh, by, by Jessica Ortega and then refined by Justin Martin. And then he slapped it into that super, very cool uh, Andy Warhol-ish uh, banner, uh, which I kind of, you know, that's what I pitched out to him, and he was like, that's a great idea, and I, I can make that happen. And so we put that up, and it's an awesome banner, and I have it now as the background, too, on, on the laptop that we use for our show every Friday. So, um, yeah, man, huge thanks to him, and thank you for the stuff. So, thanks, yeah, we, we've got it. some more uh, merch stuff hopefully coming and stuff that we're going to be sending out. So, um, yeah, man, that's 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 coming your way. Uh, John, what's up, John? Yeah, Holty Bear in the house. What's up, Holty Bear? Yeah, Roxanne, we yeah, got Roxanne. the we got the couple here. She says, "Oh, <laughs> that's awesome, black and white sticker." Yeah, very cool. I like it too. I got to find a, a place to stick one of those uh, soon, hopefully. Um, uh, I don't know if you saw. Uh, we, I'm, I'm sure you did. Uh, <laughs> one of our one of our Friday night faithful, Rick. Uh, he uh, he found our sticker at the That's Luchador right, at bar the Luchador, yeah. that CM uh, stuck on there, so that was pretty damn cool. <laughs> and this little package is our last medium, and it is going to your daughter. Yes. So that is for her. I make sure she gets that. And there's stickers in the back. I hope that she will promote us at her school. She will, <laughs> and uh, that'll be really awesome. She so will. I did not know she wanted one. I heard that from from my lady. Uh, and she told me, she's like, you know who said they wanted a shirt? And I said, oh, man, that's cool. I said, well, she's obviously the the, the, uh, the direct lineage here, the princess of Just Another Friday Night. So uh, for sure, we're always happy to to accommodate. But um, yeah, Double A, uh, what, what else, well, man? Anything else? Uh, for a lot of people, this is the first week of summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. School is out for a lot of people. Alice uh, Cooper. Yeah, there you go. School's School is out. out. Man, that song out. will never get yeah. old. Summer. Uh, Loki. Premiering in a few days, man. Yeah, man. man can't wait days. for that one. Yeah, yeah. We definitely want to tackle that. I don't know if we're going to do it like we've done other series, tackle it as a whole. It's going to be a week by week, though. I believe, yeah. So. And the neat thing will be that it'll be come out Wednesday. So if we ever did want to chop up an episode yeah, or a we'll, few we'll episodes, we'll be there on know, time. We yeah. can do it. We could do it like maybe yeah. like three or Which two. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that show I was talking about a few weeks ago on Netflix, that Jupiter's Legacy oh, yeah. or Landing, whatever, mm -hmm. it got canceled. So right. I was like, okay, well, maybe I don't waste my time so I watching that, it. <laughs> I, I read that it got canceled, but that they were already talking about spin-offs. They already have a spin-off sign, but okay. still, it's kind of like, uh, Did okay. you watch your way through it? No, I didn't. I was about to start, because like I said, it was written by Mark Miller, but now they canceled it. But Interesting. I am getting pumped up, because they have announced the cast for Sandman. Uh, I'm a huge Sandman fan, so I can't wait for this. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic. It's going to be great. It's going to be on Netflix. Yeah. So I can't wait for that. I always thought that was a really cool series, a really cool concept. It is. You know it's I mean? the uh, art, the Morpheus visual, the storytelling. Yeah. yeah. Neil Gaiman is uh, pretty underrated when it comes to like his comic writing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I know he's had novels, you know, Coraline, American Gods, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. He's even uh, really big in Norse mythology, but uh, man, the Sandman series. I think that's what really launched uh, Vertigo. Yeah. Uh, to be that kind of like that edgy uh, non entity of DC. You know, that kind of, and it helped too because, uh, you know, they signed up Garth not too long after yeah. that. They signed up that's Grant right. Morrison. That's you know, right. it was that huge British invasion yeah, man. that happened. You know, uh, we had like what, uh, Preacher come out. Mm -hmm. We had um, 
Hitman, right? Uh, yeah, was would you, would you call Constantine part of that and all that? Or was he yeah, still well, kind he, of... I mean, yeah, he, he pointed Constantine a few times. Well, you know, Hellblazer was yeah. Hellblazer yeah. in there. But yeah. No, it was a vertical time. Yeah, vertical yes, time. yes, Hellblazer it was, was a vertical, vertical time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was definitely like a golden age of, uh, of yeah, vertical, for, all that for kind sure, of stuff. man. And yeah. that was like the edgy stuff. If, if there was always one thing I did like about DC more than Marvel, it was that line. Mm -hmm. And Marvel tried producing a line like that a few times, and it just, it never carried over. I think the only really successful launch they had was Punisher. Yeah. But that was by Garth Ennis, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, sometimes it's kind of like, you know, we talk about with wrestling a lot or whatever. It's like, don't stray away from what your bread and butter, you know what I mean? Like, you do do what works for you, do mm -hmm. good things, because those things, you know, again, like Marvel and DC with the movies, it's like DC tries to follow Marvel and copy that format doesn't work for you. Go with what works for you. Do yeah, the things like, that you like know. DC has some good stuff. Like their animated stuff just beats Marvel mm -hmm. out of the water. It blows yeah. it out of the water, yeah. you know. And that vertical line, man, that was a huge selling point for DC for me. Yeah, you know, after a while, you kind of get tired of reading about superheroes. You kind of want to read about this kind of other interesting stuff that they have over here. Man, vertical was that. Yeah. And that's the fantastic thing I think that we love most about comic books as a medium is that it's just like, you know, it's I'm still reading a comic book. I'm still getting visuals, mm -hmm. uh, amazing, incredible art that is, you know, usually, in our opinion, unmatched by, you know, that you can see anywhere in the world, um, you know. But it's presented in that format, you know what I mean? You get great writing like Gaiman, like yeah. you know, Alan Moore, yeah. uh, you know, Mark Miller, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Loeb, you know, Grant those Morrison. guys, yeah, yeah, Grant Morrison, those guys are doing amazing stuff, but it's in the format of comic books, which makes it like kind of more endearing to us, whatever. And it does because, you know, like, when you're reading at 15, you might not understand some mm -hmm. of the characters or they're going through until you're around 27, then you're like. When you go back and read a preacher comic, you're like, <laughs> I yeah. don't know what Jesse was talking about there now. Yeah, you know, you know exactly. like how he would say, like, you know, he lived in a shithole part of Texas, but he would go to like San Antonio or Austin to party. Right. You know, I was right. like, yeah, how many of us have done that now? <laughs> you know, we go somewhere else to party, you know, so it's it's interesting the stuff that when you, as you get older, you, you relate more to kind of like the vertical style. Definitely, yeah. man. Definitely. And it's cool because, you know, as we grew up, like, you know, Double A said, we wanted to read some more mature material or whatever. And I was like, you know, but we still love comics or yeah, whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's kind of like it goes hand in hand. It's like something for everybody there. You know, we've talked about movies that are based on something that like Road to Perdition or whatever, mm -hmm. very heavy. You know, very, man, I, you I know. was surprised it was based on a graphic. I was like, wow. <laughs> and, and it's not to say that we don't love reading regular books. You know, it's just, you know, sometimes a comic book is just easier to pick up. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, it's like regular books are, are, are you know, fantastic or whatever. Sometimes it feels like a commitment. Like when you're going to start a new show, it's like, nah, I don't want to start a new show. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's speaking of that. Uh, I got to, we got, I got to, and I'm sure you got to wrap up mayor of East town. Yes. How did you feel about I that? I liked it, man. It was awesome. But very, you know what's funny though, show. and I'm glad you didn't see it, but Stephen King had actually predicted it like seven hours before the show. No kidding. Uh, started. <laughs> that he knew who the killer was. I was like, Oh wow. It did a really great job. I liked it a lot. Good I'm glad twist. you got into it. Yeah, I'm man, really glad. Yeah. Me and Jess finished it uh, the other night. We really loved uh, it. Where did you watch it? On Max or on regular? Because uh, I heard they had a huge crash on Max. Oh, really? Like, for no that one, show? Yeah, no one can see it for like almost two or three hours. Oh, like, yeah. We didn't if, watch it the If you're day just of. straight streaming. Yeah. 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 Thank gosh we I, we managed to avoid spoilers Ooh, without anything. Man. But yeah, we didn't watch it really until like yesterday or the day well, before. There was no spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one yeah. saw it. <laughs> So for us, we didn't get to, we didn't watch it. Well, that's like good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, it seemed like everybody was pretty happy with the ending, how it went. So I, I think so too. Very tight, very satisfactory. Now uh, the thing is, though, everybody wants to see season, season two. two. I don't know. Uh, I was really up for it on True Detective, and then what happened in True Detective season two? Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, mm. and you know what's funny? That show was well acted. It was. It was a really yeah. well acted show, and it looked good mm -hmm. too. It just that story in season two was weak, was but season weak. three was fantastic. It was good, but man, not as good as season one though. Vince Vaughn, miscast, and you know Colin Farrell. I don't know Rachel McAdams. I don't know if she was good for that kind of role. Uh, His redhead uh, wife was a uh, good looking yeah. gal, but but again, I felt like. You know, her performance, I was kind of like, what, what are you, are you supposed to be on something? I don't know, it was, man. I don't know. It was tough. It was, it tough. was hard to watch. And then, you know, that Taylor, you know, Kitsch, whatever. Yeah. You know, that was the time when he was like, everyone was pushing him hard. You know, he was in Battleship, which was a huge production. He was in uh, 
John Carter mm-hmm. from Mars. That's right. You know, he was right. in Wolverine, Wolverine Origins. Origins. So, man, it was just like this was like almost like the death knell for him. <laughs> for him, I haven't really seen him in any other movies. Yeah, after that. hey man, it's kind of like when they force feed you down the so the, the people's yeah. throat, then it doesn't yeah. work out. It's I like, felt like that with him too. I, yeah. I was like, I think they were forcing him down yeah. their throats. And... So, how about some DC stuff? Some kind of images have come out already. They've shown like the new Shazam costume. Did you get a chance? I to look liked at it? it a lot it better. Cool. I hated the costume in part one. It, Too... it looked fake. Okay, it looked like he just put on the suit, the rubber to make suit. it look big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, man, this suit sucks. Yeah, you know? I was like, better. I yeah, agree. yeah, I think so too. Because I was like, man, when he goes up against uh, the Rock, you know, the Rock's not having padding on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't the need rock, it. The Rock has a superhero body. <laughs> I was like, damn. The Rock know? might opt for actual real spandex. Just be like, no, just, just, just yeah, pull it over just these straight muscles. up. Yeah, you know man. what I mean. Uh, I was that saying, dude looks like a fucking monster. <laughs> dude, him, and, him and Henry Cavill, man, I really would like to see them mix it man. up, man, in some type of movie show, something. You know what I mean? Like He's I said, hoping. For Henry Cavill, he's like dying for him, yeah, to go up against him as Superman. But I don't know, man. It looks like Henry Cavill's got some other stuff, and I don't know what Warner Brothers is doing. Man. If, if Warner Brothers wants to make a fucking mint, you just say I'm going to give you 20 minutes of these two just fucking fighting <sighs> in space man. or something, going through mountains, uh, an almost Dragon Ball Z style fight. <laughs> People will line up around the fucking block for that shit. You know, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> the story could suck. You know what I mean? It could be a fucking Phantom Menace type story. Just give me that battle at the end. You know what I mean? I'll, I'm, I'm there for it big time. Um, and the other suit that we got a real tight glimpse of what is supposedly to be in the Flash movie, the Michael Keaton Batman ah, suit. Okay, okay. It looked a little bit armory. The yellow bat signal back had a blood splatter on it. It's kind of very uh, Watchmen-ish the way they did <laughs> it. Um, it looked cool. I mean, you yeah. know, you're just like, man. Am hey, I you know what? I'm just pumped up to see Keaton back. You know, One was, more time. I was like, wow, he's actually suiting up, man. So yeah. that's cool. Um, uh, kind of back on the Marvel scene, but it looks like they're really going to go pretty heavy with the Sinister Six, huh? Now mm-hmm. that they cast uh, Craven, yeah, I was like, yeah. wow! Now you got Vulture, now you got Morbius coming out, now you got Craven, you got Mysterio, who some people say isn't dead. Mm-hmm. You know, they're saying that that was an illusion. Uh-huh. So, man, now you're you're kind of rounding up the. They're bringing back Rhino, from what I understand. Is Paul Giamatti? I, I think so. Wow, that's cool. I was like, hmm. So, well, six there was, or six. There was a lot of great casting in those movies and a lot of good things. And it was just kind of like, man, it was just in the wrong hands. You know, that's why I feel like Hugh Jackman got cheated or whatever. He did get good, cheated. A bad, good Wolverine movie. Bad, you know, yeah. they, should, they should definitely, you know, Marvel's got the swag and the power and the pull. And I think he did at one time say the only time he would ever do it again is we could be with the Avengers. Now, obviously, we don't have Chris Evans and, and uh, Robert Downey anymore. But you but, know what? Just to see him, though, in a Marvel movie. I think would do wonders for him. Yeah. You know, that'd be awesome. I mean, a a cap, although I love Logan as an end for his story, but you know, a a cap, you know, him and Captain America type thing would would be cool. Even throw Black Widow. Yeah. Because they all have three have a history. Definitely back it up a little bit. That'd be awesome. Uh, John, of course, uh, says best Batman ever. Michael Michael Keaton. Keaton, For sure. You're not the only one there. Uh, Most people have always said he is the best Batman. Definitely. Definitely. I don't know how I feel. I mean, you probably, I probably do agree with that. Are you with that? Yeah, yeah. 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 As much as I love the 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 Christopher Nolan series, I mean, I, I think that those That's are just throws me off. Yeah, yeah, those are always my favorites. Those those originals. Uh, so you know, well, just the Batman though. If you're just talking about Batman, right? I would say Michael right. Keating. You yeah. Know? Now, best Batman movie is the Nolan one. Yeah, the sto- story wise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was reading an article the other day. It was saying kind of how those those movies didn't do any favors for Batman by making it too serious. And I was really? like, oh, it's kind of neat to see what uh, Batman would be like in the real world. It know? actually like, seemed cool. Like I always thought, the Dark Knight it would actually be a perfect crime movie. Mm-hmm. You know, if you took away the suits, that's yeah. a really good crime movie. Yeah, for sure. You know, for the sure. the the commissioner and the DA trying to take down the mob. Yeah. And then you have this loose cannon here that yeah. just wants to blow up the whole world. You it know could have I mean? easily been a, a – yeah, you're right. That's right. what I'm really saying. It had movie. like a lot of feeling like a heat almost, mm-hmm. you know? Which uh, is the cool. movie I mean, to translate that into a superhero movie, superhero movie or whatever is like, you know, like yeah. I said, I mean, it was so rooted in yeah. what it felt like, you know, uh, could the Joker be just didn't seem like Joker. He seemed like right. just a, a, nut. a badass yeah. anarchist, but that knew what he was doing, you yeah. know? So – Pretty interesting. Pretty Very interesting. much so, man. But yeah, Michael Keaton, man, back. 
you know i'm excited for it i'm there for it um and and this was, it empty, birdman? Man. was it birdman that convinced dc to maybe uh give him another shot ah! <laughs> Man, we should do that movie. You know? We should cover that movie. Yeah. I mean, supposedly he would always whisper into Tom Holland's ear, you know, when they were close together, that he would be, he would say, I'm Batman. You know? <laughs> That's right. And he's fucking badass as Vulture, man. I mean, like, yeah. that, that performance yeah. is kind of underrated. And I feel like there are not many people talk about that first movie that much. And I'm like, that one's really good. Like, I like Far From Home better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah I, I think Keaton has, uh, is, that whole scene. You know, I, I know this might piss off a lot of people, but. I'm still not really big on Tom Holland. You know? Yeah. No, no, no. It, um, it's funny. Uh, one of the, I don't know uh, what it is. I mean, he seems to have it down like as a teen Spider-Man, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just want my Spider-Man a little bit more serious, more experienced. Maybe so. I don't know. It, it, yeah, I think it's different strokes for different folks for sure on that because I, I, I like the Tom Holland uh, Spider-Man a lot. But I, I, do also, too. I do too. I'm not saying he's bad. It's just uh, – it hasn't really gripped me. Right. You know? Right. I also feel like I'm like in the moment of like, oh, these are like, you know, this is Spider Man right now. And so like and those movies are most recent and so well, you know, I I'm, think, I'm into it. Like I think that. what it is is like, you know, I like those kind of like Spider Man's from like the eighties where Peter was like a little bit older. He was already mm -hmm. married to Mary Jane. So it was, you know, kind of like Toby. Toby kind of seemed like that kind of Spider Man. You know, where Tom Holland is kind of like that Steve Dicko Spider-Man. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, the still young guy Spider-Man. And yeah. maybe they went that route because they felt like, well, we can get a lot more um, years out of Tom Holland. You know if, I mean? Yeah, they do. I mean, hopefully they do. Hopefully it don't take fucking five years to do another one. Man, I, yeah. I don't mind having the same actor if he keeps going. You know? Right, right. Uh, so, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, I was reading uh, this week also on uh, – one of the hosts of the Tis the Podcast the show that Anthony Caruso ah, was mm -hmm. saying about uh, unpopular Spider-Man opinions uh, was trending on Twitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the one that I posted was the one we've all talked about, that Uncle Ben, you know, <laughs> talking about responsibility <laughs> yeah. so much, didn't really have great life insurance in the <laughs> yeah. event that something happened. The guy lives in New York, in Queens. It's I like, could have been mugged or murdered at any time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, hey, man, you should have been. You know, more prepared to take care of You're fucking and, old. And, like, uh, really? You didn't have any money saying? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, not to put a shot on Uncle Ben because I love Uncle Ben. Maybe the insurance premiums were too fucking high and he couldn't pay him, all right? I mean, that I get. Maybe. So. <laughs> Either way, you know, not the, not the best situation, obviously, for the Parkers in that, um, in that scenario. Real quick, man. Where do you think they're going to go with the Craven story, man? Uh, you think just the big game hunter? Just, you know, because obviously they're not going to do, uh, uh, you know, the – the hunt, the, the Craven's, Craven's last hunt. Last hunt. Yeah, you know, obviously. I, I think you can build to that though. I mean, he look, he's a young dude. Yeah, he's, he's a very guy. young dude, yeah. but older than Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. You know, so he does have that look where he's way older. Yeah. Know? So, man, yeah. I mean, that'd be pretty fun, right? I wonder how they're gonna do it. Is he gonna be like a celebrity? Like I think he was in Ultimate Spider-Man. Right. That's you know? right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kind of almost like a like a Steve Irwin, yeah. like a dark yeah. Steve Irwin. Yeah. So yeah, I'm interested to see too. I I think so. I hope they build to Craven's Last Hunt though. Maybe yeah. in some type of trilogy or yeah. something like that. But. Uh, definitely. Uh, Steve in the house says, cheers. S cheers to you, Steve. So, I can't talk because I'm not <laughs> drinking. So uh, uh, John says we need college party. Man. Okay. Well, that was Toby. Yeah, and I think that was definitely Toby. Just college and David man. says, hello. Ben is dumb. Damn, Ben is dumb. <laughs> uh, David Lopez, uh, welcome, man. Uh, glad to have you in the house, brother. We appreciate you joining us here. Uh, you know, we're, I don't know if we're earlier on time. It just feels like the sun is out forever now. So, so uh, it's Until like 8.30. So. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? A classic uh, long Texas day here. There's plenty of time to be out in the water and do what you got to do uh, in regards to that. So uh, no comics, no pickups for us really this uh, week? Actually, yes, I do. You it's do? right next to the roof. Ah, okay. Let me get that for you right So there. this was like a huge haul for me. Uh, I'm a huge Daredevil fan, and I try to get every key issue. So this issue is the first appearance of Typhoid Mary. Oh, uh, very nice. You know, I picked it up at a pretty good price. And, again, it's just another key Daredevil issue. So I was really happy about this one. And that character, her figure, is very difficult to find because I've been oh, looking really? for a single figure. Yeah, she came oh. out as part of a Venom series, and the Build-A-Figure was uh, a Venom, which my nephew's been trying to build for years the now. The hard part, right? Yeah, and he's, I'm missing two key figures. One is Spider-Ham and one is her or whatever, which is like the torso and one of the legs. That's why I asked why Gladiator was so expensive. And it was because he had the headpiece of, Gladi yeah. of Galactus yeah. or something. Check this 
this out, man. The the pieces by themselves go up for sale online. I found that leg for sixteen dollars. I was like, oh, it's sixteen dollars just for the nice. leg. I want the whole damn figure. Somebody wants a leg. Yeah, maybe that's what they're missing. Exactly. <laughs> they're exactly. like, the toy. Kind of like <laughs> kind of like when you're at the chicken dinner and it's like they're out of everything and you just wanted a leg. You know what I mean? So, uh, guys, we're uh, getting real close to our first thirty minute block. You know what we do? We take a quick break. We read through the comments. We interact. We chat with you guys. We invite you to join the conversation that we're having tonight. What do you think about our weird opening? What do you think about us being on opposite sides? What do you think about Adam Adamantium versus Adamantium Adam? It's still double A, but only in reverse. And how about Chuck MC? I don't know. That's not, I'm not really feeling it, but maybe MC Chuck. MC if I was, Chuck, like yeah. a, if I, was oh, yeah, yeah. I was beatboxing and stuff like that. But either way, guys, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, after that, uh, that's for only for our audio listeners. Uh, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be right here with you sitting throughout that break. Let our audio load up, and then we'll be right back, as uh, Chuck Woolery used to say, in two and two. Huh? Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us here on just another Friday night. We are live on Facebook. He's using his uh, right hand. I'm using my right hand, which is truly backwards and fucking, yeah, I'm a lefty. That's weird. And, and it is weird to be at this. Like, and you look like you're in darkness. I do Don't look light, dark. Put, put the light on yourself, man. I can. It's over there. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we can do here for you. Let's see if we can get you some light. There, we, you. Go. there we go. Jeez. I don't look like a villain anymore. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we got, we got speaking of Craven over here. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, guys, so um, where do you listen to us at? Do you check us out only on Facebook Live? Do you go to YouTube.com? If you do, are you subscribed? Do you let the video play while you hear the audio? Um, if you hear the, that's the complete unabridged version of the show, you'll hear all this. If you listen to us on Spotify, iTunes. Um, they cut it down. Anywhere yeah. podcasts are available, you don't hear this part because, you know, like I said, our, our audio software that we use, Anchor, only records in 30 minute blocks. So we use that as a natural break to to talk to you and, and uh, uh, have you interact and join the show. So uh, John says he listens to us on Spotify. Right on, man. We appreciate that. Yeah. Spotify is good. Make sure you Where hit do that you follow button. To? I usually listen to us on our homepage, Anchor. Uh, I usually listen to us on Spotify also. Spotify. I'm trying to okay. get us to be my number one listened show next year or whatever. Right. Okay. But uh, okay. I got to admit, I'm a little behind on our own episodes. Uh, I'm listening to a new Kevin Hart podcast where he interviews Kevin comedians. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I feel like a real dickhead. Uh, though, let me tell you why. It's because oh, Kevin sure. Hart does a tight 45 to 47 minutes, and he's got people on there like Steve Harvey, Dio Hewley, Seinfeld. And I'm like, man, Kevin Hart can keep his show to an hour with two breaks. And we're over here at sitting at three hours. <laughs> My sister says we got to cut it down, but I don't know. We like hanging out with you guys and with each other. You know what? Our listenership says otherwise. So, <laughs> I mean, they, you're going up every week. So. Hey, man. I, I love it. Man, if you guys want to go listen to an episode of us on the audio version that has done well, go to Anchor or go on Spotify. iTunes. <gasps> Party if Like It's 1999 yeah. episode, guys. Over 300, close to 400 yeah. listens. Blew our minds. Yeah. I don't have 400 friends. No, you know, three hundred and sixty. I don't know anybody that likes me enough to listen to me four hundred times. Yeah. So that's that's amazing. And if you check us out on YouTube, go look at our episode uh, about the Snyder Cut version of Justice and League. Justice for All. Six hundred. Six hundred and twenty-seven. Six hundred and twenty-seven guys. Uh, that views. people checked out us uh, from uh, YouTube. And I want to tell you guys something. A little bit of education here. When it comes to a view and what counts as a view on Facebook, you only have to be on the video for three seconds for it to count as a view. On YouTube, thirty seconds. You got to be looking at the video for thirty seconds for it to count as a view. I hope that's long enough to have kept all those people on there for the full time. Uh, we don't do a lot really in that first 30 seconds. <laughs> Highs and hellos maybe is mainly what it is. But uh, check this out, guys. What do you think about my my rig here for panning? Pan the check. Pan the blade. Pan back to both of us. So one shot, two shot, one shot, two. I, ha I have the laptop on a Lazy Susan. This is my own innovation. I thought this up when I was uh, having a really hard time at work this week. So, <laughs> uh, John says, especially when I'm driving all day long, you guys need to do three episodes a week. I'm only able to listen to you guys once a week. I drive every day. Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, I would love to. I would tell you, go back and revisit some of the old catalog. Holtzy <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bear, you are on a fine episode yourself, sir, all about the man himself, Stephen King. And you get to listen to your lovely And those wife. episodes are doing super well, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
I know they're not all your friends. So. <laughs> yeah, your lovely wife on Werewolf by Friday night. But also, if you do get bored, check out some of our friends, our podcast friends, uh, like uh, Jerry D on Totally Rad Christmas. And how about um, uh, now watch this with the dork dad, Lucky, and Joe. Uh, Martina is doing a great job on that show. Those are some excellent shows as well. They have some really good feel-good moments in all of them. Uh, again, I, I, we've been on those shows. We've been on an episode of The Dork Dance. We've been on an episode of uh, – were we on? Oh, I was on an episode of Now Watch This. They're just another Friday Night Podcast has been on Now Watch This. Yeah, so. uh, and uh, Double A is one of representative somebody who needs to be on there. And then you can hear us also on um, – Totally Rad Christmas on our Thundercats yeah, episode. So that's like all 80s, like stuff from the 80s only. Like uh, if it deals with Christmas, <laughs> don't cover it. So Steve says, pan, baby, pan. Yeah, for real. I was like, you know what? I, I need to figure out a way for us to pan. Now, did you guys catch the intro? Have you caught our our Facebook story or our Instagram story yet? Uh, there's a reason why I'm, I'm dressed in my Sunday's best, I guess, or was dressed in it. Uh, let me know what you think about that video. Uh, it's going to lead right into what we're going to talk about tonight. A subject that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, it's a show. And it's kind of uh, because Sunday is D-Day, mm -hmm. uh, we kind of wanted to, you know, it was sandwich actually between yeah. Memorial Day and D-Day that we're like, well, you know, we have a lot of family that's military, you know, uh, how about we kind of honor a World War II veteran but someone that, you know, uh, created this great television show that we all love and mm -hmm. they still show mm -hmm. after, you know, since it ended in 1965, you know, they still show this. I asked my mom about it this morning and she said she really, she really did love it. And she watched it. She goes, she said she even thought that some of the stories were real. She was like, yeah. no, I thought that yeah. it was based on real stuff. And it could be from it what I've be. read about the man. Really? You know, uh, a lot of the stuff he wrote about is experiences that he actually did go through in World War II, you yeah. know, he was in the Philippines, in Japan, you know, yeah. in the bad part, you know, 44, 45, when they were just doing kamikazes and Ugh. suicides and, you know. Yeah, well, definitely some of that does get yeah. addressed. So, yeah. so we're talking about a very small sample of a wonderful show. So we're not talking about the entire no, run, no, we're no, talking no. about the whole run, because you could go on you classic can. episodes and I would love to do that. Uh, this will not be the only time we delve into this or talk about it. Um, I was making a tight shot on, on double X. You're talking. Oh. This is the, 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 <laughs> the director extent of my <laughs> extent of my directing. Here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, without further ado, I think we just get right yeah, in there. Right? Answer, like, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. write any specific notes because I really want to ask you questions and talk to you because I know you're going to be my, my wealth of knowledge on this, but let's get right into it. Uh, guys, there's no more comments right now. We've uh, read right now, but please, we invite you to continue to comment and join, and, and join us in the show. Join in the conversations. I think you're going to like this subject. Uh, I feel like this subject is one for uh, audience around our age, you know what I mean? And for newer audiences, it might be yeah, exposed my, to- my daughter watches it. Yeah. Like every time it comes on, she even has like a favorite episode. Wow. Like she asked me like, Hey, can we watch this one? Can we watch this one? And so she's like, ten, yeah, tenish. Okay, yeah. tenish. Okay, yeah. So that that's a that's pretty cool. You know it is. I mean? I've never yeah. showed it to my nephew. I that's should show cool. it to. Yeah, it's really cool. She enjoys yeah. them a lot, and she's always gets a kick out of the, the ending. So I, I love it. It's and and I I read someone else say this earlier on another uh, another forum, and they said. Uh, they were referring to another show being their go to sleep show. This is kind of my go to sleep show. Okay. Not, not that it puts okay. me to sleep, but I, I'll have it on and I'll be watching it so yeah. much that I'll just fall asleep. Yeah. And, I, and I'll, if I feel like I'm seeing a different one every time. So I'm like, I haven't seen this one. In fact, mm -hmm. some of the ones you had me watch, I had not ever seen. You know what I mean? So, uh, and there might have only been one out of five that we watched or six that, that I told you, hey, I have seen this one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Guys, join the conversation. Join us talking on just another Friday night. Tonight, uh, it's Adam Adamantium and Chuck MC. In the opposite seats. This is gonna look weird in the in the YouTube feed, uh, <laughs> but yeah, let's get right into it, guys. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, hanging out with us during that quick brief break where you hear me spit a little spiel. If you're listening to us on audio, it's the only uh, thirty second commercial that we do. If you're listening to us uh, throughout the rest of the show, you might hear a brief blip when we cut out at the thirty minute mark. Uh, so that way we can interact with you, the fans. Uh, have you join in the conversation and talk with us on just another Friday night. Uh, and of course, if you're joining us on Facebook live, we do go live every Friday night on Facebook uh, so that you can join the conversation live and add in your content. And, and we'll talk about that. And this later on goes up on YouTube where we will need you to please, please, please subscribe. We're up at 54 uh, subscribers. We got to get to that magic number 100 in order to change our name. Uh, and, uh, more. Yeah. That we're, not, we're not far away. Um, and we were being harassed to twerk last week and, and, uh, 
I guess today would have been the perfect time for that. But you know what I mean? I'm going to get with Nene about that and see what we can do about that. But we did another different type of video this uh, earlier before this episode on our TikTok. We went out on our TikTok, on our Instagram, and on our Facebook uh, our Facebook story. Uh, check it out at JAFN Podcast where you can see that. And we'll tell you all about what we're talking about tonight, guys. Uh, as I said earlier, you're traveling through a dimension, uh, not just of the mind of sight and sound, but of the mind. Uh, and in the early incarnations of the show, they call it the fifth dimension. So we're here tonight in the twilight zone. Uh, that's why we're backwards. That's why our names are flipped. You know, you can hear the music, right? <laughs> Please check out our TikTok. Uh, Double A did a great job directing that. It came out really cool. Uh, I thought it was, it was awesome because uh, TikTok also had, you know, you search certain things on TikTok, uh, or Instagram, yeah, double A, and you don't find anything. You're like, oh, you show me. I'm like, wow, that's like, surprising. It's so limited. Like, yeah. no one likes this. Like, you know. Yeah. But then I searched that, and everything came up. Yeah. I was like, wow, neat. Like, there must be still a lot of really big fans of this fantastic and show. That's what I'm saying. It just, it's the stories are so good that people get hooked. Generations mm -hmm. get hooked on this show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Me and my girlfriend watch it uh, all the time. We love it. Like I said, it's kind of our go to sleep show. Uh, we want, we love just black and white stuff, uh, movies, especially her. She got me more into it. And, uh, and this is one that we just both just love and agree on. Yeah. Now, uh, Double A, tell us, you know, the reason why we're doing this, guys, between Memorial Day and between D Day, like Double A said, is a way to, like I said, for us to honor, uh, you know, the military and then obviously those we lost and and, and yeah, again, we have family know. that served retired you know all branches mm -hmm. and we live in military city yeah. usa san antonio texas so double a tell us a little bit about the man himself the creator yeah so rod serling man he was uh he was a world war ii vet you know he served uh as soon as he got out of high school he started he joined and enlisted in 1943 uh did all his training you know around the country and then he got stationed in the philippines japan uh, which he said he was, uh, he hated. He was hoping he would get stationed in Germany mm. <laughs> so he can fight Hitler. Ah. Uh, you know? But um, golly, the experiences from what I've read about him is, you know, seeing people die every day, uh, freak accidents. You know, they're, they're, he said one story of uh, a guy that was doing like a comedy routine and like a care package, like one of those big crate, you know, just came in cut his head off right Holy off shit. you know are you serious yeah i mean it was just like wow nightmare. so he said he saw death every day over there and let me tell you something in the 40s you know japan was a powerhouse nation. oh yeah uh those guys were no surrender nothing mm -hmm. okay i mean it was kamikazes boom 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 even when they knew they were losing they were not saying no you know yeah. it wasn't until the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs and kind of bluffed them and said, we have more and we will destroy your whole country, you know, that they finally said, okay, yeah. enough. But yeah. golly, for two years of probably seeing all that kind of death and mayhem, uh, you know, he had PTSD throughout his whole life, you know, the all that kind of stuff. And it really influenced his, his you know, lifestyle, it, it, you know, his point of view. Uh, he wrote it down. I mean, you can tell now after reading it, you can tell in his writing in some of these episodes that you're like, okay, shit, you know, he's talking, uh, uh, you know, yeah. like like uh, mm -hmm. dictatorships are awful. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. that human life is worth something, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to be different. We have to be, you know, we, we can't be all one individual, right. you know, we have to be ourselves. We have to be different, speak up and fight back and, there's All that kind of stuff. Some of the messages in the show are very indirect, but you kind of get where he's going. Which I love, though. Yes, I love too. how he does that. Yeah, it's it's a you very uh, uh, it's a very um, when you're seeing this as a kid, mm -hmm. you're not understanding. You're like, oh man, you know that alien, blah blah blah. You know, right. until you get older, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. you know, yeah. that's what he was really laying in you. You know, <laughs> it's a it's a subtle and a and a and a interesting way to heap. You know something into your life that is important uh and some of those messages like i said are very indirect however some of the messages are very direct very, and it's very on the nose yes. now we watched double a had me watch because i said he said why don't we talk about rod sterling and the twilight zone i said man that's fantastic i love the twilight zone and i immediately thought of the gremlin the little boy yeah, uh you that's know awesome. they're, yeah. they're you know uh there's so many so classics. Many. The, the the pig noses. Yeah, you know what I mean? And that's another good one too, because mm -hmm. in that one, you know, everyone wants to look the same. Exactly. You know? Right. 
the, the message is still applied today easily. Yeah. Um, that, you know, that was uh, Eye of the Beholder. Eye of you know, the Beholder, the, right. the, the classic line, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, but we didn't watch those. Double A gave me a, a very specific short list, five, six episodes. Five, five I, was, episodes. I have it on my phone if you, if you want if you want to hand it to me, I can tell you which ones we watched. And, uh, and they're basically kind of like uh, war, some of his war mm -hmm. episodes or some things that, you know, just really you can tell bothered him and he wrote about it, you know. Yeah. And uh, I've yeah. got it up right here so that we can talk about oh, it. Yeah. But we watched The Obsolete Man, The Purple Testament, Two, Death's Head Revisited. Mm -hmm. A quality of mercy and the encounter. So it was a total of uh, six episodes. Oh, six. Okay. Yeah, and uh, only one of these I had already seen. Like I said in my nightly viewings of watching. Sometimes I even watch it with the sound off um, because I just got it on. And mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, like I said, I'm falling asleep to it, or I'm lowering the volume slowly as I fall asleep. Uh, but I have only the only one I had seen was two. But um, yeah, so let me ask you something, though. Before we get further, okay. we get right into the actual episodes. I noticed when I was browsing that it goes season one, mm -hmm. two, three, five. Why is there no oh, season wow. four okay. uh, on Netflix anyway? Okay, there is a season four, and but those are hour long episodes, so really? I'm kind of surprised it's not on there. So that's weird. Okay, so okay. They're, they're missing from Netflix. Yeah, then. no, season four was all like one hour episodes, okay. and a lot of those are really good too. Uh, that sucks that they don't have it. I didn't wow. know that. Yeah, wow. it okay. skipped, and I was like, oh, is this like a Twilight Zone thing? Like it skips, wow. like they're not here or whatever. That blows. Because uh, some of those are really good. Yeah, unless they're somewhere else that I can't find them. You know what I mean? But at least when I just go to the uh -huh. record, I didn't even have to like search Twilight Zone because it's in my uh feed. Yeah. yeah like last time i watched it which was like probably a couple of days mm -hmm. ago so it was just interesting that, oh that's weird you know, okay so they don't have the hour-long episodes that's weird yeah i just saw one on sci-fi uh, unless they're you somewhere know? else they might be somewhere else in in netflix but when i searched okay. twilight zone that was that's weird you know, or like i said i didn't search twilight zone i already had it in my feed. Mm -hmm. i went to that mm -hmm. particular one but uh because i would mm -hmm. imagine like usually when netflix has like one thing of a property they have it all yeah. so i wonder if the twilight zone movie is on there I remember always liking that movie too, and being really scared by the beginning with Dan Aykroyd. Uh, I was always freaked out by that yeah. that opening. And you, know, you want to see something really scary? Yeah. I remember that scared me as a kid. Um, I remember obviously the Bur uh, Burgess Meredith episodes. I mean, uh, yeah, those are classic. A Twilight Zone legend, right uh, the, there. In one of the episodes we're going to talk about, but uh, yeah, the first William one, Shatner, William too, Shatner, you know, yeah. another Twilight Zone legend. Um, but. Uh, I mean, yeah, man, it's just just a super fantastic show. So I was wondering, you, you, so you did know why that's missing on, wow, on that's there? Wow, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I didn't know that those were hour long episodes. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. it's had other incarnations. It's come back, comes back every yeah, ten so years I've, or so. I've seen years. the eighties version. I've mm -hmm. seen. I think they had one even in the nineties or early two thousands, and then I've seen the one that uh, Peel. Yeah, yeah, Jordan Peel. Yeah, Jordan Peel. I, I haven't done. seen any of his versions, and they never grabbed me because it's like he said. With those, they always really try to give you a forced message. Okay, and that's what I just hate so much. I'm yeah. like, it, you can always tell it's current events, and yeah. they always put the current event into their episodes. Right. And I'm kind of like, ah, Lee, but Rod Serling did it like so good in a science fiction way, and you didn't feel it, you know, you didn't feel that message, and, and it's sunk into you you know he miyagi's you mm -hmm. you know but yeah. you don't even know it until you get older and you're like oh wow that was really cool but you know it wasn't like force it wasn't in your face like right. these other reincarnations have done yeah uh, so that's why i never really get into it now there was one cool episode i think it was when forrest whitaker was there they actually did a sequel to the billy mummy one uh, the boy who controlled the town. Really? Yeah. Well, he's he's grown up? Too. Yeah. Because at the end of that one, he takes off with the. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, he has lady. a daughter. Ah. So he does. There is a part two. Yeah. Of that, and I don't know where that's available, uh, but that was a really cool episode. And I didn't realize it until just the other day. Uh, me and my girlfriend revisited the, the movie, and it's like they kind of remade mm -hmm. some of the they did. Uh, the plane the, with John Lithgow. That that's was right. William Shatner, yeah, that's the boy. Exactly. The boy. You know? yeah. yeah. You're a bad man. You're a very yeah. bad man. Yeah. But they <laughs> so, made a part two, and he came out. Uh, yeah. The original actor. Is that right? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's that, that's see, I would go back and look up those and check cool. those out myself. Yeah. But um yeah, so the other question I had double was when I asked you is did Rod Serling write all the episodes? No, he okay. wrote ninety two of the hundred and fifty two. Oh, but that's if you look cool. at some of the writers, it's kind of like certain big names. Okay. Uh, some of those big science fiction names. So he didn't have like Ray Bradbury. You know, uh, I wonder if he did any. I can't remember, but I, re I remember seeing some of the names, and I was kind of like, "Oh shit! Wow, okay." Yeah, cool. I know Philip K. Dick is another uh, big, yeah. you know, yeah, sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. so I'm curious if they ever did anything with the with the Twilight Zone, but um, 
yeah, guys, so we we love it. It's a great show. I can't say enough about it. If you've never watched it, go check it out. Uh, I would Any say a, a precursor to Tales from the Dark Side oh, and, yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. You know, Big I know time. my dad talks about uh, sometimes Planet Terror. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are more a focused on horror, horror yeah, stuff. Yeah. See, Twilight Zone is not really focused particularly on horror. It's almost just like he well, says. I remember, too, he was on CBS, so... It Right, you could probably only go so far. Yeah, yeah, but it's also so like it's kind of cool in the sense that it's not like that because it's just more like a make you think, yes. like like what the fuck. Like some are feel good episodes, some are like really terrifying episodes, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. some are just like out there. <laughs> yeah, some of these are are, are, are pretty uh, out there, pretty yeah. terrifying. Whatever. Yeah. So um, let me check where we're at time wise. Oh, we got plenty. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. get let's get into our okay, first episode, cool. man. I want to. Uh, Jump in and talk about it. And I want you guys to jump in and talk to us about it. Tell us what you've yeah, seen. Tell this us episode. your favorite episodes. Yeah, what are your favorite episodes? What do you think about the episodes that we we're talking about? What do you think about the message that was there? What are some of the episodes that you like and the message that they had that you really loved and enjoyed? Uh, Rod Serling, uh, veteran, um, military man, yeah. the Twilight Zone, guys. Uh, we are in the fifth dimension itself. In fact, it's almost like everything is backwards right now. Like double, comic book guy, right? What, what is this? Bizarro world? <laughs> <laughs> double A's on that side, and his name is backwards, and I'm on this side, and my know. name is backwards, and I got on work clothes and my after hours and for <laughs> drinking water instead of sweet, sweet adult beverages. <laughs> it's okay. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Double A. Straight edge. You man. know what straight edge means to you? Uh, I... Do not tell me. It means I'm better than you. That's right. That is true. If you're straight CM edge, punk. don't drink, don't smoke. See that? CM <laughs> punk. Go look that up, guys. Uh, okay, Dolly, start off. The Obsolete Man. Yes. So this is my favorite Twilight Zone. Really? Yes. All time? I love it. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. I love the message. I love what it says, you know, and it's very direct mm -hmm. to World War II, mm -hmm. you know. But it so, doesn't take place where it's like a, like no, a, like a it's despondent way, it's future. way in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah, where someone has finally figured out how to take over uh -huh. <laughs> and eliminate people by the millions. And how many times have we seen this? This is done in Equilibrium, one of our favorite movies. Yes. We should get into that yes. movie one day. Yes, Equilibrium, mm -hmm. uh, V for Vendetta. Uh, I mean, nineteen eighty four. Yeah, I mean that's probably the the best one. You okay, know? pretty much, guys. A, a despondent future. The government is in complete control. Books are outlawed. Reading much, is outlawed. Pretty much, if you have like a, a job that the government doesn't think is worthy enough, you're obsolete. Mm -hmm. So he's a librarian. So that's obsolete. Yeah. There, you know, uh, what what else would be obsolete? Uh, uh, probably know. podcasters would definitely be obsolete. I would imagine anyone in the entertainment industry, obsolete uh, comedians. You know, you don't you need know, that comedian. Writers yeah. would be obsolete. You know, uh, yeah. if you're not doing like a like a trade, pretty much, um, you know, that's going to be useful to contribute to society. You're obsolete. anything artistic. All artists would probably yeah, be music. musicians. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Comic book writers. You're, yeah, you're any writer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would, I would want to say uh, movies, maybe. Even. Yeah, I would say any, any of the things that we love, any things that try truly bring you joy. You're probably not there. Toy makers, candy makers, things like that. Mm -mm. I mean, you know, probably they're probably living off of a base sustenance food that you just need to live. Uh, pretty much a joyless all, life. It sounds. Yeah, like. they're all about Hitler's ideals. Mm -hmm. the, the perfect. You know, representation of man, of woman, right? You know, no elderly, no yeah. weak, no, no weak, you know, no sick, yeah. no anything. So you imagine know. you had any children that were special needs or disabled. It's special like special get rid of homosexuals. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, anything that ruffles the feathers yeah. uh, of of just society. pretty much like what Hitler did in the concentration camps. It, it wasn't yeah. just Jews; it was everyone they thought was imperfect. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Definitely in the in the camps. And the star of this episode is Burgess Meredith. Yes. You guys know him, might know him as Mick from from Rocky. Yeah, that'd be a good one. You yeah, might know probably, him as yeah. uh, the Penguin from the, the 1966 Batman. If but, you're into the grumpy old men movies, yeah, you know? yeah, a pound of bacon. Uh, I love Burgess Meredith, man. A yeah. fantastic yes. actor. Yes. Uh, you get to see him really young in these, and he still looks older. <laughs> so you know, now tell me about the main guy, the uh, the, the chancellor, whoever he was. Yeah, chancellor. Did, did, there you he's go. seen other stuff, right? We know, I know him from stuff. I've seen him from other stuff. Okay. Uh, I know he's done Twilight Zone episodes too. Okay. So he's kind of like one of the, one of those guys that Rod always kept using, but mm -hmm. pretty much the the typical, you know, dictator, you yeah. know, eliminating people, like I said, by the millions in hours, you know, in a matter of hours, yeah. gassing, killing. And and he's a part of like not Burgess Meredith but the other guy we're talking about. He's part of this like 
council or whatever, and he's the it's council, but he pretty much he's like the judge of it yeah. or whatever. And so pretty much after they get you in, they say you're obsolete. You know, they tell you how do you want to die. They they actually do allow you to choose how you're going to die. You know, and he picks a kind of like a. a Pretty unique kind of way to for his own death. Yeah, he doesn't tell you right away. He says, "I want to reveal this only to my executioner at the time, you know, prior, right prior to the time of my death." Yeah, and they tell you you get to pick the time too, right? The time, like within, yeah, uh, because they want to show it live. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's other thing too. Like when they kill you, you know, they want to broadcast it. They want to be there, well, Very, not yeah. be there, but set up cameras. Yeah. Again, you know? leading into almost, you can all see how like uh, the Hunger Games borrowed Ooh, from this. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe even. Uh, Maybe even the Running Man, I would yeah, say. Maybe even there, the yeah. King did with well, that. Right? Richard Bachman did with Stephen that. Stephen King. Yeah. Oh, Stephen King. Yeah. See, yeah. What, yeah. yeah. With the surname. You uh -huh. remember the surname. Yeah, Richard Bachman. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. almost see that, you know, again, you're getting a vision of the dystopian future, and, and you can see how people borrow from that. You have this kind of like a shit. Maybe even the Purge gets a little bit of it from that, you know? So anyway, uh, Burgess Meredith gets to choose his death and the time of his death, and, and tell, tell us a little bit more delay as he's what's he gonna yeah, do. Yeah, so he, he has one request he wants to speak to the Chancellor right before he dies in his world. Mm -hmm. So the Chancellor, uh, he grants him his request. He's like, okay, sure, you know, and they have this really philosophical discussion, you know, and they mention, you know, God, which I'm kind of surprised about, you know? yeah, and which the Chancellor says, you know, we have proven the state has proven there is no God, yeah, the you know? state, yeah. yeah, the state. I'm like, damn. You know, okay, and you know, it's just it's a really good philosophical discussion that them two have. But what he doesn't know is that, and he tells him, he's like, uh, he tells him the the death mm -hmm. that he plans to uh, a bomb's gonna go off. Yeah, and he's like, oh, that's that's cool. You know, it's like it's kind of quick. It's almost painless. You know, it's you know, boom. And yeah, you're just it. gonna get blown up in your room. But you know, when the chancellor tries leaving, he can't open the door, which he finds out. He locked it, and he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, come on, sit down, you know, uh, relax, chill out, you know, you're you represent the state, you're Superman, you're made out of steel, you know, yeah, and he's, you know, and again, they have like, you know, this philosophical discussion, and the chancellor's like, you know, Stalin had the right idea, Hitler had the right idea, but they didn't go very far yeah. with their killings, with everything, with eliminating people like him, you know, like, like Burgess Meredith, you know, and he's, and he's like, you know, like Burgess is like on and on, like, you know, that's just wrong. That's right. You know, that, that system's going to fail, you know, that's not a way to go. Yeah. You know, and time is going, you know, yeah. so they just they even there. show the clock, like at the bottom and it's ticking. He pulls out his time. Bible, which he says was punishable by death. Mm -hmm. You know, he pulls out the Bible and he starts reading it. And the time's going, and Burgess is cool. He's reading the Bible the whole time, even when he's getting told he's obsolete and all that. He's like, okay, and he does a, a little bit. Are you right? Like, I'm not obsolete. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, uh, I have a purpose. Right. I have a function. You right. know, I live. You know, and Chancellor's sweating his balls off. Uh, he knows what time he's gonna blow up, and he's scared. And you know, Burgess is like, the state's not gonna come and help you. You represent everything that's good about him. You know, they're gonna. You're gonna be here. You're gonna stand up for the state and right. die for your state. Like right. I'm a Superman. I'm not scared of you. Exactly. You know? I love that part a lot. That it was almost like he tried to be like, no, they'll come for me. And he's like, why would they come for you? Like, there's like more like you. Like you know, yeah. like, they're all he's like, like, no one's coming. <laughs> you know, he, he, he's like, you know what? You know, you sh exactly. You should be willing to die yeah. for your. For and your so thing. it's kind of like almost like the state kind of listens. To what they're saying, he's like, "Yeah, we are. We are going to leave his ass there." You know? Yeah, they know that it would look weak of them to burst in the to door burst. to save, yeah, to one, save him. Yeah, yeah, to save him. So it's like, no, you know what I mean? Like, he, so, he knows what's up. You know? Yeah. So he finally breaks down. And he's like, "For the love of God, please let me out." And Burgess is like, "Yes, Chancellor. For the love of God, I will, I will let you out." Opens the door. He gets out quick, and right, boom, he dies. Yeah. When the bomb explodes. He dies. Uh, next scene, the Chancellor comes in expecting him to do his job, and nope. Mm -hmm. Spotlight hits him, says that, you know, for showing weakness, for disgracing the state, yeah. he is obsolete now. And he even called out to God, so it was like, you know. Yeah, we it was like, you just said, you disproved it, and now yeah. you're calling out for God. Yeah, it's when like, it was his fucking ass on the line, <laughs> his neck, he just was a... Uh, Weak and cracked, you know what I mean. So but it was a good episode. And right afterwards, you know, Rod Serling comes out and is very forceful in his yeah. any narration, like you know, any state, any person that thinks life is meaningless, you know, they're the ones who you know are are you know meaningless, you know, yeah. that 
No, just no. He's a really handsome man too. He's, he's very, you know, he, the way he delivers things is very. Uh, but this one was very forceful. Yeah, it was. I mean, because I was like, he was there, he saw what the, you know, what the motherfucker did. You mm -hmm. know, Hitler did. You know, to mm -hmm. all these people. Uh, you know, and he did try to kill people quick. As soon as the Allies were close, you know, he was like ordering millions to be gassed. You know, oh, yeah. like boom, boom, boom. And it was, it was brutal, it was brutal. So he felt very strongly against any kind of dictatorship, very strongly. Yeah. And again, we're focusing on those episodes, so that's not the last you'll hear of things because like that. Because it's like so. for him, life, you know, any life is not meaningless. Exactly, you know? so. especially when I mean, you've lived through that and seen yeah. that. So great episode. I did not know that was your favorite episode. That so is my favorite. Cool. Episode. I, I would need to do a big watch through to yeah. pick a favorite because yeah. I have so many that I love. So that just hit me hard though when, oh, when yeah. we were watching that. You know, I saw it with my dad and my brothers. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of at the time when I started kind of like like reading stuff and mm -hmm. you know like kind of like getting all this kind of stuff and learning about World War Two and everything. I, I loved it, and when I first saw uh, him, I thought it was the one with the glasses. You know, what oh, I mean? that one. Yeah. He wants Don't to read. He wants to read. Not, yeah. not, enough, not enough time. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, which is one of my favorite episodes. Uh, so I thought that was that one, and I was like, oh no, this is a different one. And I was like, wow, what a really strong and powerful message yeah. uh, for sure. And you definitely can get how that comes from the the mind and heart of a of a, of a, a World War Two veteran. War II veteran. Too, you know, yeah. I think some people kind of lose that message of what they went through over there. You know of what this dictator was doing that almost did take over the world you know that wanted to kill millions of people that didn't look what he thought was perfect you know so it, it's scary you know to think that there was a guy like that at one time on this planet mm -hmm. that Very. almost had complete control Very. of the planet <laughs> and especially with all the shit that we read there's so many dystopian future versions you're like the last thing we would want is end up in some yeah. world like that where there's no books no music no art you know what i mean that's why I, you're, you're passionate man, you about know, when like yeah. they always say neo-nazism it's like come on man you yeah. know like our world war ii you know grandfathers great grandfathers fought against this kind of stuff mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. yeah so let's go right into the second episode uh the way you had me watch which is called the purple testament um Get us started on this one, W. We're gonna we're gonna we're getting close to break, but we've got enough time, I think, to get into the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, is that the lieutenant one? Uh, no, that's not that one. The Purple Testament was uh, shit. I have to look it up to see which one it was. Um, uh, the titles kind of throw me off sometimes. I'm like, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> uh, well, let's go into the one before that. I'll look this one up. But okay. let's go into well, talk I got, about uh, Death's Head Revisited, right? Yes, that was on. Okay, here. so that one's kind of like another World War II focused one. It's a uh, Nazi guard. Uh, that goes back. Uh, he he escaped war, uh, Germany. Uh, and he, I guess he went to South America and he's visiting yeah. one of the fucking concentration camps. Man. man, and how about this guy? He gets there happy, strutting he's around. Happy. He starts marching. He starts telling off the lady that's at the at the hotel, pretty much. That she kind of recognizes. She's like, "You look like someone else. Your name is." Uh, she calls himself something. Yeah. Uh, but and he's like, "No, that's not my name. My name is this." And then he's like, where is it at? Where's the camp? And so he goes and that cow, which is a really yeah. a real camp. And he goes visits and man, he can hear like the, the horns going, you know, his orders, you know, it's all being played in the background, you know, and it's like, man, this fucker. So like really enjoys it. Like for him, you know, going back to that camp, concentration camp is like, coming back home mm -hmm. you know i mean he's almost in in a full march like marching yeah. through there and then he's like oh, a lot of good times here like he's like he's almost like if you ever seen schindler's list he's uh what's his name ralph finds his oh, ralph Fiennes, character. yes like, that's, that's right what he was doing that's so right he visits and then all of a sudden he hears his kind of like ghost voice and mm -hmm. sure enough it's like the the jewish people that died in there the ghosts are yeah. coming to get him and you he know? sees the one ghost first, and he's almost like, "Oh, like you're still here, like man, you have an aged day, or whatever." Yeah. He's like, "He's like, man, like I remember the stuff I did to you, whatever." Like it, it's. I don't know if you guys ever seen uh, at pupil, but oh, uh, yeah. it, it, in that movie, yeah. um, uh, Ian, Ian McKellen's McKellen. character, when it gets revealed that that he's also like living amongst us, or whatever, and was it was a Nazi, he he uh, he's very. Um, not happy about it. He doesn't want to remember it. It was a bad time. He doesn't well, want when to he does, though, that. he he starts doing the whole well, right. Thing. Once the kid kind of forces him yeah. into it, but for the most part, he's like, "Fuck this," you know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want to see that uniform again. Nothing. This other guy in this episode is fucking like all happy and proud. Like he's all like, "Yeah, fuck yeah!" Like I fucking like hung people, killed them, burned them. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, I don't. Know, you should, I just let you do it to me forever. No, I mean uh. Uh, it, it's bad, you know, yeah. and they're kind of like they get him 
in in one of the the barracks and yeah. they do a whole full court oh yeah of he, justice on him the first know? ghost tells him he's like no you're here for your trial and he's like you forgot he's like you forgot what you did to me you forgot that you killed me so then he realizes he's seeing ghosts and he's like you know he wants out of the camp and he's locked in you know again uh, uh kind of like a, the guy in our first episode he's locked in and there and he's like no you're gonna stand trial Excuse me, and he's they're like by who, whatever, and, and they he tells them, uh, you know, well, by, he goes into the room and he sees all the people, which is all the all, all the, the ones that, that died. killed. Yeah. You know what I mean, they even show the first guy shows he's like, you know, the tattoo and stuff, and he's like, uh, you're gonna be held, you know, uh, for war crimes, you know, and crimes against humanity, and um, pretty much he is found guilty, and his sentence is, uh, you know, they're like, you're gonna feel mm -hmm. all the things we felt, all the all the the firing squads. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel the hanging, the, the, the nooses around your neck. You're gonna feel the gas, like he's getting sick, like he's like rolling around the yeah, doctor's he's feeling, he's yeah. feeling it. And and it's crazy. Like at the end, the the doctors show up and they're like, "What happened to this man?" Or whatever. He's like, and the, the guy that drove him there is there. He's like, "I just drove him here two hours ago. He was fine." And he goes, "What could happen in two hours to drive a man so it's mad?" Kind of like what he lost his mind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they cracked him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like they they made him feel and remember like all that. that Ghost Rider Penister, right? Almost yeah. like. You know, he gets into your head and you face all the the evil that you've done and you feel it on you. Totally. You How know? about what uh, Eric Draven does to Top Dollar? Yeah, that, that, that too. Yeah, gives him yes. 30 hours yes. of pain. Yeah, and he feels it. But imagine yeah. this guy's getting all the yeah. gassings, all yeah. the shootings that he fucking did to these people. Like, in, in a way, I kind of found it very fit, though. I was like, I was like, man, good motherfucker. Like, that's what you, especially that he was just so fucking like. He even tried to tell the guy, come on, it's water under the bridge. We're just doing what we were told. What mm -hmm. is that? And the, the guy tells him, he goes, man, that's what they said at Nuremberg. That was their one defense. We were following orders. Yeah. And here's the thing is that you're supposed to know as a human being what's right to do, what's right and what's wrong. You know, you should know in your heart if you have a and conscience see, or a there belief you go. in higher power. You, you know? know, And there you go. That's what he's trying to enforce because he was there. He was in the shit. You mm -hmm. know, and when, these new, when this news came out, you know, they said Eisenhower was horrified, and he gathered he gathered all the townspeople and showed them, look, this was what was going on in your town. Yeah, you know, the burning to your friends, your neighbors. Mm -hmm. At one point, before this guy told you that no, these were the scourge of all your problems. Yeah. You know, these were your friends, and look at them now. They're all in an oven. They're all gassed. They're all burned up. And that's know? addressed in this episode because in the mm -hmm. beginning, the the, the the innkeeper, she says, I wish they would tear it down. Yeah. But then in the end of the episode, they're specific to say these can never come Rod back. Rod Serling yes. says that he goes, yeah. because they stand as a, a reminder, reminder of what humanity is capable of when left unchecked. You know, what is the saying, double A? All it needs for evil men to succeed is for good men to do yeah. nothing. Yep. And I mean, that's all that evil needs to to thrive and survive. Mm -hmm. and, and we've all lived in recent times through things we've seen that we know that this is very true. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, that, you know, we have to be the ones that stand up and say, you know what? This isn't right. You know what I mean? And but we're it, not yeah. going to allow this. And know? again, you know, this is a guy that actually saw everything that was happening, saw these people that was trying to gain control of the world, not for a better place, but for a worse place. Mm -hmm. You know, because once he would have destroyed England, he would have came for America, and that would have been it, pretty much. Yeah. He would have had complete control of the Earth, the planet, you know, and for the, you know, to think of what he would have been doing to millions more, oh, yeah. maybe even billions more, you know, of people that didn't look, that didn't fit his ideal image. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And that in its very nature is why history is important, <clears throat> excuse me, and remains Especially, so and you know, what's so good is that it's coming from a guy, again, that, that was in World War II, that lived through it, that yeah. fought in it. So, uh, Guys, we are right at the door of our second uh, quick blip of a break that we take, guys. So if you're listening to us on audio, you'll hear us bleep out real quick. And if you wonder what happens in that blip, go check us out on YouTube and you hear the full uncut uh version of the episode we're going to go to our comments right now our facebook live viewers and uh listeners and have them join the conversation and talk with us here as we sit in the fifth dimension about <laughs> twilight zone uh guys if you're hanging out with us here on facebook live on this friday night well we certainly appreciate that we know things are opening back up we know that yeah. you're most likely yeah. vaccinated and you're not sitting around with us anymore like you were when we started a year ago during the pandemic our numbers were a little bit better you know what i mean but uh it's okay we They're, hope that they you come 
later from yeah. what I'm seeing now. They're, they're coming later. The freaks so. come out at night. Yeah. Though, when the yeah. sun goes down, man. It's also, too, it's summertime. People got the summertime. Got, the, got kids, the kids, man. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. You might be getting drug away. I, there may be some time in July that I'm drug away as well. We may have to do a Wednesday night, which maybe will help our numbers. <laughs> Just another Wednesday could night. Be, right? Just could be, right? Could be. But uh, let's get into a few comments, guys. What do you guys think about the Twilight Zone? Do you guys watch that show? Do you like it? What are your favorite episodes? What do you think about the type of episodes we're talking about thus far? Episodes kind of focus a little bit on, um, you know, well, dictatorships thus far, but we're doing this. But in war, the, the war. concentration camps, uh, you know, the dictators, mm -hmm. the the people who think you're obsolete because you have a, a job function that they don't think is worthy, or maybe because you believe in God, you know, or, you know, it's because you're a different race. Maybe you're gay. Maybe you're African-American, you know, or African. Or Mexican-American you know, like Mexican, ourselves, you know, you know what I mean? You're weak. You're you know, handicap. <laughs> you, you could have you a look mark different. on your yeah. face. You could be short. I'm yeah. not. I'm not over. Uh, you know, five foot. You know. You know. Six, this is so. <laughs> again. This is a, a a real war. You know that. You know our fathers. You know D Day. Mm -hmm. You know that just went up there, mm -hmm. and so many lives were lost, but just for a chance to kill this guy, to get rid of this guy, to make sure none of this kind of dictatorship happened. Mm -hmm. Is at this time there was two of them. There is Stalin and Hitler, and between those two guys, they probably killed tens of millions of people. So yeah, it's just terrible, terrible stuff. You know? Let's read some of the comments here, Double A. Uh, we got Foxy Roxy says, "Just saw your TikTok. I love it and love the subject tonight. Sorry I'm in and out because of work. No right. need to ever right. apologize, Foxy Roxy. We understand work. I'm glad sure. you like the TikTok though." Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Jess in the house. Hi, hun. She says, hey, guys, change sides. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in, in the, we're fifth, the fifth dimension, dimension babe. And she says, my favorite is the one with the family That's and the masks. That's a great one. I love that one. I am not familiar with that no. one. You know, oh, wow. One. Okay. Babe, let's watch yeah, that you one gotta, tonight, Jess, man. you got to show him that one. We've also got The Conjuring tonight, too. You'll, so. you'll enjoy the mask a lot. Okay, good one, babe. Good one. Yeah. Steve says, and I knew, I was kind of waiting to hear Steve had to say, Steve says, the boy, Billy, 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 Billy yeah. Mimi. I think uh, that was before the Lost in Space series. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I believe it you're was. a bad man. You're a very bad man. Yeah. And he was so much greater than the kid that was in the movie version. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hon, I'm glad you're joining us here uh, with us on the live. And yeah, oh. did you, did you check out the TikTok. Uh, OM OMG that I haven't seen it. I know. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Yeah. Uh, maybe when we watch it, I will remember, but we'll, we'll check it out tonight. So <laughs> that's, uh, like, that's like one of the more famous ones. So. <laughs> yeah. And again, I just, you know what? It's, it's kind of feels like, Maybe, but I don't know. You know, I mean, my, my brain is a wash sometimes. So, uh, she says, uh, uh, Seacon's favorite is the one with the robot. See, Seacon, you might have to give me on that one, hun. But she said, The one with the robot. I didn't see that one. Um, one. There's a few of them with robots. Yeah. Uh, I know. What, what is that one about? Tell us more, man. Tell us more. Um, but yeah, um, in, in that news also, guys, about The Conjuring. Uh, if you guys are fans of horror, uh, Conjuring news tonight, tonight yeah. on yeah, HBO yeah, yeah. Max. So. The Devil Made Me Do It. The the Devil, the Devil Made Me Do It, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, second favorite. Second favorite is the one, one with the robots. robots. Tell us about the one with the robot. Yeah. That sounds Which cool. Which one is that one? See, I know you know them a lot better than I do. So, um, well, there's just there's a few, actually, with yeah. robots. Okay. Yeah. They actually have one of real steel. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. You nice. remember like the one that Hugh Jackman did? Yeah. It was, that was based, based on, on, an a, on a, well, not just an episode, but based on a short story. No kidding. Like that one was. Yeah. So it's a lot different though, than, obviously, than the Hugh Jackman one, but <laughs> the oh. old man Jimmy's nieces. Oh, that one. Yes. yes. Uh, that's a fan. Yeah. I have seen that's a, one yeah. of our favorites. He's like, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, that, it's a, that's his niece, and he's the uncle, I think. And she's like, he's always bossing her around. And he's like, get me hot chocolate, extra yeah. hot in the white cup. Yeah, I was like, man, that guy's insults are, uh, whew, man, they were going at it. Now. I was like, man, you know, Riley's, you know, the acting is so great in the it show, is. too, right? Like, yeah. They really brought it. They really you know? came for it. Yeah. 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 You could see how these people had, uh, um, careers beyond it because they just did such a great job. They yeah, really, there's so many. Like, when you look at them, there's so many actors and actresses that you're like, holy shit, it's, him yeah. or her, you know. I like, was admiring the intensity of some of the acting in the episodes that I watched uh, this past week because I was like, "Wow, like this, dude, this is not like where people dial it in now. They just phoned it in. It's like a half-assed performance because it's not like a big thing." I'm like, "No, no, no. These people were fucking all in for it. Like, it was yeah. really awesome." Uh, so, Roxanne uh, chimed in. She goes, "I like the one with Burgess Meredith and aliens that make him smart." And then after uh, he kind of doesn't like use it like well or something. They make him strong. <laughs> ah, okay. So it's a pretty funny one. We it's did like, not say that one. No. It's like the timid, uh, the timid something. I can't remember. <laughs> it just says the pig, the 
Um, it, pipe it, tooth, pig, pig leg. Shit, I can't even <laughs> say it. But he was talking about her toothpick legs. He's yeah. talking about her toothpick legs and her bad teeth. And he tells her, he's like, if you were any, this is the aunt and uncle one, yeah. the uncle, the uncle and the niece. He goes, if you if you had any backbone, he's like, you have killed me a long time ago. I was like, yeah, what? He goes, but you're not gonna because you want money or whatever. <laughs> and that's a cool robot in that one. And the the rules of the will, she gets to keep all the money and everything. If she keeps the robot around, and he's bossing her around too, the the fucking robot. I was like, man, this poor chick. Uh, it's a great great episode. So I love that one. Thin lipped. Thin lipped. That's thin right. Lipped. Thin lipped, toothpick legged. You know, he's going off on her. Um, and man, what a great, uh, you know, like we said, you look back and you see a, a lot of the great uh, casting that they did uh, in that or whatever. Yeah. And we yeah. didn't mention that one, Roxanne, only because we were kind of focused. Uh, Double A really dialed in on no, some. But, but I want you guys to come in, though. You know? Yeah, tell us. Tell, and again, we're going to definitely revisit the Twilight Zone again and talk about favorite episodes and like that because it's such a fun, fun it show. Is. And yeah. you know what? I was going to say, Double A, this show is one of those shows that you could think that maybe you know younger people kind of have forgotten about or haven't really ever watched or investigated. And it's so funny that what we're talking about, some of the episodes we're talking about regarding war and things like that, is that that's why you can't forget history because once things go back far enough, it doesn't seem as important. Yeah. And it definitely yeah. is. It doesn't change. There are some people, it's weird, that think that the concentration camps are bullshit. Right. Right. What happened there was bullshit, you know. It's kind of like, wow, really? Well, it's you know? it's so funny, right? Because and this is a completely a, a, a bullshit version, not compared to this. But in our basketball episode, where the four of us are talking, me and and, and you and your brother mm -hmm. and Jack uh, and, and boy, uh, we're talking about basketball. We're talking about you know, kids need to go back and look at some of these guys. Remember yeah, the fucking yeah. shit they did, and remember the league that they played and the toughness that was there, the guys' sizes that were there, but not only that, but how it was one guy on a mm -hmm. team doing these things per team. Every yeah. team had a, had a superstar. There was yeah. no super teams like that. You know what I mean? Like it was like, you know, guys got so good around one guy that it felt like it was a super team, but they weren't, they, they it was made. When you look you know, at like the team, like Michael Jordan surrounding him, it's like, you can only really name Scottie Pippen and then everyone else. You're like, yeah. who was the point guard? Yeah. Who was the center? You know, Purdue, <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Worthington is like, you know, PJ Armstrong, those guys. That's right. what I'm saying. It's yeah, kind of right. like you're like, wow. You know, and then when you like mention like Houston, it's like, you know, Elijah one. And then it's kind of like, you know, who else? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And 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 now these teams you're listing down a list. You got four jerseys for one one team or whatever. Yeah. And and the, the reason why I bring that up is that in our episode, we talk about going back and, and looking into your history regarding basketball. Uh, because you'll forget the the feats that these individuals did. And when we talked about um I recently read a quote from some guy that's in the playoffs now saying, if you don't have Kobe, LeBron, and Jordan in your top three, then I don't take you seriously <laughs> regarding basketball. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of other guys that are really a legendary lot. and iconic. Now I'm like, you're talking about selling merchandise and all that? Yeah, those names are there. But I'm talking about what you did in the game of basketball. There's a lot of other it, names. It's funny, right? Because it's like, really, you're forgetting about Kareem? Mm -hmm. About his six MVPs, about his six titles. Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. I mean, a hundred points about that. in a game. Yeah. I mean, like this is a they dominant center. The rules because of this guy. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of other names. Yeah, in like there. You, you forget you about know, those. I mean, yeah. even guys like Dr. J. Uh, I mean, this is you know again, about Larry Bird. Yeah, that dominated the East. You that, know? that Jordan has said so much beat. praise yeah. about Larry Bird. I mean, it's like there it is from the the goat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's just one example of not, you know, not remembering history. Not remembering how it's, history. How it's, it's kind of like now. Forget. Yeah. Right. And you got to go back and you got to look at the history, especially when it comes to world history and the kind of things that we're talking about what, right now. What was cool, too, is like, you know, when he did Twilight Zone, it was like from 58 or 59 to like 64, 65. So it was already like a good like 20, you know, almost 20 years. I was years. surprised at how, what, yeah. how long a life yeah. it had. Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, there you go. Yeah, you know? great stuff, guys. Guys, keep joining and keep chiming and keep telling us more about what were your favorite episodes of the Twilight Zone. What are your Twilight Zone memories? Uh, are you like me, where you draw a blank? I don't remember the episode titles. I remember kind of what happened. Some you know? of them are kind of like, Ooh. yeah, but yeah. very, very uh, um, cool intros and outros by Rod Serling. Love those. And I, love lo I love that. Um, I love when the narration comes, kind of tells you what it is, and then at the yeah. end, he kind of he gives you the message, and you're like. The, oh, holy shit. The thin <laughs> tie, man, and the, yeah. and the 16 the cigarette version and the, and the yeah. suit. And I, I looked up a video when I was trying to learn my lines uh, for the uh, for the TikTok and for our, our Instagram story and Facebook story. Uh, there were different versions of that intro, you know what I mean, about the fifth dimension, about there being a door and 
being in the beyond. It was kind of spooky. Mm-hmm. It's spooky. You're like, what? You know what I mean, but it, it does always kind of mention like the imagination, like you're in the realm of imagination, which made me think what well, we talk about sometimes like Green Lantern's power, yeah. Spawn's power, yeah. kind of based on imagination. imagination. Man, Rod Serling would have been a, a beast <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the Green Lantern ring or with Spawn's powers for sure, man. So uh, what a really cool individual. Uh, how, did, how did he pass? The, what Cancer, I believe it was. Really? But he was only like 50, 52. Wow, a young yeah. guy, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah, I know you were saying earlier, you're like he's got a cigarette in his hand sometimes on the on the opening there. Yeah. So, guys, we're going to get back right into the conversation uh, about the Twilight Zone, uh, more specifically the the six episodes that we've chosen to talk about, sandwiched between Memorial yeah, Day and, and D-Day. D-Day. Uh, yeah, that's coming you know, up Sunday. Yeah, uh, don't forget, guys. I mean, that was a, a, a huge <sighs> event. That's turning point of World War II right there. Yeah, massive, guys, massive. So we're in the fifth dimension. We're walking through with you guys. We're, we're listening. Uh, we want to hear your comments and hear you chime about which episodes you liked, loved, uh, stuck with you, had a message that maybe you that resonated with you. Um, yeah, tell us your favorite. Tell us, you know, what's your favorite Shatner episode? Yeah, you know? yeah. I love the, the lovely Jessica's uh, of offerings up there. Those yeah. episodes, you know, yeah. I mean, those are fantastic. So, uh, and I've got one to watch. You got to watch one with the masks. Ooh. I think I do remember that one vaguely, vaguely. To. I, I, I kind of remember it. Um, when I said I'm like, yes, I do remember. They're yeah. kind of, it's a scary mask, I think, it's, and they're kind trading, of, kind of. something like that. I remember something like that. So I, I want to watch You're, it. You'll watch it. I yeah, love them. I never it. get enough. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay, guys, let's get right back into the conversation uh, about the Twilight Zone. Okay, we're right now. Okay. So double A, uh, great stuff, man. Great yeah, stuff during your break. Uh, uh, obsolete man and Dead's head revisited. Yes, and I want to give a shout out to the Friday Night Faithful and the Friday Nighters, Jessica. Steve, Foxy, Roxy, uh, talking about their favorite episodes of the Twilight Zone, uh, including some episodes I got to go watch. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, definitely some great ones in there. And it's a great show overall. But we- yeah, you can watch it any like any episode. It, it doesn't follow no story, no yeah. nothing. You can watch any episode. It's, uh, anthology. And anthology. Yeah. anthology. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When when is the times the way that they always show it on TV? It's like. There's like it's, 24 hours that they do. Well, it's uh, usually it was 4th of July mm-hmm. and then New Year's, New okay. Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Have they since changed that? Or? Uh, you know what? I don't remember seeing it last year on 4th of July, okay. which kind of hurt me a little yeah. bit. You TNT know? or who does it? It's uh, TBS? Sci-Fi. Oh, Sci-Fi. The okay, Sci-Fi cool. Network. Yeah, but New Year's, like my tradition, that's like one tradition is eating my noodle and uh, watching Twilight Zone marathon. Very nice. When it's cold with the heater on, yeah. you know, it's super it's definitely cold outside. It's a cold weather yeah. show. I feel yeah. like too. It's just, I'm off. I'm always off. So I just, I like this, this remote's not going anywhere. There you, you know? go. <laughs> Hearing that it came out in the 4th of July is kind of a new thing to me because I didn't know that. Oh, I really? Thought, I thought it was yeah. always at the, in the cold months. You know? Oh, okay. Okay. But very cool. Okay, so we've talked about, like we said, two out of our six. Uh, the one that we were trying to look up, we couldn't remember who, who, which was happening, then, but the, pur- the purple, the purple testament. The purple so testament. A lieutenant comes in, new lieutenant. Oh, so you, know, you are right. It was yeah, that one. It okay. was that one. Shit. And I told uh, you it was wrong. <laughs> you know, I, if you've seen the stories, if you read, you know, you've heard our born episode <laughs> with the Punisher, you know, <laughs> it's that lieutenant that comes in straight from school, you know, and he has a whole new plan. Whole new mission. Everything's gonna work out. Blah blah blah. You know, even uh, the Reverend Jesse Custer's uh, in the comic book. His dad also kind of deals with something like this <laughs> yeah. uh, in his uh, time in the Marines in, in yeah. uh, Vietnam. So here we go. Yeah, and this one has a uh, future superstar of uh, Bewitch, uh, Dick York. Uh, he's in this one. Uh, Darren, the first Darren. Oh, is you in know this what? Double A, we're we're mashing two episodes. No, no, it says right here that he was in this one. Uh, yeah, 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 but this is not the purple testament. Is not the one with the lieutenant. That's later on. That's the the one with the lieutenant. Is uh, let me tell you right here real quick. Uh, a quality of mercy is ah, the one okay, that one. Okay. The, the purple testament is. You're right with Darren. Well, uh, Darren from Beach. yeah. Darren's in there. And this is the 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 uh, the other the lieutenant that's with him is the one that sees. The, okay, so he has the ability to kind of know when his men are going to die. Yes, that's what's going they on. They get like a glow in their face. Right. Right, right. Almost like, like if I'm like right here with double A, and then he just sees this. Yeah, then that happens. You're like, what and the? then it's like, yeah, and then I'm like, the and then I fall down the stairs and break my neck, and then the next person he sees the glow on, you're like, holy shit, like you know. So he's telling Darren this, right? He's like, I know, I knew it the day before those men. I wrote down that they weren't going to come back, and he's like, are you sure you didn't write it down the day after? Like maybe mm-hmm. just you know, you know, war is hell, right? You know what I mean? Your mind is all. It's he's like, he's like, no, I saw it. I know what I saw. You know what I mean? And and, and then. You know, he tells me you need some, you need some time off. 
you know, you need to go to the, go to the, uh, the hospital, the infirmary yeah. and all that. And because I don't think at this time in World War II, cause Patton got in trouble. Mm. I don't think P PTSD was like a no thing. You know, they talk about shell shock a lot. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, he's, he's been um, shell shock. You know? you know, that's what got Patton in trouble. He slapped some guy. You know, told him that he was a coward for not going back, but it was something that wasn't, uh, you know, not diagnosed at that time. Right. Until right. later, probably after World War II, then that's when the doctors like, oh, this guy really is messed up. You know, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, you know, you, yeah. you've been too long, and like I said, this one takes place too in the Philippines, right where Rod Serling was stationed at. So, yeah. and uh, when again, I watched it, that was cool. That's why I, I was like, oh shit, Darren from Bewitch. Like I told Double A, I texted him, I said, hey man, this one's got Darren, and he snuck in some really cool stars on me in, in these episodes. So I really appreciated that. That was a little like a little pop for me when I was watching them. Hey, this make it easier. It always makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's almost like that. What I was telling you, like when he was stationed there, the unpredictability. Right. Of death. You don't know what's going to happen yeah. until, boom, right yeah. there. You know? So he's in the infirmary. He's visiting one of his men and they're talking or whatever. And he's like, Yeah, you know, they tell me I'm going to be okay, Lieutenant. Like, thank you for coming to visit me. He's like, Yeah, you know, of course. He's like, You get better. Focus on that. Well, as he like looks at him as he's leaving, the glow comes out of him and he kind of like, yeah. eyes get white. He's <laughs> like, Oh shit. You know? And he goes downstairs and, um, no, no, no. Uh, the doctor comes over and, and, he like passes out and the doc like he turns around pretty much and then he turns back and he's like out and the doctor comes and checks his wrist. He's like, he's dead, he's gone or whatever. He comes downstairs, he sees Darren from uh from Bewitch. Be and he's like, Hey, are you I heard you're here to see so and so? He's like, he's like, he's like, uh the doc told me he's gonna be okay. And he's like, No, he's not okay. He's like, he, he's, he's dead. dead. And he's like, What? He's like, I just talked to that doctor. And he's <laughs> like, and then that's he's like, he's like, he's like, I knew it because I saw the glow on him. So now he's like, man, this guy's losing it. Like he's, he's scared. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So he tells the doctors, hey, admit him, you know what I mean? Like, don't let him, you know, whatever. Um, but he doesn't get admitted. He ends up back at the mm -hmm. camp mm -hmm. and like he's gonna go back out into the field yes, or whatever. Yes, he is. Yeah. And what happens? They're drinking, they're drinking, mm -hmm. you know. He's like, come and have a drink with me. He's trying to put him at ease. Yes, yes. And and he sees, he sees, he sees hello, it. I'm dead. Yeah, and I was like, oh, and man. He, he, he begs him. He's like, don't go. Nah, don't go out to the mission. Like, I, I was can't. like, shit. He's like, you know, he has to. He's their leader. Yeah. And these guys are not the shitty lieutenants. That's another episode. Yeah, I'm people. sorry. That's another they, one. Yeah, yeah. and I, I would have got confused too. But uh, they're they're like friends or buddies. Or they're, and he's like, no, don't go. Like, don't go to, you know, don't go to the mission. Like, you're not going to come back. Like, he's telling him. I mean, like, and in, in a war, you don't say that stuff. Because you, you're trying to keep each other motivated, like we're gonna all go home, blah blah. So this guy believes it, where he's like, "Don't go, you're gonna fucking die." You know what I mean? Like, you know. But of course, you know, Darren is like, "No, man, it, it's you're you're nuts." You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, you're not nuts, but you're you know you're you're just you know you've yeah. got you've seen a lot. You yeah. know what I mean, you know, it, it's gonna be okay. So he goes out. The whole platoon comes back except one man, and then he has to tell the commanding officer. He's like. Uh, we only lost one or whatever. And he's like, who? And he was like, the other lieutenant or whatever. I think he's lieutenant too. I think so. Yeah. And he was like, oh, man, he was a good man, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, it was like one random Captain. sniper fire. Captain. Yeah, one random sniper fire on the yes. bridge or some shit. Mm -hmm. And they get him. And it's like, fuck, man. Like, like that sucks. Like, you know, and so he's like, all right, you know. So then what proceeds to happen, double A? Yeah, he, uh, we're already getting to the end, right? Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much like it. Where yeah. he sees his own glow. Yeah. He looks like, like into like a mirror. I believe, right? Yeah, he's shaving. And, and they're telling and him he's going to go home. Right? Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. jeep is there That's to pick right. him up. That's right. The jeep's there. He's like, yeah, you're going to get some R&R &R right. and some time off, that. whatever. Yeah. And and uh, the, the guy comes and gets his bag and stuff. And he's like, are right, you ready? He's like, I know these roads at the back of my hand, all that. And he saw that glow. And the mirror breaks and all these pieces. And he's like, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, he gets in the Jeep and sure enough, he turns to the, the, the driver or whatever. And he's like, don't worry, Sarge, get some rest. Or, or Lieutenant, to get some rest. <laughs> and he so lights cool. up too. And you're like, fuck, yeah. man. Like, yeah. And you just hear the explosions. Yeah. Where, uh, the line mine. The, yeah. Because they, they said, watch out. There's some mine, the mines mm -hmm. that haven't been dug up yet. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, man. It's, yeah. It's, uh, That's pretty, brutal. It's pretty you brutal. Know, it was kind of like, golly. I'm sure that was the number one fear probably everyone had. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't know where it's going to come from. You don't know right. if you're going to die. You don't know if you're going to make it. 
You know, they're snipers. Snipers are mm -hmm. they shoot you from anywhere. You yeah. know, it, it comes into play. And the other one we're going to talk about about the shitty lieutenant. We might as well go right into that one, okay. which is uh, this one's called a quality of mercy. Quality now, of was mercy. there anybody in this one that was? I believe it was Leonard Nimoy that was in this one. Well, really? I believe so. Now this now any one of these episodes, guys, you could easily take and draw and make a, a an, an hour movie. Uh, Hour and a half. Like I told Double A about the, the one we just talked about, the Purple Testament. Yeah, I had Leonard Nimoy in there. Really? Who the hell was he in that one? You don't remember him? I don't remember yeah, seeing yeah. him in there. Mm -hmm. but, but in the Purple Testament, at the end, Rod Serling comes out and talks about it. I think it's actually from the Bible, the Purple Testament, what it's about. Excuse me, but again. Uh, it's actually a speech from uh, William uh, Shakespeare's oh, that's The right. Merchant of Venice. Yes, Shakespeare, The Merchant of yes. Venice. I don't know why I thought the Bible. Famous writers, right? Famous again, writings. set in the, in the Philippines, mm -hmm. right where he was at. Okay. Set. That's where this one is set. August 1945. This is the Quality of Mercy. Yeah, Quality of Mercy right. in the Pacific Ocean Theater of World War II. Yeah. Right where Rod Serling was based at, you know, stationed at. So, again, a, a place that he's very familiar with, the mm -hmm. territory, the look, the feel, you know. So. Yeah. so, this one deals exactly with what Double A said. You've got this unit that's been out there. They're watching this encampment. They can't advance. They've been bombing them, but they're not um, – they're not getting them or whatever. They're like, man, yeah, it's it's just a it's a stalemate almost. Mm -hmm. But people, I mean, lots of people are dying. Lots yeah. and lots of people. And their forces are tired. Bad. They're they're real bad. They're battle hardened. They've already been through it all. They're look they look like shit. Their uniforms are all fucked up. Like they they look like shit. They're just worn down. You know what I mean? And uh, again, like Double A said earlier, uh, you know this new. Fresh uniform, right? He shows up. All of his stuff is. Yeah, you've had the bosses that come in, replace your old boss, uh -huh. and you know this is the direction we're going. We're not going to be making the same mistakes these guys have made. You know, blah blah blah. Yeah. You know. He even gets on one of the minis. Is that how you address it? An officer laying on your back because he's like, you know, like what do you know, man? They're, like, yeah, you, you just got out here. Like we've been in the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it, and it's a it's a device we see used in lots of war movies now, whatever. And it's something that maybe many of us have experienced, where you're the one training the boss because you've got the fucking experience or whatever. And uh, that's what this guy's saying. He's like, no, I think we can go right at them. We could take them out, you know, ourselves. You know what I mean? Like if these men whip themselves into shape, we could do that or whatever. <laughs> and they're really weary. They're tired. Yeah. You know, it's just it's every day. These are the kind of guys that have seen so much shit. They're like, man, fuck yeah. your rank, yep. man. Like yep. I'm fucking sick of this. You'll be place. dead in a week. Yeah, I want to go home. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? That, like that kind of attitude. You'll be gone. Yeah, like, pretty you, soon. You don't know what the fuck did we sign up for? What the fuck did you sign yeah. up for? You know? And the the sergeant is even telling him, he's like. Look, man, you just want to get some kills in here. Mm -hmm. But like, how many men mm -hmm. do you need to get yeah. killed so you can feel better about yourself? Yeah. And uh, he's just like, no, man, you guys are just, uh, you know, y'all are weak. Like, y'all are not a good squad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's telling them shit. So at some point, double A, what happens? There's it's a twist. Thing. Like he starts seeing himself as like the Japanese. That's right. The binoculars. Yeah. Yes. He drops them. He and drops. When he picks them up. <laughs> yeah. He sees himself surrounded by Japanese officers and soldiers. I wish there would have been a scene. There's not a scene like this, though. There wouldn't it have been a scene like he's looking in a bucket of water or in a mirror and it's a Japanese yeah. face? That would have yeah. been so cool because yeah. that's essentially what's happening, guys. And, <laughs> and, and this is what this this episode made me think of this. But imagine all these people. You know, like we said, here's what the Twilight Zone does. It gives you these messages. And this is a message I think that definitely still applies to today. Imagine someone that maybe feel some kind of way about the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm. Well, imagine one day you wake up in those shoes and your life is suddenly not so easy, you know what I mean, because of the way you look. Imagine that you're a man and you believe a certain thing, uh, but maybe the, you wake up the next morning and you're a woman and yeah. and, and you've yeah. got something going on with your body and something somebody tells you what well, you've got to do with it. Maybe it would take that to... Show you the perspective, yeah. but here's what happens. You know, he he sees himself in, surrounded by Japanese. He takes off running towards the American lines <laughs> or whatever. He's like, "Oh my god, well, I'm in the wrong place." He takes off running. Well, they're shooting because yeah. they see this guy running out of there. He like has to turn back. Well, when he gets back, they're like, "Man, that was very brave of you, sir. Like you tried to rush the Americans yourself. Like how awesome." And he's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Who who am I? What's my name?" And then they're like, "Oh, your name is like, you know." uh Tanahashi yeah, or something like that. It, yeah, something, and and yeah. he's like, he's like, what? No, he's like, something, something's wrong. Something's very wrong here. And they're like, no, sir, everything's all right. He's like, they're weary. We know their forces are yeah, weary. We're waiting them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they're telling him the same things 
that the Americans were telling, they're like, why don't we just go around and let it go? They're weak. They're tired. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need to engage in this conflict. We don't need there to be more bloodshed. More bloodshed. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's saying to himself, he's like, you know, of course, when he's the hard ass, he's like, no, no, we're going to go out and we're going to kill. He's like, the duty is to kill the enemy no matter what. And see, the thing is, too, is that the, the main general that was overseeing this territory was General MacArthur at the time. Mm. So General MacArthur was not going to back down. Mm. He was going to make sure you win, you go in there. And you hit him hard because Eisenhower was the overall general, and you know D Day was his his baby. Right. So I'm sure MacArthur is like, no, I got to do something, you know, bigger than Eisenhower. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's a line that sticks out that he tells them in before he views himself as a Japanese uh, uh, officer. He says, "You you kill the enemy on the first day and the last day of the war. It doesn't matter. Your job is to kill the enemy." <laughs> and it's like these guys know. They're like, "Hey, man." Like we're all fucking soldiers out yeah. here. Like we're all already like we're we're weary. We're battle weary. We're done. It's over. And at some point they even mentioned, right? They're like, oh, it came over the radio that a bomb was dropped or whatever. Yes, the atomic so bomb. The, the yeah. end of the war has been signaled or whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you know, again, the Japanese are, you know, they want to attack and he's kind of telling them no, no, and he, you know, they're bringing him a coward, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I think somewhere along the way they switch, right? Finally. Yeah, he gets back to himself. And uh, then he's, of course, his tune is changed, right? Pay it back, real yeah. bad. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, you guys were right. You know what I mean? And like, we should, you know, uh, try to go around them, this and that, or whatever. He's completely different because pretty much, you know, it, it's a simple message, but it's like he's walked a mile in the shoes of his enemy now. You know what I mean? And he's seen that they're just as beat up, just as weary, and just as, you know, battle worn as the guys that he was with. And here he's really, Mr. Gung Ho, ready to go out there and, and kill. He would have, you know, caused a lot more bloodshed, you know? Right. So it would have right. been bad. It would have been more casualties up the ass, you know? Uh, how, how many times have we seen now in, in movies, you know, Kong Skull Island, the, the enemies that, like, again, the mutual respect was there. And this gets mentioned in one of the other episodes we're going to talk about next, where it's like, there was no American that fought the Japanese that didn't have respect for them because they were, they fought to the death. Like, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, uh, me and my girlfriend, Jess, we were even watching this show. It's on Netflix right now. But it's about, like, feudal Japan, like the ancient samurais. And these guys, like, man, I mean, oh, like, when yeah. they failed, it was like, yeah. you know, the classic sword yep. to the stomach thing. There was, they, this was themselves fighting each other. That's what I'm saying. There was no surrender with the Japanese. It yeah. was boom. boom there, there's boom. a there's a story in there about this uh, in that in that show. I forget what it's called. The art of something. The art of the samurai or something like that on Netflix. But this general that gets an infection in his eye or whatever, fucking cuts out his own eye, puts a fucking patch on, continues to fight, trying to gain control of Japan. And they called him like you know the one eyed dragon or demon or something like that. And yeah. I was like, man, they gave such fucking cool I know. names <laughs> because it was like. Well, if you fucking carve Damn. your own goddamn eye out so that you keep fucking, like, fighting, it's like, that's fucking insane. This is the time, guys, feudal Japan, they ain't no fucking, you know, pain-killing medicine back then and shit, you know what I mean? Like, you're just in it fucking the way it is. These guys were hard, hard fucking military, and when we dropped those bombs, it was kind of like, you know, stop your shit, you know, yeah. and kind of hoping... They'd be scared. We had to go to that extreme we to break to that go. spirit. That tradition of that samurai was in these guys. They believed so. that the emperor was a god. They deeply believed that he was a son of God mm -hmm. and that he was going to be the rightful ruler of this planet. You know, and it's just, it's nuts. Yeah. What the cult of personality does yeah. to whole countries, it's fucking insane. And what about the cult of war, Double A? What yeah. it did to this lieutenant, where he was like, I've got to be, he probably had some daddy got him into the military probably. Academy, and was like, I'm going to make him proud yeah. by getting me some. In fact, even one of the, the men that's laying on the ground, he kind of throws a, a remark at him. He's like, Well, what does he want? Scalps? You know what I mean? Like, kind of a throwback to the old yeah. time when it was like, yeah. you know, like, like man, this guy's like a, a fucking, like a, it was just a blood, bloodthirsty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it took for him to see it. And man, you know, guys, uh, we don't get political on this show, or whatever. No, but no, but, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, World War II. We're talking about what Rod Turner was doing without even really re realizing he was doing it. You know, we just thought, Oh wow, that's a cool twist. He he put the you know the American into the Japanese soldiers. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and it's just it's neat because it's still him, the same actor, whoever it is, yeah, the actor. Yeah, but he's in the uh, he's in the Japanese in uniform the, and all that, and you're <laughs> like, oh shit. Yeah. And like I said, I told Double A it would have been so cool just to see a, a an image of him looking at a mirror and being like, oh shit, like that's not my face. You know what I mean? <laughs> but guys, imagine in the in the culture that we live today, 
sometimes I hate to say it, but a, a culture that is really fueled by hate, um, you know, and, and short sightedness and, and, and absent mindedness. But to wake up and have to walk a mile in another person's shoes, truly in, in another person's skin. Imagine what an eye opener that would be for so many people. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, you know, they're they told him not to attack because they dropped the bomb. And, you know, one of the sergeants tells him, you know, don't fret, Lieutenant. I'm sure there'll be other wars, other countries, other human beings you can knock off. To which he he tells himself, I hope not. God help us. I hope not. I'm telling you, this was a brutal war. World War II was brutal. We had a guy that was hell-bent on taking over this planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think sometimes, like you said, we forget about that. That there was a man in the papers overseas blowing shit up, destroying countries, wanting everything to be perfect in his image. And we've read a lot about guys that want to take over the world and it doesn't always sound, you know, uh, so scary, but you know, you, your Thanos is your dark sides, your Dr. Dooms or whatever. This shit was real guys. This shit was real. You know I mean, and yeah. it was, uh, and ugly. it was knocking at our door and it was a lot of death. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, like I said, sometimes when it's a comic book form, it doesn't feel so important and it doesn't feel as Real because these guys got you're bright in, costumes. You're in the adventure, you know. With this adventure. one, you know, again, this is a guy serving in World War II, two episodes that's based in the Philippines where he was stationed at. So it's yeah. pretty brutal. Another example there, you know, you got Bucky and the, and yeah. the Japanese soldier at the beginning of Falcon and Winter right. Soldier. That's right. He yeah. has that connection with with uh, with him that's in right. a ways. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just it's just a, a an interesting. You know, dichotomy. You know what I mean? And you, I, I've seen it a lot. You know, I've seen it used in a lot of movies and shows. It just it can show what one person can do if you know let loose like right. he was. You know, right. it's, it's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that is real fifth dimension shit right there. <laughs> and you never know who that that enemy may be. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the next one to kind of since we're okay. in that theme, let's go to uh, the last episode that you had me look at. It was uh, the encounter. Uh, because then that the, one or two. The, you want to talk about that one? Let's go two. to the encounter first because it kind of okay. deals with exactly what I'm talking about. So here I got gassed because I was like, man, George Takei, you know, Mr. Sulu is here. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's there. I'm like, what the, what cool, whatever. So you've got this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like, early uh, type of man. Yeah, he said like he's, he's from. Uh, he's from Stalag 17. Have you ever seen that? That was a great prisoner of war, World War II movie. That's I. A, William Holden is a star of that movie. And that this guy movie. and his brother got me to watch this movie, Black and White movie, Stalag 17. Gosh dang, it is ripe for a remake. Although the, the <laughs> yeah. original is perfect, but yeah. man, you get the right person to do it. Maybe get James Mangold to do yeah. it, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, uh, the guy that is uh, one of the men in the in the barracks uh, with them, you cannot say too much, uh, one of the guys in the barracks with them, he looked like what an old day Steve Rogers would have looked like. Yeah. Captain America, yeah. a big yeah. guy, blonde uh, hair. If you ever blonde. know uh, Mission Impossible, the series, Peter Graves, that's him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. But it's a fantastic movie. But you said one of the one of the guys in there, not the funny one, right? The one, no, no, the, the one that's okay. serious guy. It was it's Hoff Hoffy, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Graves, mm -hmm. uh, the blonde dude, and then the dude with the beard. Okay. Those three that are always hanging out with each other. That, okay. That distrust uh, William Holden's character a lot. I can't think and of him. He, right my, yeah. You know, William Holden does the match. <laughs> yeah. It, it's right. him, though. It's him. But obviously, you know, that movie was made in, like, 53 or something. And this one's, like, in the 60s. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's a, it's a cool episode. It's a, It really only deals, like, in the uh, attic. Mm -hmm. And it's really two characters. It's Sulu and this other guy. Yes. And it's a little after World War II. Yeah. And, you know, Sulu, obviously, you know, uh, Sulu, George Takei, you know, he's he's Asian uh, American, mm -hmm. you know, and we had a big problem here in America during that time period. Mm -hmm. We actually did put a lot of Asians in concentration camps here uh, for fear, just fear, you know, nothing they did. It was just fear. And anyways, they're like neighbors. Uh, George Takei's like characters, like looking to make some extra money. Yeah. So he hires him what to like help him. He's like, a working man. Clean the. He actually says he's gonna mow his lawn, mow guys, his lawn. for the amazing price of seven dollars a week. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> my grass cut is thirty damn dollars. I got a, like a little square yard. You know what I mean? Shit, double your yard be fifty oh, bucks. Yeah, easy that's why I don't hire anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you got to get there with your own mower and do that with all this damn rain. I'll, but, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hearing George Takei offer seven dollars a week. I'm like, shit, seven dollars a week. How many? How many mows is that? Yeah. I think he says he's gonna come by three times. I think so. I'm like three mows a week for seven bucks. So like so the main character on. is like an American veteran. You mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. you know, so. 
and he's cleaning his attic and he's like you know i, I like this episode initially too because he's like he's like come up have a beer with me or whatever he's like you know like you know let's talk when he's calling him boy you know what i mean this and, one has a very supernatural element to it very much you know? so and i believe it was, there's something that happens at the end but it was, it was i'll tell you i'll talk about because i had it was like well i don't remember having seen it like a lot you know what I mean? But I have barely happened. It's funny one. because I had barely really seen this episode like about two years ago. Really? I had never seen this one. I okay. didn't know George Takei came out in the yeah. episode. So this was really surprising. So you got Kirk and Sulu. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. And, and Leonard Nimoy that we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't remember him from that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go yeah, back yeah. and look at it again. Um, so anyway, so they're there. He's cleaning. He's like, man, I've been trying to clean this attic for week, months, and it's a mess. And you know, the up. struggle. Yeah, yeah, he's like, come up, have a beer with me, or whatever, kid, or whatever. You know, he's calling him boy. He's calling him boy. And he's like, hey, man, don't call me boy. Like I'm a man, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I work, or whatever. And he's like, all right, all right, take it easy, take it easy. You know, he keeps telling him take it easy, whatever. And he's like, oh man, blah blah. And then he's like, uh, he says, you ever seen one of these? He's like, this is a, a samurai sword. You know, I took it off of a of a guy that a soldier, I, a soldier that we were in battle or whatever when I was over at wherever uh, in World War Two. You know what I mean? Yeah, World War Two. Like, yes. he's and he. This is where he says he's like, "There's no American that will say that they weren't the toughest." You know what I mean? You know, toughest uh, opponents that we had, whatever they fought tooth and nail. And he's like, "You know, it was me or this guy, and and, and I got the better of him, and I got the uh, the sword or whatever." So. Uh, he says he's going to go get more beer, I think, whatever, freshen up the beer, get us some cold beers or whatever. And while George Takei is holding the sword, he gets, like, this thing coming in. Yeah, like, it's weird. Like, he's, like, something starts happening to him. Yeah, and he's, like, he's telling us, he's, like, I'm going to kill him. He's, like, I'm going to kill this and man. I don't the, know why, but yeah. I'm going to kill him. You know and then I mean? the door just, it's stuck. They can't open the door. They can't get out. Yeah. You know, and it's almost... Like it's the soul of the guy that he took the sword from mm -hmm. that's possessing Sulu, you know, and that's why I say it has like a supernatural element. He starts feeling this soldier, yeah, spirit big in time. Him. In fact, so much he tells me, he goes, "You didn't, you didn't kill, you this didn't kill man his man. No. He gave up the sword to you. He was unarmed, and you and killed you him unarmed. Killed him. Yeah, and then he's like, you know, he's like." What? Like, you know, like kind of in a sense, like, how the hell do you know that? <laughs> yeah. But then he puts the sword down and he puts his, he has a knife, he puts his knife down and they kind of start to talk. And they are yeah. drinking beer together. Yeah. And they're like, you know, they're kind of like just out of it almost. Yeah. You know? And they're kind of going back and forth where he's like, you know, you don't know what it was like over there. And he's like, you know, hey, man, you know, uh, I was at Pearl Harbor. I grew up in Hawaii, whatever. Yeah. Uh, George Takei mm -hmm. saying this. And he's like, you know, um, who we all know better as Mr. Sulu, but uh, he's saying, you know, you know, I was there, man. My my, I was uh, since I was four. I was four when when uh, D Day happened. He's like, I saw the planes coming over. He's like, you know, my dad tried to warn the the, the naval soldiers, and he tried to tell them like, no, you know, like 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 you know, run, run, you know. He tried to tell them because you know he he worked for the Air Force and all that, and he was a, uh, um, you know, he was you know like a. a proud you know even though he was japanese he worked he was american yeah, yeah he, mm -hmm. he was americanized and then like in like a quick turn like you know george takei starts kind of crying or whatever and then he goes that's not true he's like uh my old man was a traitor or whatever he's like he told the planes where to come where to bomb which areas to hit you know what i mean and he was directing like, them holy shit yeah and you're like what <laughs> the fuck you know and in the beginning you're like way sympathetic for him yeah. but then you're like man and, and then he's like, but you know, it's not he didn't do it, it was his dad, but he's like fucking way down about it. And the guy, uh, the the American veteran is kind of like, oh, you know, you know, hey man, your old man was a traitor or whatever. Have another beer or whatever. <laughs> he's like, you know, like I did stuff. He's too. trying to really be like laid back about like the whole thing, you yeah. know, like trying to calm the, the tension down. And he starts to talk about his wife and he's like, Ah, oh, my old lady left or whatever. Yeah. We were fighting or whatever. He's like, No, she'll be back. He goes, and if she's not, you know, oh well or whatever, you know. And <laughs> he's like, you know, the truth is, you know, we things have been bad or whatever. They always been bad or whatever. So you're just like, man, there's like a lot of like like what the fuck is going on? Like both these guys are kind of not really like um uh, redeemable characters and or again whatever, it's you know? probably you know maybe these are stories that rod certainly knows about for maybe other veterans you know that mm -hmm. hey maybe their marriage went down to shit hole after this you know yeah blah 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 or maybe you know that maybe that's some of the way the the japanese felt that yeah lived here in america that were born here in america kind of torn should i yeah you making up a lie should I maybe, help? yeah <laughs> maybe your parent or whoever you know did have involvement with you know what was with the other side and it's like man i don't want to be associated with that i was born here so you lie or not just that but you you know you start thinking well i have my roots are over there should yeah. i even 
help? Should I, you know, yeah. should I help America or should I help Japan? I mean, know? even the guy, the, the veteran guy, the American guy's story, it's like, you know, yeah, it was definitely wrong. You killed that unarmed guy or whatever, but you're not going to tell the story about yourself with that. You're going to tell the heroic, the valorous story, you know what I mean? And there's probably a lot of that. Thing going on too. It is war, it, you know, um, Breaker Morant kind of deals in that, you know, is it war crimes or is it, you know, war? Yeah, we've <laughs> seen know? Platoon also, man. Yeah. Fucking, you know, Charlie yeah. Sheen, you know, man. What's wrong with you, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, there was probably a lot of fucked up the shit. The rules are thrown out, you mm -hmm. know, so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they continue to go back and forth, and then again, the sword gets picked up again, and there's mm -hmm. more, like, them dancing around, and he's calling it a pig sticker. He's like, hey, where's that pig sticker? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and he's like, you know... Uh, you know, George Takei just keeps gravitating towards he it does. or whatever. Yes. Uh -huh. and like it's pulling him. Yeah. And then know? eventually he tells me, he's like, hey, man, I got a short fuse, man. So watch how you talk to me. Like, <laughs> George Takei is like not having this guy's stuff. But he's just like a, you know, rough around the edge. Okay. He's like, hey, man, I'm yeah. just, uh, you know, he, in a sense, he's like, I'm breaking balls with yeah. you or whatever. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, that guy, you know, George Takei ain't having it or whatever, you know. Uh, so and it's just more and more. It's fueling him. It's fueling him. And, and then what happens, though? Well, yeah, is, man, they just, they, he kills him. Yeah, they're they, killing the American veteran. They get into it. The sword kind of falls in a certain way in between a, a chair, and he kind of pushes him yeah. on it, and it goes through him. Yeah. And it's like, and he dies. And then the weird part was what happens next. It's yeah. like, uh, I don't know if he snaps out of it or whatever, but he just jumps out the window. and Yeah, well, he grabs the sword first, and then he yells, yeah. Banzai! Yeah. He, he jumps out the yeah. window like, to his death. He to his, his death. death. Yeah. And I remember when I watched it earlier, I was shocked. I was like, I was yeah. like dude. Dude, number one, I rarely see someone die like in that yeah. type of way on this yeah. show. And then the other death, you know, that type of way on the show was brutal. very it was brutal. Very brutal. Yeah, and it, again, maybe that's what he was showing, just how brutal it was and can be. You know? Totally. Yeah. Totally. We're right up against our break, guys. We're ready to get into the comments and talk with you, the Friday Night Faithful. You, All you Friday Nighters out there about what you think about the fifth dimension and the Twilight Zone. Guys, we'll be back in a blip if you're with us. Uh, on the audio version, and if not, you're hanging out with us Facebook Live, we're going to be right here, or you're checking us out on YouTube, you know that we're not going anywhere. Guys, what do you think about the Twilight Zone? Man, what a fucking crazy episode that shit was. I was like, what the fuck? Mr. Sulu just threw himself to his death? Yo, Bonsai? Like, what the fuck? So, uh, guys, we've got some big comments in here. Um, we appreciate uh, you guys being here, so let me take a look and scroll up uh, here. Right there, oh, there right we right go. Justin, right there. Justin was in the house. Justin, what is up, my man? Are you still here with us? Uh, it says your comment was at 824. It's uh, 844. It's so. 844. If you, if you hung out 20 minutes, Justin, we appreciate it. But we showed off the merch. So rewind. Thanks. Thank you, Justin. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you big time, man. Love the YouTube. Perfect. The, we love the face, the, excuse me, the YouTube banner. I love it. It fucking pops. Big know? time. I put it as the background on my girl's computer that we use. So she's it's uh, loud. It's perfect. Yeah, man. I wanna, I'm going to splash that on our, our Facebook as well as soon as I figure out how. Uh, because I'm always fucking don't know what I'm doing. I'll work on that tonight. But, man, we truly love it, man. So check out the earlier part of the episode. We give you a huge shout-out. We show off the wonderful decals. I love it. Even the modified logo still looks really rad. But, Double A, go ahead. Take it away. What else? Uh, Justin goes, hey, guys. Pop me in to say, hey, late as fuck, though. Uh, I'm putting your channel banner project in my first channel video. Awesome. I got to throw my dudes a plug. Hell, Thank yeah, you, man. Justin. We appreciate Thank that, you. man. We're going to check that appreciate out. Appreciate it. Uh, Aaron had a comment about one of the episodes. He goes, damn, that's fucked up. Cutting out his eye. Yeah, man. Go uh, check it out, Aaron, on Netflix. The art, uh, it's called like the art of the samurai or whatever, but all about feudal Japan, samurais fighting. And, uh, it was, uh, they're, they're, they were to the death. Mm -hmm, they know? were to the death, man. And it was like families. Like they went after the kids. Like it was crazy. You know what I mean? But yeah. it, it was a pretty cool show. I didn't get to finish it yet. Yeah, me and Jess were watching me to finish it, but. Uh, Roxanne says there was a Twilight Zone in the 80s where a housewife somehow acquired powers to stop time. Uh, she plays around it all day, stopping her family in their tracks and walking from the stove to the phone. And when she brings them around her family, she's confused how she moves so fast. She was entertained until she got frustrated and stopped, stopped time accidentally. She decided to walk around the neighborhood and looked at all the people frozen. When she walked all the way to the store, she was talked to see, and then she stops. I don't know if there was more. Oh, uh, let me see. If you, if you hit on it, it'll open it up. Hey, that's cool. Then it brings it up on the on the screen. Oh. Guys, oh, I never... no, she, she didn't finish. Oh. She goes, damn, didn't realize I wrote a novel. <laughs> uh, I didn't Roxanne, know I could bring your comments you, up you on screen. You can't leave me hanging. What, what happened? Yeah, Roxanne, she was shocked to see, and then she stopped. Damn. <laughs> Uh, Gabe, Gabe in the house. 
What up, Gabe? We appreciate you being here, brother. Hey, that's so cool now that I know uh, yeah, you can bring yeah. your comments up. <laughs> and and we're learning something. And let me tell you, when you're sitting on double A side, you got the fan on now. It's cool as fuck over here. I'm going to put my jacket back on. But go ahead, don't uh, Yeah, so, man, uh, Gabe, you watched Twilight Zone. And, hey, man, your episode was good. Uh, everyone, we have a lot of uh, listeners on that episode, so hopefully that helps you out a little bit. I know you you don't need the help. <laughs> you got Mario Supply and you uh, no supplies. And Rick. <laughs> and Rick. So, I mean, you're good there. Uh, you know, guys, you have any other favorite Twilight Zones? Uh, you know, I'm not too sure about the 80s ones too much. I, I've seen a few episodes, so uh, but I never really paid attention. And during the 80s, I would have said uh, Tales from the Dark Side was my show uh, between that one and this revival of Twilight Zones. Yeah, and they kind of, yeah. they, you know, I think so many shows got into the anthology, anthology, anthology game. Big time. You had shows big like, time. you know, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, we did say Tales from the Dark Side, but also Tales later on, we, we had Tales from the Crypt. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, Tales from the Crypt was another one. That Not all the stories were necessarily scary, but... Um, no, just interesting kind of like uh, stories. Yeah. Kind of, you know? No, it's it sci fi. Very or, cool. Yeah, yeah. Got, got a little bit of everything in there. It's definitely yeah. some sci fi stuff. And then we got it kind of going with Creep Show today. You know, mm -hmm. Creep Show is like one of those, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. And I would definitely say that, you know, Twilight Zone was the innovator of that. Big know? time. Now, I don't uh, know how many other shows, though, Double A, really. Some, I think some were, had a really directed message. They were trying to provide maybe an element of horror or shock mm -hmm. or scare. Uh, but like we said, Twilight Zone, it had these really strong messages. And I don't know that another show's really done that, where it had these powerful yeah. messages in an anthology form. And man, what a testament to the writing, Double A, because look at what they got to do yeah. now. They've got to make these hour long. They, they, and this is not a knock because it's great. We get more. But you get a show like WandaVision or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It was like, well... You know, even The Mandalorian or whatever. It's like, you know, you've, you've The Walking Dead, all those shows. It's like it it's told in that long story format. And you, the story is only really good if you ingest it that way, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like yeah. these guys, these episodes we're talking about guys are 22 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's really most. tight. Yeah. And it's like you, you in that 22 minutes, you like characters, you hate characters, you care about them. And then they, you know, uh, you're also getting a message, you know what I mean? So that's that's pretty unique. And, so much and, is on, you know, racism, uh, paranoia. Paranoia mm -hmm. is like another big theme in the Twilight Zone episodes. Yes. You know, uh, being different, being who you are, being uniquely you, just you, you know? Which makes you wonder if um, maybe the aspects that don't have paranoia were Rod Serling's own, you know, PTSD manifesting anxiety. Yeah. <clears throat> because if you want to see like a really good paranoia episode, that William Shatner one, that uh, terror at twenty thousand feet or something like that, the Gremlin, you no, know, the Gremlin one, you know, that's you know, uh, me and Jeff are watching the John Lithgow one, the eighties uh, movie version. Uh, he does a fantastic job yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, he's so pale and yeah. sweaty and like, like he's just like, yeah. like I'm like, oh man, like I fucking like feel his like tenseness, like it's yeah. like fuck. I mean, you know what I mean, shit, it influenced like, I don't know how many of the Treehouse of Horrors. Mm -hmm. uh, oh man, yeah, almost like the first like <laughs> what six, seven of them. I was gonna say yeah, we're almost based time. on Twilight Zone episodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, lead there's so many, so much that it has influence. It's it's nuts, and I love know? the Simpsons big time. So uh, you know, it, that's definitely yeah. there, the, the yeah. influence. I can even remember this old Bugs Bunny cartoon. I think it was in the, one of the rare episodes where he had kind of the different snout. And he had the yellow gloves, yeah. but there was like a gremlin or whatever. And he was like, it's a gremlin. And he's like tearing up the plate around. He's like, ah, I like they're going to die. And it's like, it's well, even like in cool. his later show, it was called like Night Gallery. Mm. Uh, you know, he did another show and it's kind of like him like that. walking with paintings. And there's been like so many of those that I've seen where like people co copy that. Really? Just him like introducing it with like what, something, uh, a subject that's like, but it's in painted form. So this is Rod Serling's yeah. other shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's like in the 70s. Did you ever watch Beyond Belief? Yeah. With oh, Jonathan yeah. Yes. yes. You know, the other night, yes. I had a great night with my lady. We went and stayed. We were hustling for her folks, whatever. And uh, we just turned the TV on to the Amazon? first thing. Uh, I don't know what we were watching. Oh, okay. Because okay. they have it on Amazon. I think her dad has YouTube TV or something okay. like that. But okay. Anyway, we just turned the TV on. First thing that was on, it was that. And we started watching yeah. it. And it was, and we sat and binged about yeah. three or four episodes and we were just like so interested in it. And it was like that. It was kind of this like, I used you know, to watch it almost, I think at the time it was every Tuesday or every Friday. I was watching it live when, when it would come out, when it would premiere. And, 
uh, I would always write down true or false, and yeah. I would always write true, <laughs> true. And, we were know. doing that. We were like, yeah. and it was so funny how many that me and her agreed on, and we got most right. But they there were got a couple seasons of, on Amazon Prime. Is that right? Yes. I need to go yes. look at it. We're gonna. I yeah. need to have another binge of, yeah. of that show. So um, yeah, man. Well, shoot, guys, we appreciate you guys commenting in. And Roxanne, now I know, finish your story. Yeah, now I know that I can do this cool thing right here. <laughs> and I say, Gabe Flores in the house. Gabe says, "What's up, fellas?" And I say. Roxy Roxy says, damn, didn't realize I wrote a novel, but we didn't realize it either. And I then wish I had Andy. Aaron B. <laughs> who says, damn, that's fucked up, cutting his eye out. <laughs> so, guys. Uh, uh, cool uh, feature that we uh, discovered. That if just, it wasn't for me sitting over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, truly <laughs> in the, the twilight dimension. zone. Yeah, in the fifth dimension, yeah. And just there. Great picture, huh? <laughs> so, uh, Is she calling you, then, look? <laughs> I know. I don't know about all that. Maybe. Uh, guys, well, let's get back all into right. the – we got right. one episode let's yeah. talk about out of our six. And uh, this is the one the, of the, the – it's the only one that I had actually already seen or whatever. Nice. So uh, it was nice to revisit it. Uh, but let's get right into it here. There are no more comments there. So let me get back to the recording version. Guys, again, if you have a favorite episode, favorite scene, let us know. I yeah, definitely. What are your thoughts on the trials? What, are, what yeah. are your thoughts on the ones we talked about thus far? Yeah. Those type of messages. Maybe you got interested. Maybe you want to check them out. So totally, let us know. All right, guys. If you were uh, listening to us just on audio, you know that we went to a brief blip, and we're right back in the mix now, ready to talk about the last of our six episodes. The only the only episode that I've already I had already seen, but was more than happy to see again and rewatched. Um, but uh, we also had some great comments uh, during the. Uh, during the break there. Again, if you want to see the full unfiltered version, go to our YouTube channel and check that out. Um, and you can see the full unabridged version of what goes on during the, the, the commenting period. Um, I feel like this light is super hot. So I'm going to do, you'll see that, since we are in the twilight zone right now, what happens if I do this? Oh, oh there we go. That's better. It's actually, right. it's actually kind of blinding me. So this, <laughs> it's kind of better for me. But um, now I'm in, I'm in green in the twilight zone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, you guys know the theme, you know the movie, you know the, the, the music, you know the show, you know what I mean? Like I said, Rod Serling, uh, great uh, military veteran, mm -hmm. uh, you know, World War II uh, veteran, and uh, did a lot in this show. Created the iconic Twilight Zone. Yeah, did a lot in this show to give us this message, yeah. delivering so many different yeah. messages about about hate, about um, paranoia, you know, paranoia, fear, you know, yeah. racism. So here's this, our last episode mm -hmm. that we, we watched, a great episode called simply Two. Um, and it starts out. Man, starring my favorite action hero, Charles Bronson. Good old Charlie young, Bronson. Strong Charles Bronson. Strappy, handsome man. Hair, you know. Hey, it looking like cut, a million bucks, man. No mustache, no nothing. He is another vet. He is another World War II right. vet. So. Charlie Bronson. And man. he got Elizabeth Montgomery in this one. Samantha, but with black hair. We had Darren in one episode that yeah. we watched, and now we had some, And I told Double A, I said, man, the girl's really beautiful. And then he goes, that's, uh, that's uh, Samantha from Beauty. And Samantha I was like, oh, from my gosh. Age. I didn't really, because yeah. she was blonde in this episode. I was like, oh, man. I was like, yeah, that's her. Once I looked at the face, I could see the little nose wrinkling. And I was like, gorgeous. She's gorgeous. This is before Bewitch. Yeah, a few years. A few, a few years before. Uh, but, yeah, man, so we get started, and pretty much the, the world is just, it's over. It's done with. We... Had another war, and this time that was the end of it, pretty much. A that war was it. to end all yeah. wars, apparently. That was it. And Charles Bronson is like by himself and just walking, just trying to find, you know, something, food, yeah, shelter, anything. clothes, anything. Um, then he runs into the enemy, which is Elizabeth Montgomery, which was pretty cool. A right? woman soldier. A woman soldier, yeah. right? How, how yeah. fucking... You know, prophetic is that, you know? Yeah. She looked nice, too. And they look, they yeah. both had on their kind of like, they're like, they're, it's it's not really like what, they're not different countries mm -hmm. or what they what are. They're just different uniforms. It's, it's weird. Yeah. It's like yeah. almost like a future yeah. unknown to us. And he he's done. He's done with war. He's done with violence. All he's looking for is just trying to live. And she still has that soldier mentality. Mm -hmm. She thinks like, you know, he's a bad guy. He needs to die, blah, blah, blah. There's very little dialogue too, right? She though? doesn't speak. Yeah. It's only Charles Bronson that speaks. In fact, I think she has two words, she says, I think, in the whole episode. If, if yeah, that, okay. maybe one. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And uh, she comes at him. You know what I mean? And he yeah. gives he, he has to kind of give her a whack because he's does. Like, he, you know, he, you know, he's tired because he's you know, he's like, fuck, I'm I'm done. You know, it's over. Look, it was like, look, there's yeah. nothing left, you know. 
and he Stop tells whining. her, he's like, do you speak my language? And she's kind of looking at him where he's like, no, nah, why would you? Whatever. And then he's like, well, look, he's like, there's a difference between you and me, except my uniform and your mm -hmm. uniform. He's like, you know, he's like, and I ain't going to fight over that no more. Like he's, yeah, just, he's, he's done. It. And you know, he knocked her out and he finds some food. It's actually weird. It looks like drumsticks in a can. He's it, eating right, like it chicken, is. Yeah. but he gets it out of a it, can. It's in like, a can, oh. which I, it might not be surprising. Maybe it was rationed. <laughs> Maybe like so. That, you know, spam. Oh, okay. You know, Interesting. Spam was rationed in World War II like that. So, uh, can you imagine that? It's like those tamales that come in the can. Yeah. It's like pulling one of yeah. those out or a drumstick. Those are hungry. But I guess if you're fucking but hungry. But if you're hungry, yeah. yeah that's probably, like probably the great. Man. Best oh, chicken like, ever. Yeah. And he saves her a piece. He does. Yeah. Because he, again, he, he's done with war at this time. He's like, it's just you and me. It's just you and I. That's yeah. it. You know, I mean, obviously she's very attractive. And it's like, <laughs> and know? to be honest, Emily, I think that the episode opens on her because she's looking through the shop window. That's at right. The dress, That's the right. Pretty dress. That's right. Yeah. And she kind of looks at her uniform and she looks at the dress and she's, you know, you get, you no, know, no, no. I think uh, it does open on him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think she, he catches her. Right. That's yeah. you're right. You're right. It's, and, they kind of show them yeah. separate, but then they yeah. see where they kind of like. Because he gets close. He gets right. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, I'm taking this off. Yeah, like fuck the know. uniform or whatever. Like, like he keeps over. a gun, but you know, yeah. uh, he he puts on a suit. He starts, you know, shaving. He sees you know. the papers, and it's like the papers kind of the news keeps getting worse. Like it's like this was of like the final bomb, and like it's like nothing left or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're just like, man, like I know that there's no society really left for us or whatever, you know? But she's still like very like distrusting of him and she even opens fire on him, mm -hmm. which, you know, he's like, he pisses him off because yeah. he's like, really, you know, yeah. I thought we were finally communicating here and, you know, now you're, you know, fucking firing at me again. Because right. you know? he tells her at one point he gets the dress for her out of the shop window and he kind of tosses it to her or whatever. They do a lot of, I noticed they do a lot of tossing shit to each other. It's kind of like, like here, like you know, like yeah. you know, but it's you know, it, it they do so much double right with that with their body language and their fate, their movements. Which is great. It's like you said, mm -hmm. it's like nothing's being phoned in. You can actually feel what's going on. You can still feel the tension. You know, you can feel the emotion. You can feel how tired Charles Bronson is. You can feel how distrusting Elizabeth Montgomery's character mm -hmm. is. You know, it's like you say, you can feel all that in twenty two minutes. Yeah. You know, you can feel all those emotions with almost zero dialogue between them two, you know, almost, you know, yeah. It, it's a great episode of just like him, just like you feel bad. You just like, wow, this planet's gone to shit. It's done. It's over. Yeah. You know, and uh, at one point they're cleaning up together. Like they do, like this is before yeah, the, she, she fires water, on him, whatever they get. Yeah. Why he throws her a rag. <laughs> he does a lot of like throwing stuff yeah, away like, or whatever. Yeah. She cleans up to you and then they're kind of walking together. But I forget what she sees that makes her open fire on him or whatever. He's doing oh, something. Oh, because she sees like a poster or something. Right, right. And she's it's being like a war propaganda pro yeah. poster. Exactly. What yeah. did we say earlier? What did you say earlier? The, the, the power of that uh -huh. machine moving, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the the war machine, the propaganda machine. Yeah. Just uh, putting that in you. And I think she started to feel like, you know what? Like like he's he's being friendly to me. So when I lower the gun down. He's gonna kill me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and <laughs> and so she fires on him, and he's like, you know, like what the fuck? And, and it's it funny because there's even a little bit of an element. It felt like to me, and maybe it's just because, unfortunately, the culture we live in, or whatever. But I, I almost felt a little bit like, oh man, is it because she's a woman? Like maybe is he gonna try to take liberties? Think, but he wasn't that way, and he wasn't. He no. was just tired. And after he she was, does that, he he gets pissed, and he's like, you know what, I'm done. Yeah, you you go your own way, yep. and I'm going this way. Pretty much know? without saying it, pretty much it's like if we're the last people on earth, I'm gonna fuck about you. Yeah, like, fuck yeah. off. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and yeah, and you know he's looking at her at first, and he's probably thinking like, oh, well, maybe you know, she's maybe an attractive woman. We could hang you know? out. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's fucking dead. The town yeah. is desolate. You know what I mean? And, so. Anyways, I mean, who the other thing too that Ross Rowing does is like the the being alone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a that's a theme. In a lot of the episodes, it's just being alone and yeah. how that could really fuck up a human's brain, you know, because we need companionship. We need people around this, you know, and to be solo, to be solo for that long, it's like, golly. It's, it's very interesting. I never noticed that. Yeah. Me, but you're right. Yeah. There's one I remember about, like, the kid that's in the town. He yes. wants to be a musician or yes. whatever. Uh -huh. I him, you know, like, he's he wants someone here. And it turns out he's, like, in the afterlife yes. or whatever, uh -huh. you know. So, uh, so there's like a lot of themes about that too. Of just you know how just being alone is, you know, it's not good for anyone. You yeah. know. So um, she starts kind of like finally kind of like realizing that he's not trying to hurt her. Right. He's not trying to you know kill her 
when she turns her back around him, you know, yeah. that, you know, he's, he's, he's really, okay. really done. He's yeah. done because everything else has been destroyed, you know? And she gets a look at him in his regular suit and stuff. He's not in this uniform. No one I said anymore. Charlie Bronson was always like a really built dude. Yeah. Know, so. And uh, at first she sees her pull up and he's kind of like, what the, you know, not what the hell, but he's kind of like, like, like ah, what are you doing here? Whatever. And you see her step from around the car, and she's in the in the, the dress. dress. She yeah. put it on, whatever. And it kind of makes him smile. Like, yeah. Okay. Cool. I think he tosses her some rashes and peaches or something. Yeah. He's found. He's, he's eating peaches. He, he's out kind of scouring for stuff. Yeah. Like he knows that. Hey, man, it's gonna be survival mode now. You know what I mean? So uh, that's another kind of cool thing where, you know, uh, he, he again, he's just like the the, the fighting is done. You know it's I mean? it's like, over. You know, yeah. yeah, it's over. And this is what we're left with, which yeah. is fucking, you know. Uh, hopefully each other. You know so I mean? again, it's kind of like a theme that you know Rod Serling does. You know, it's like if we have another big war, it could really be the end of humanity, mm -hmm. and it could be really bad for the survivors. You know, it's kind yeah. of like again your thing. Remember the history. Remember World War Two. Look how England was destroyed pretty much after World War Two. You know, Africa. They they were fighting in Africa, Russia, China, Japan. You know, it was like man, those areas were left devastated. We dropped two massive bombs, two atomic bombs in Japan that wiped out two cities, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, golly, you know, this is where you really want to go? Like, it's almost kind of like Rod Serling telling people, this is where you want to go with the Cold War yeah. happening, you know, the Bay of Pigs, yeah. where, you know, it was almost World War III with us in Cuba when Russia had the missiles right in Cuba, yeah. you know, it yeah. almost led to World War III. He's like, really, you want to do this? This is what's going to happen yeah. if we go to war. Cities are going to be wiped out. The population is going to be wiped out. And what are we going to be left with? You know, pieces of blown up, you know, territories that might not even be part of the United States in 200 years, might not even be part of Japan, you know? And it's, it's, it's such a, a, a powerful message, too, of, like, you know, uh, what's different be between us except my uniform and your yeah. uniform? Like, you know, it's a You're it's fighting a for one guy. We're fighting for one guy that is having disagreements, one government against another government. Yeah. That says, "Oh, we can't land there. We can't, we can't go there." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. It's funny. Someone drew some lines on a map sometime, and it was like, "This is mine, and this is this." And we put a flag on it and said that this is, you know, a, a place. You know what I mean? It's like you know, yeah. but, um, it's like look. I'm sure Rome thought they were going to be in control of the world forever, and now it's one of the poorer cities in the country. You yeah. know, with a shell of what it used to be, mm -hmm. you know? The ultimate power in the world. The ultimate time. power yeah. is, that was made out of marble. When you go over there, it's just a shell of what it used to be, a shell of its greatness, you know? And I think that's what, you know, Rod Serling's kind of trying to show. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> and what a guy, right? Yeah. To, to, to get done with his time in the service and then... He could have delivered any message with entertainment. He could have probably wrote books or comic yeah. books, or he could yeah. have wrote sci-fi. He could have the, the man seemed to have a really uh, strong mind, and he could have just made a show to to scare people or entertain people. But instead, he chooses to infuse the show with these really, really strong, powerful, and important messages. You know, shit. Rod Serling's almost like the dark Mister Rogers. You know what I mean? He really is, but he's still giving you almost the same message. And this one, even though it's like a really horrific like episode apocalyptic episode it's actually one of the more happier endings mm -hmm. it's it's almost like an adam and eve almost yeah they walk <clears> off, all over they again walk, they walk off together they walk off together yeah maybe starting a new race maybe civilization you know? again. new civilization you know but mm -hmm. uh godly but the you know of what you have to go through mm -hmm. in order to build a world again it's kind of like golly is it worth it <laughs> yeah, and imagine having to, to and, and I like the part too, there is the part where, where Charlie Bronson, you know, he's like, I decree this place free of, of war <laughs> yeah. and, and all that. This is a yeah. free land. You yeah. know, like he just shouts it to the to the heavens because this is a guy that's like, fuck, man. Like, this is what we're left with. Yeah. You know, which is really the, the victory I wanted. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine two people fighting over, ironically, with, the, with what's going on at Targets, right? Fighting over the favorite toy and just for the toy to be destroyed that nobody has it. It's yeah. like, that's what we're doing with, you know, that's what, I think that's what his message is. That's what we're doing when it comes to war. It's like, he came out of all that with very uh, again hard-minded opinions. We're fighting for lands that is probably not even going to be ours, <laughs> you know, in 80, 100 years. You know, it was the empire of Japan, you know, the yeah. imperial Japan. And now Japan is like, not really a military 
you know, country anymore. Yeah. It's, you know, it's technology. Technology, yeah. yeah Which is know? awesome. They found their way, you know what I mean? Like, you know, but but just uh, the ugliness of all that Brady happened. Brady was, uh, you know, the powerhouse for a long time, and, you know, mm -hmm. not anymore. <laughs> Everything you know? fueled by, and I, I sadly say, I would say fueled by greed. And it by, is. You know, people wanting, yeah. people wanting more of what they consider to be power. Yeah. Giant fucking meteor falls out of the sky tomorrow with the, Alien from a quiet place, <laughs> this shit ain't gonna mean shit. You know what I mean? It's like you better hope that you're friends with the guys, you know, that that can, you know, help you and look out for each other's back. You know what I mean? Like that's fucking really what matters. You know, it's like uh, not to go all hippie on you guys, but you know, uh, you know, uh, make no, love not yeah. war. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. But you know what? Uh, I did read too that he kind of became uh, anti-war activist too. Yeah. During the Vietnam War. Is so, that right? Yeah. I believe it, man. Yeah. I believe it. Uh, but shit, double A, man, great uh, discussion about the creation of Rod Serling. Great, you know, great dude, great writer. One of my favorite writers. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the ending of Planet of the Apes is his. I did not know that. Yeah, so they had given a whole bunch of you know people like write us some scripts for this new movie called Planet of the Apes. His script sounded really interesting, uh, but it was too. It would have cost too much, and they were looking for like a lower budget. Okay, but they loved the ending. So they kept the ending, and if you actually see Planet of the Apes, he actually gets writing credits. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. So that ending is Rod Serling's, and then when I look back on it, and I think about it, I'm like, it feels yeah. very Twilight yeah. Zone. I'm like, yeah. that's him. Yeah, that's I never him. Never really thought about it, but yeah, man, it could easily have been. A, and then what know? is it? What is it? It's the world blowing itself up. The dystopian <laughs> world. You know, yeah. 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 And then and it's, you know, Charles and Hesse, He's like, they did it. They really did it. You and, maniacs. Yeah. And yeah, wow, how cool. I did not know that. That's very so, badass, very badass. Yeah. But yeah, guys, this has been our discussion and our talk about a few episodes, a brief snapshot of the Twilight Zone. Of the um, master himself. Yeah, Rod Rod Sterling. and we discussed these episodes in particular in between Memorial Day and D-Day because, you know, uh, he was a veteran and he and he came from this stuff and he lived through it. And a guy that lived through it coming out with such a poignant point of view and messages. Um, it really, you can tell it really affected him. Uh, by all these themes, all these messages in the show, you know, again, not force, mm -hmm. not force on a lot no. of them. It, uh, again, a very uh, digestible pill to yes, take the medicine because it like, it's a fun show. It's entertaining. You you really love it. You know, like we said, we love it. You can watch it just for that. But you I mean, have to be yeah. I mean, there's so many you know good episodes where they don't even like even think about right, that. Like right, there's right, one right. episode where I think Poltergeist ripped off one of the Twilight Zone episodes. <laughs> have you ever seen this one? I don't think so. It's called Little Girl Lost. Okay. A little girl falls into another dimension in her bedroom. Okay. And you can hear her voice all over the house. That is a, a direct ripoff. It's and, <laughs> you know, they call somebody in, you know, who finds the, the spots where, you know, it leads into another dimension. Mm -hmm. And they even have the dead wrap around a rope around himself while they're holding it. No and kidding. he goes in and he gets his little girl. The only thing that was missing was the poultry guys itself. Ah. But, I mean, man, if you look at that episode, it's like, Wow, this is like Poltergeist. Wow, what lazy Poltergeist writer was that? <laughs> That's what I was yeah. thinking. I was like, what the Clearly hell? Clearly a fan of the Twilight. Yeah, exactly. and then, you know, there's like a, you know, uh, another one too with William Shatner. You know, him and his girlfriend are, you know, cross country and they I land in this, this restaurant. Line. I <laughs> love that one. And he's so superstitious. You know, the, 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 he has the, the fucking rabbit's foot on his keychain, mm -hmm. the clover leaf. He's so paranoid about, you know. He's about to get a, a big new job. A big too. job. Yeah. yeah, that's going to set him up for, like, the rest of his life. And there's this, like, fortune machine. You know, just like a you put in, like, a penny, you know, and it reads your fortune. But he starts believing the cards. It's like a devil's head yeah. with one eye. Like, because it closes. Yeah, are certain people, like, certain things start happening. You know, from these cards, and he gets so hooked, and he starts. It's almost like obsessive compulsive yes. disorder, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, and in fact, he's like he doesn't want to let anybody sit at the table. Like he's just acting really fucking yeah. like crazy. I like, man, all the credit to the chick. She's already like, I want to get out of here, man. Like, yeah. what the fuck, or whatever, you know. Like, yeah, so that was a good one. I think it's called Nick of Time. Yeah, he didn't believe in himself. She believed in him. She was like, "No, man, you did this on your own. You landed the good job and all that." And he's just kind of like, oh, "You know what I mean?" So you know the the other Burgess Meredith one you were talking about. You know, time enough at last. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's got his really bitchy wife. And she won't let him read. You know, all he wants to do is just read. He's a banker. You mm -hmm. know, and all he does, he just wants to read. And she's like, "You need to stop doing that." Blah blah blah. Uh, he locks himself into a, you know the bank vault. Because he, all he just wants to do is read, and then 
you, you, you know, you see the whole picture shaking and there's like a bomb that dropped, mm -hmm. like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And he's like the only one left alive <laughs> in this town. And he's like super happy. He goes to the library. <laughs> He starts stacking up books that he's just planning on reading. Like, he doesn't even care. His wife's dead. He doesn't care. The whole town blew up. He, he's like, I got time enough to read. And, but he wears glasses. So, right when he's about to go down, man, the glasses fall and they break. And he's like, he's super blind. He can't see shit. They show, him. like, the blurriness of the fucking, like, he can't <laughs> yeah. see shit, man. Like, and he's like, no. That's not, they even did uh, uh, that in Family Guy. Yeah. He's like, no. It's not fair. It's not fair. The Simpsons does it too. The Simpsons <laughs> yeah. took their shot of that one too. But yeah, I mean, it's like, cause it's, it's like uh, the true, like the irony of it. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, like, you know, and as guys that read comic books and shit, you know, we can certainly relate to that. We wish we'd have to go to work and just sit around and read all day. But <laughs> just, uh, just not going to happen. You know what I mean? And so, then there's like another one I like too. It's called the hunt. It's like this old man and his dog. They like going hunting and they're chasing after, I forget what animal it goes into a lake. And they both fall and they both drown, both of him and the dog. Oh, shit. And uh, he's in the afterlife, but it looks like the forest. And he almost goes into the gateway to hell. But the dark, the dog starts barking. Mm -hmm. It starts like warning him, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, like it's, you can feel the dog can feel the evil. And he's like, ah. and, and the, the gate, the gates guy, uh, the gatekeeper tells him, you can't bring that dog in. He's like, well, I'm not going to go in there. Yeah. And my dog can't go. Right. So he starts walking and he bumps into an angel and he's like, yeah, we're looking for you. You know, heaven's over here. And he's like, well, what the hell is that? You know, he's like, that's hell. That's a gateway to hell. <laughs> you know, and he's like, holy shit. And he's like, was my wife coming soon? And he's like, yeah, she'll be here long soon. And he's like, well, she know. He's like, don't worry about her. She'll know right away. You know, yeah. she'll she'll be here soon. So I was like, holy shit. It's, that was, so, it's so interesting, too. It's such a good show. Like, how it deals with so many, like, these type of concepts. You know what I mean? Like, I almost you know, wanted to buy a dog afterwards. I was like, holy I was shit. say, will you know? You know what I mean? Your man's <laughs> best friend, right? The man, not the woman. The, yeah, because the, the gatekeeper from hell is just, like, a normal human-looking dude. You mm -hmm. know, and he's like, you know, yeah, yeah, come on in. You know, we got we got plenty of space for you. Yeah, come on <laughs> in, you know? But there, there's, like, smoke rising. It's crazy. You know? And uh, man, if there's like again, guys, if you got some more episodes, but then there's one called the Howling Man, and it's like a monastery, mm. and they pretty much have trapped the devil. Mm. And this, you know, this wanderer comes in, and he's like, he's looking for shelter, and you know, he's like, you know, yeah, yeah, you can stay for the night, but whatever you do, no matter what you hear, do not go near it, do not open this door, okay. You know, he starts howling. You hear the devil start howling. Oh, and, and he starts talking to me. He's like, did they tell you, you know, I was the devil and I'm evil and all this? And he's like, come on, man. You know, like, I'm, I'm starving in here. They kidnapped me. And he looks know? like a man. He looks like a man. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the dude finally listens. He starts listening to him. He lets him go. And he starts turning, like, into, like, I guess, like a representation of the devil. And, mm -hmm. and he's like, holy shit. I just, you know, they were right, you know. And. They say like certain events happen when the devil gets out, and he does manage to capture him. Uh -huh. And he's saying, you find out he's saying this story to another person, mm -hmm. and, and he's trying to tell him too. So whatever you do, don't open this door. Well, then you start seeing the person after he leaves. The per this new person opens the door, and you uh -huh. see the devil escaping again, and you're like, holy shit! Yeah, it just goes to show you how that evil is loose on the world. That's that's so funny. I wonder if that movie that I like a lot. It's called Erdementari. It's called the. Uh, the Devil and the Blacksmith. That it's a foreign film, but it's on Netflix. Whatever. It's kind of very similar. They oh, might have, they might have ripped that off. That it's called The Howling Man. Check it out. It's a really okay. cool episode. The yeah. Howling Man. It's funny too. One of my favorite songs uh, from Culture Wall or whatever. It's called The Devil Wears a Suit and Tie. <laughs> uh, he talks about that. How nice. He sees, he sees the devil. Nice. He says the devil was howling as he passed him by. It's interesting. <laughs> I was like, why did the devil be howling? That's very cool. Uh, guys, I don't think there's any need for us to do another block. What do you think, Bill? Yeah, no, no, uh, no. Let's get into your comments right now and round out this episode. It's been great talking to Twilight Zone with you guys. If we need to go a little bit into the next block, then we will. But let's get right into these comments that we know that we can now bring up on the damn screen because uh, I didn't know that I could do that. And that's pretty dang cool. Joe. All right, right there. Uh, okay, Gabe says, what's up, fellas? We saw that earlier. Oh, Joe is here. Joe, Joe. Says, sorry I'm late, boys. What's up, Joe? It's all right, man. You're never late when you're here on just another Friday night. We appreciate hey, you. Hey, man, I know you're here. busy. Don't worry about it. Yeah, man, I hope that your mom is okay. We're all praying for her, man. Uh, that's Joe Martinez, co-host of Now Watch This with Lucky and Joe. Looking forward to you guys coming back with another episode. I was uh, without this week, so I was digging into Kevin Hart's podcast. <laughs> 
Uh, Joe says a quiet place seems like a good topic. Uh, yeah. yeah, it does, man. I wonder who we should talk about that with, with maybe together. Jason in the house. Jason, what's, what's up, up bro? Jason? Where you been, man? We haven't seen you. How's the how's the hunt for Red Hulk going? I couldn't find anything for you. I, I'm I, know, sorry. I haven't seen anything either. Yeah, we're gonna go do and flip some flip some books in a couple of weeks here, maybe a, a couple weekends. Uh, go <laughs> check out some comic stores. Joe says Twilight Zone easily one of the best theme songs ever. Scared my ass as a kid. Oh, definitely. I have it on every it Halloween. Can. It uh, can. Yeah. I have it on every Halloween uh, soundtrack that I that I make. Ooh, this is uh. Uh, Jason says, I miss y'all. I was in the hospital. I'm good now. Jason, that's hey, awesome man. news, man. Glad that you're awesome well, news. man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we're glad that you're back. And we're yeah. Both, mainly yeah, we're man. glad that you're well yeah. taking care yeah. of your health, brother. Good, good. good. We missed you too, man. Uh, Joe says, Roxanne, I was one of my favorite Twilight Zones. It was the mom from A Christmas Story. Oh, wow. No shit. Okay, so she Joe knows. Was she yeah. was in it too, huh? All right. All right. Uh, Crystal Sanchez, uh, the devil is very sexy, and depending on the devil you have in your life. That <laughs> is very true. That is, I know a lot of ladies love the Lucifer show. All I hear about is they just watch it just for the guy that plays him or whatever. He's a, but, he's a very charismatic dude. <laughs> and I, he's a very charismatic dude for sure. Uh, but obviously Al Pacino has been the devil. Jack Nicholson has been the devil. Oh, man. Uh, uh, Robert De Niro has been the devil. Uh, That's right. I forgot about that. uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Stormare, uh, uh, uh Viggo Mortensen. Uh, Damn. so a lot, of, a lot of handsome devils in there for sure. So <laughs> okay. I can definitely feel uh, you in that vibe. Elizabeth Chu. Or not Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth uh, uh, Hurley. Hurley. Yeah, that's right. Sexy that's right. devil. There we go. One for the fellas in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe says, did y'all talk about the, the movie yet? Uh, yeah, kind of. What movie? The Twilight, Twilight Zone movie? Zone uh, a little bit. We a little bit touched on it, how they brought back some of the old, the older uh, stories and redid them, especially like the John Lithgow one, uh, and then yeah, the little boys. Those are obviously classics. Where and I think Burgess Meredith comes out in the movie version as well. I think. Does he? Maybe huh. I could be wrong. Uh, let me see. He goes, "Thank you, guys. Mom got out Friday. Good, perfect. Today awesome. she's finally home. Yes. Appreciate the prayers. That's awesome, Joe. Totally, That's man. awesome. We love to hear that. All yeah. the good news about you people that are uh, in the hospital getting home and being better." Uh, Crystal says he makes the devil look like such a good person. Lucifer is really good, and you should watch it. I do watch it with my wife, Crystal. That is a good show. I enjoy it a lot, especially since it's a Neil Gaiman creation. Yeah, so. Neil Gaiman creation. Yeah, he hangs out with Constantine in the comic book version. So I would like to see. Uh, I think maybe I'd like to read the comics more. I watched about the first four episodes, and I couldn't. I know you get, didn't get into it, but yeah. I've heard that it does get going. So maybe I, I give it. A I liked chance. it a lot. I liked it. A lot. I rarely give you a start and then go back, but I may go. I may go back because I hear some of it. And that guy's a really good actor. So yeah. And I think they just finished it now, too, in the last week of May. They finally released the last episode. Yeah, that was like a yeah. big deal. People wanted the, the end or whatever. So. And then Joe says, it might not have been a Twilight Zone. Uh, remember, in the 80s, there were a lot of different copycat shows. That's right. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, Talking about the Twilight Zone, Roxanne Botto. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I I saw just a little bit of the 80s Twilight Zone. I didn't get hooked at all yeah. on that. Uh, and it's it's because I love the original so much that – you know, all these revivals, if I see it and I just don't feel it, if I don't feel those subtle messages, I'm just like, no, because they're doing it too hard. They're yeah. trying too hard to to do what he did. You know, the cool you thing know? about the uh, Jordan Peele one, though, is that they had actually had a contest. They were looking for people to write stories, ah, write okay. your own Twilight Zone episodes. They, they should, because that's what he did. He allowed other people to write. Right that's cool. Episodes, yeah. you know, so. I would love to hear the Friday Night Faithful's idea. Maybe we'll throw this up as part of our Ooh, discussion this week nice. coming up. What would be your Twilight Zone episode? Me and Double A will try we to come up with that. Up. Yeah, put we ours up, up yeah. for sure. Uh, here is here is Rich. What's up, Rich? Richard uh, says, what's up, guys? Oh, "What's up, guys? Sorry, I, uh, says I'm late to the show. I'm not too late. We're getting ready to wrap it up. You can also don't worry, watch. Richard. Oh, you check can. out this cool feature, guys. Watch this. Watch this. Let me see what I can do here. Uh, Rich says." <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm late to the show. And then we got Jason says, uh, have y'all gone to Trader's Village yet? Uh, Jason, he recently did. I did go recently. I did check out the uh, Rad Comics. Rad right? comics. Um, I don't want to say anything negative. Well, Jason, Jason already <laughs> had his experience, too. That's right. I had a similar experience yes. to what you had, Jason. I'll say that about it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't. It's been a while for me. The last time I went was uh, to meet Ray Park. Uh, with uh, Roxanne. Uh, that was kind of like the last time. Mm -hmm. but, I know. went out there to trade some figures. But uh, uh, Andy's treasure chest, though, is having uh, one of the, the main guys from uh, Super Troopers. Super right? Troopers. Yeah. Or the Broken Lizards. That's right. Uh, That's group. right. And then uh, they're having the, the guy who plays the Mute Predator. 
Oh wow! Okay, and cool. He's like six eight, six nine. So I was like, cool. I, I would like to meet anyone that's played the Predator. Night. Yeah, know? for sure. Man. <laughs> so, for sure, that was so that be awesome. So. So, guys, I'm glad you all came in though. That's awesome. Yeah, man, we really appreciate everybody being here. Uh, what else is it? Joe says uh, the original Twilight Zone had every major star of the day. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, Joe. Like the, the episodes I had CM watch, they had like Dick York, Darren, uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, Samantha, Charles Bronson. I mean, mm -hmm. that was big. Yeah, George Takei. I was like, George oh, Takei, I was a good, uh, Gorgeous Meredith. Yeah, a know. good dose of uh, stars in the episodes yeah. that Double A gave me. And so just to remind Julie you guys. Julie Newmar came out. Oh, nice. She looks great. She plays the devil. Oh, know, really? Like season four. Okay. Where it's an hour-long episode. I got to check yeah. that out. So I got to find those. Yeah. Hour -long ones. So, yeah. So again, guys, we discussed the Twilight of the Night. We discussed The Obsolete Man, The Purple Testament, 2, Death's Head Revisited, A Quality of Mercy, and The Encounter. Uh, those were all fantastic episodes, all kind of revolving with a similar theme, revolved around war, things like that. But um, remember, we're we're doing this as a celebration of Memorial Day and D Day that is coming up this Sunday. Yeah. Uh, like CM said, don't remember. I mean, don't forget history. Okay, that's and right. It's very guys. important to remember. That's what he was always talking about. Yeah. And if you guys want to know what we always say at the end of every show, you got to go to the beginning of this <laughs> show because. Uh, it is not uh, the, the typical show that we ran this time or whatever. Um, we're close to the break, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break it. I will bring us back for a few minutes. So okay. We could just chat okay. it out with you guys in the, in the last uh, little bit here. Some of you guys just got here. We don't want to leave you guys hanging. So if you're listening to us on the audio version, uh, it'll be a blip. And then uh, you'll hear us just talking more with the Friday Night Fifth one in the comments. All right, guys. Uh, what are you up to? I like how I can put your comments up there. That's pretty cool, right? Joe says the episodes play really well today. Yeah. And Rich says, hello. You know, I've never seen an episode of Twilight Zone. I mean, uh, check it out. Rich. Rich honestly, Rich, uh, you know, you're right up there with us. I think you would enjoy these episodes a lot. They're only, like CM said, like about 22 minutes long. You'll, yeah. you'll breeze through them. Yeah. Just and find an episode that sounds good to you and watch and you'll see it's great storytelling man it's really well yeah. done and well acted and again like i said tight tight storytelling in 22 minutes there's um, a, a really cool episode where like a lady an alien lands right and it's like a in a mexican village mm -hmm. and again paranoia they don't trust this dude he looks weird he looks funny they end up back you know killing him at the mm. end well the gift that he was trying to give everyone was it like a cure to cancer uh. a cure to all this stuff it was like that classic story. Yeah, you know I mean? he had the cure for everything that was alien, and that's all he wanted to do. And it's just like, golly. Joe suggests to Rich start with the Shatner episode, but uh, which one? Because he's got a couple. Yeah, Joe. he's got a few. And actually, yeah. the one on the plane doesn't come until like season five. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. it's like one of the more recent ones. Which I think uh, and then remember. you know, there's a really cool episode that me and my brother like a lot. It's called a Game of Pool. Uh, where pretty much you know uh, this new upcoming great pool player. Uh, somehow wants to play against who many consider the best pool player of all time, but he's dead. Oh. Well, somehow, you know, because his name comes up so much, he gets pulled down yes. from heaven to challenge. You know, so that's a really cool ghostly one. Yeah, yeah, it's called a game of pool. Uh, that one's really fun. That's a fun one. Steve says, thanks, guys. Good night. Steve, Steve good, night, good night, sir. I'm sorry that we haven't been boozing with you. Uh, last couple of weeks, but I hope you understand. Steve, it. maybe next week I may have a shot of Crown and soda, Coke, Coke and Crown. So there you go, Steve. Um, but yeah, man, you tell us what you're drinking anyway, and uh, have yeah, a good Steve, night. Yeah, Steve, drink it real quick. We yeah. appreciate you being here, Steve. Even though, uh, even though we're not, but you know, you're still drinking with your buddies, still hanging with your buddies here at the Friday night. Uh, faithful, the Just Another Friday Night podcast, always, my man. So for sure. Okay, what do we got next here? Let's see here. Okay, I will check it out. Rich says, uh, you know, what I'm looking forward to is watching Loki. And yeah. We did talk about that one, Rich. We on are that. super excited, and we'll probably have, like, a little review next Friday. Just, like, a simple, a little, little review of episode one. See what we think. See what you think. You yeah, know? for sure. I don't and then we might go into a deep dive on the whole show. So, yeah. Who yeah. knows who will be in the house? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chris says, that's actually my favorite episode of the one. Ah, that's actually what nice. I wanted to get on a plane for a while. Nice. Yeah, I mean, again, they do such it's a great job of, <laughs> yeah. of instilling yeah. that fear to you. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't fly our first one until I was 30. So it was like, you know. Well, there's I mean, actually one, like, too, oh. where they're in the plane ride. I don't know if you saw it. But it's like the faster they go, they keep going backwards in time. 
Oh, interesting. Where like towards the end, they're even seeing like dinosaurs, and they're they're freaked out because oh, they're like, shit. "How do we get back?" <laughs> you know? You've been on a long plane ride when you're going over the uh, ocean. Yeah, How from is that to for Rome, you? it's you know what going over there was fun because they had movies, so it was fine. Coming back was the hard part. Really, I like I was going nuts. You're probably like dying to get home already. Like, I so was. Like, oh, I don't know what. This. I don't know why it was so different. Going to was wasn't bad. It was me and my wife. We sat right next to each other. We're mm. both watching movies. Yeah, they had a really nice selection. I saw like uh, Rogue One like three times. Nice. <laughs> you know, well, you can watch that movie three times. It's yeah, like every and time. I was like. You didn't take your 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 daughter, right? Your kids didn't go. No, there, no, right? it was just me and her. Son. It was yeah. just me and her. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So you all gone for a week. Yeah, a whole oh, week. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, uh, my parents were good enough to uh, to watch them, so that was awesome. Good grandparents. Yeah, Joseph's Black Mirror is a new show. That I've heard of that. You know, that's a show I've never seen. I've actually watched several episodes. Yeah, on, I need on, to uh, watch them, and they're pretty solid. Yeah, I would okay. love to hear your opinion okay. about that. Okay. So watch a couple. How of many them. seasons are there? Great, a few seasons, right? A few right? seasons. Yeah, there's quite a yeah. few. Yeah, that first episode is really fucked up. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I was when Jessica watched that with me, and she said, "I'm not gonna watch anymore." Oh. I was like, okay, so was like, and it was out there. It's a John and Roxanne actually, Roxy Roxy and Holti Barrett showed me that, and I was like, okay, all right, I'll watch a couple more. They weren't all great or whatever, but it got some good cast. I think Anthony Mackie comes out. Yeah, I've seen they have like a few uh, pretty good cast, like cast uh, star names. That's not like yeah. an English show, or whatever. Yeah, too. Yeah. So uh, we got here next. Carbot. Steve's drinking Carbot. Nice. Yeah, the uh, the Astros one, Steve. Yeah. I, it's, I'm, it's after I good. after I uh, see him goes home, I might pick up a margarita from Taco Cabana. You so. deserve it, Double A. I yeah. appreciate you supporting me, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, Chuck's favorite Twilight is Breaking <laughs> Dawn. Actually, you're incorrect, Joe. My favorite is Twilight Breaking Bond. Oh, shit! You should look that one Damn. up in your free time. <laughs> Uh, the episode with a, the pig is not the pig. No, the pig knows people. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Yeah, the one where they all want to look like. Yeah, and it has the, uh, the beautiful people. It has uh, the chick from uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, really? The one that's yeah. the daughter. Yeah, Ellie. 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 May. Ellie May. Yeah, Ellie May. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a great one. And that's a classic episode. Yeah. Which you gotta watch. Like, like Richard, if you, when you watch this show, you will see so much stuff that's been referenced for years. You've been like, "Oh, that's where that came from." Like the Simpsons. Like again, they do it. It a makes lot. it funnier, right? Like when you see the Simpsons, mm -hmm. it, like it makes you laugh even more, right? Yeah. yeah. It's. A, I always think about like the Godfather. Like I hadn't seen the Godfather until later, and then I was like, "All this shit I'd seen all this time." I was like, "Oh, it's all these references." And, and it's funny too because uh, speaking of that, so like my wife and Barry started seeing like the Godfather, right? Uh -huh. So and then right afterwards we saw Creed, and it was that part where he puts his his hand over his arm over Stallone. He's like, I'm gonna make you know, over you carry it. She laughed harder now because of how she saw it. Yeah, so she yeah. laughed harder at that. You, you know? get you get that uh that knowledge or yeah. whatever. So yeah. and since we're in the fifth dimension, I'll keep doing this oh, to you guys. Shit. What the <laughs> it's gonna make for great when I'm trying to find the caption to use for the YouTube. So uh, Joe see. says uh the first episode of Black Mirror is far uh, fucked up. Super fucked up. Yeah, so okay. check that one out. And then uh like there's one uh, double A where like everyone has like this thing in their eye which like records everything you do or whatever, oh, sure. and then you can like like I could like broadcast my thoughts right here on the thing or whatever. And, like of course someone's cheating on someone else or whatever. Yeah. And, um, then there's one where like the dad dies and they make like an android of him or whatever, and it's like uh, the wife is kind of trying to love it or whatever, but uh -huh. she's like. You know, she can't do whatever. So then she wants to like kill the android. Is like, it? This is pretty cool. It, it, it has to close. <laughs> you know what? I don't know why I never sat through a deep dive of it. I think because there was like a couple of bad episodes. How, how long were like, they? They were a little bit longer. Uh, anyone out there? Give me a little bit of a of forty five. Maybe forty five. I feel like An they're hour. a little bit longer. Joe, how long are them Black Mirror episodes, Joe? Uh, Steve says. Uh, Twelve man Carbock. I'll send you up a pic check. Yeah, yeah, please do. See, we really appreciate that, man. Thanks so much. Uh, and then Rich says, "Cool, I'll definitely check it out. It sounds interesting." Yeah, now, I mean, Rich, have you ever watched Black Mirror? Are you interested in that type of show? Like, have you seen that one? Uh, it kind of—I won't say that you have to be into anthology shows because you don't. Because I mean, like, you know, if you like, like, like Tales from the Crypt is different, except that it's the same in the sense that it's a different story every time or whatever. You know what I mean? But, but uh, I like anthology shows a lot where it's like you can just pick up anywhere and watch it or whatever. You don't have to I do. Yeah. But tell us from the dark side. I love that. Uh, yeah. was I cool. can watch that is a fucking yeah. super scary. Opening. Which I need to, uh, I need to send back to John and Roxanne. <laughs> you got to the dark side? Uh, they do. Uh, he bought that for Roxanne for a, uh, 
some gift and uh they, it? yeah i borrowed it man it just uh man i i love those episodes those one. are so good the yeah. outer limits is another one that was also very the outer good. Limits. I, a lot of outer limits. I forgot about the outer limits yeah, yeah. we didn't talk about it at all especially yeah. do not adjust your screen yeah, especially during that time period those episodes are really really good yeah. yeah i would spend a lot of time my time watching these shows with my dad we would Did, like, you see the 90s like ones a lot because remember outer limits i had like a little comeback in the 90s remember maybe i did maybe i did do you remember the one with the vampire where no, it's no. like an old man or whatever he's in the coffin or whatever they keep trying to like the the right it's it's almost kind of like interview the vampire maybe they <laughs> ripped it off whatever, but he's like i'm gonna i want this interview or whatever and he like keeps like fending him off or whatever <laughs> and then eventually the vampire does get to bite him or whatever so it's it's interesting or whatever yeah, he, he okay. ends up getting well no no the vampire gets killed because he eventually like he kills the vampire or whatever he turns and he's dressed like a classic dracula so it's like so hokey <laughs> but he kills him well then something happens whatever he like pricks his finger or whatever and like the, the blood drips into the ashes well dracula comes back ah, and then he bites nice, him or whatever nice. it's a pretty cool little episode i forget but it's hokey but it's, it's, it's fun <laughs> a lot of alien ones too in the outer limits and that's got a spooky opening as well yeah it does yeah uh joe says 45 minutes on the uh black mirror episodes which says uh, never saw those type of shows at all. Okay, yeah, I think you're in for a treat, man. Those kind of shows are really cool. Like, again, you don't have to be deeply invested like you would, like let's say, The Walking it's Dead. It's probably until, like I said, though, it's probably the best. Yeah, it says I've seen Tales from the Crypt. That's probably it. You're right in the vein of it there. You know what I mean? Like, so we're not the so much of the heavy-handed kind of horror vibe or whatever. Like, there's different things happening. You know? Yeah, like, there is. Yeah. Like twists and suspense and like uh, just yeah. like make you think, like wonder, like what the fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And then Joe says here. Uh, there was a show called Monsters as uh, the beginning was classic. Huh. Uh, Joe, do you mean the Monsters with Herman? Yes, we are familiar with the Monsters. I show. do like the Monsters, and I can't yeah, find that show anywhere. Really? Hard to find. Well, I can't even find it like on those fucking streaming shows, no unless shit. you pay for it. Have you seen <laughs> the colorized version? The, like, uh, I don't know. No black color. Black I got to see it black yeah, and white. Yeah, black and white, man. That's how it's done. Uh, let's see here, Chris says, uh, uh, I love uh, Tales of the Crypt, uh, that skeleton and all his dark humor. Is so it was awesome. I actually got the to Crypt meet the Keeper. I got to meet the Crypt Keeper, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, John Crypt Kaiser Keeper at uh, Traders Village, and they would let him do the mic in the Crypt Keeper's voice, and that sounds so cool. Yeah. His laugh, he still has it, he still sounds like the Crypt Keeper. That was hey, awesome. Kitties. Yeah, he's like, Come <laughs> see me right now in Traders Village, you know, and he, he you know, he would say where the like he's at. <clears throat> I loved uh, the Crypt Keeper, but I also loved just the Creep from Creep Show. He was just <laughs> the Creep. He was pretty cool too. Yeah. The new Creep doesn't talk. He doesn't say yeah. anything, so it's pretty cool. Uh, just oh, as wow. no an anthology show. Uh, See, it was crazy because now he's bringing something that I've never heard of, where you did too with that wolf, that wolf, the uh, werewolf show. show. Yeah, yeah, the werewolf. Oh, Steve's drinking the. Uh, he sent me the picture there of the twelfth man. It's the A uh, and M. Whoa, laundry. nice! You if you're an A and M fan. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and y'all heard the wind blowing on, on me right there. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. See? And it got right on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys want to send me a picture? Send me a picture. Uh, <laughs> Richard, was Monsters awesome. was awesome. Indeed it was. We always laugh because we say, uh, how did a Frankenstein and a vampire have a wolf, kid? You know what I mean? Man, <laughs> what, she what's cheated. going on with That's that? That's what happened. No, Grandpa was a Dracula, and she was a I don't know what she's like a sucky bitch. Like Bride of Frankenstein, was it? Lily? Yeah. Wasn't oh, she? I thought she was like a sucky bitch as well because well, she has like the white hair. Yeah, but her dad was. I know. The grandpa, it's, right? it's weird. It's, know. it's like you said. It's why, fun though. It's why funny. does you know Frankenstein and you know Lily have a werewolf? Yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then they're always. How like, do you even have a human niece? And what about uh, <laughs> Uncle Gil? Was uh, the Gil, the Gil man. man? Yeah. <laughs> And he looked fucking kind of scary. He looked like the. I wonder if that was the real suit or not. You know, <laughs> they must have just had that shit just laying around. Fucking, you know. So uh, let's see. Just says uh, I'll post oh, the beginning cool. in the group. Also, okay, I'll cool. be looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah, me as well. Are we recording? I don't even know what we're doing. No, we're not. We're oh, just okay. uh, chit chatting with okay. the friend. I'm going to bring us back in since we're wrapping it up here. But uh, give me a second, guys. So we'll make this our last block here. Uh, welcome back, guys. If you're just joining us back on audio, sorry we got so in, so much fun talking with the Friday Night Faithful. Interested in talking in the comments, but we forgot to bring you guys back in on the audio version. Not that we forgot about you, we love you guys. We found a new feature where we can bring up the comments on the screen. Uh, because in the uh, fifth dimension, in the fifth dimension, because <laughs> Double A switched sides with me, and he's obviously much better at hosting this show than I am. But I am good oh, at switching the lighting. Shit. That's what I see. This is what's on Double A side. <laughs> so I play with all these gadgets on this side here. Uh, but if you're watching us on Facebook, you'll see the colors there. So what else we got? Comment wise. Yeah, we got. Uh, who is there? Joe says the creep was probably the best. I do like him. He's awesome. Now, uh, man, I on that key collector app that Mario and Gabe told us mm -hmm. about. Man, they have so many cool like uh, the those vault of horrors. 
uh, and the Telstronic Crypt really? issues, man, those covers look great. Yeah. And they sell for like thousands, oh thousands gosh, of crazy. dollars. But that, man, the artwork is amazing. Those covers are amazing. That that uh, app I wish is they a, would reprint those. Yeah, that app is a heartbreaker, man. So it the is. prices on like you know, my nephew recently got into. He's playing the the DC villains Lego game. It's an older game, but it's cool okay. mainly by the villains. So he starts asking me about Clayface. You know what I mean? And I was oh, like, oh man, man we gotta yeah, watch yeah. the animated series, right? Yeah. So anytime he gives me something, I'm like, all right, I want to get you in. Um, so I'm like, he's, he's like, do you have any comics with him? And I said, man, I don't think I have any Clayface comics. Yeah. Let me go look. I go to Key Collector, and I'm like, oh, oh I, I don't own any, and I probably will not ever own any. So You're going to have to get modern Clayface. <laughs> I'm going to have to go find him some modern. And apparently there was like four guys that have been Clayface. Yeah, they have been. So yeah, I didn't know yeah, that or whatever. Yeah. But uh, definitely got to try to say, anybody knows any Clayface out there or can find me a Clayface, maybe that animated figure one or whatever, let me know, oh, and I'll gladly pay. That would be cool. I used to see it. I was seeing it like really? all the time at GameStop. Yeah, oh, that wow. black box, that big Clayface. And yeah, now I, I looked it up, and man, that bitch is going for a grip. And you know what? We got to go to GameStop that nobody goes to. We got to go like up on the north side. North side? Okay. Yeah, I went to the one in the quarry, and there was a lot of dope shit in there. When we do our ride, we'll make a stop there. There we go, man. There we go. It's funny with places that people never pop into. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Chris, I started our question. He is a vampire. See, He's I, a vampire. I, I so how does was. Crystal, how does a vampire and uh, Frankenstein produce their werewolves? Although Eddie does kind of look like a vampire when he's not wolfed out. Well, I mean, they would have the fangs, though, right? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's all fucking uh, underworld. Maybe maybe the here, maybe Lily's dad, Grandpa, put a werewolf dick on <laughs> Herman, you know? Fucking Herman and the werewolf dick. <laughs> Uh, just as monsters, oh, greater man. than Adam's family. I love that Adam's family too. I've seen the series. Have you ever seen the series? Because uh, Caroline Jones is the Adam's family. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. She's great as Morticia. Too. I think me and you were like both big Nick at Night watchers, mm -hmm. so I was yeah. watching them both because I was watching. I, mean, I, yeah. I said before like Dobie Gillis and yeah. like my three dads, and my dad was. I was like, how the fuck do you know these shows? I was, like, I was a kid. I'm like, Dad, it's on Nick at Night. So then we watch on Nick at Night. But I, I was always a monster. I felt like it was I, funny. I like the monsters too, but it, you know, the Adam's Family is such a great show too. Yeah. You know, Lurch. Mm -hmm. That Lurch was great. You know, yeah, the guy that plays Gomez in the show is good too. Uh, like John Aston. Yeah, the crazy yeah. guys and yeah. stuff. And uh, he came out in a good episode, or a, not a good episode, a movie, a short movie, with that has uh, as the dad Stan from the original It. I told you about this movie on Disney. You can find it on Disney right now. Disney Plus, Mr. Boogity. But that that guy comes yeah. out, the guy that plays a, a Gomez, whatever. He it's comes a fun out Halloween in movie. Uh, the Frighteners too. He comes out in the Frighteners. Very cool, very cool. And then Joe says, uh, "I like how Chuck dressed up for the show." Very suave. Go watch the TikTok, Joe, or the uh, Facebook story or Instagram story, and you'll see why I was <clears> doing my best Rod Serling impression. Yeah, Joe, go back and see the beginning, or if you have TikTok, or if your sons have TikTok. Not <laughs> he's got one for the now. Watch this podcast. I know ah, that okay. so. Uh, and I also know this, this, oh, uh, maybe shit. it might be too hot, but uh, we'll leave it on there for a little bit. Uh, and if you're listening to this audio, I just changed the colors again on the background. <laughs> I'm on double A side and it's so much fun over here. <laughs> and it's cold as fuck because the fan is on. So we usually have some beers to warm us. Uh -huh. so it's different. <laughs> it's so great when kids get to ask about comics. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, my daughter bought her first comic from Mario. So that was really cool because I bought mine from Mario. So she bought hers from Mario. And all that happened before she got her shirt today, which is the Just Another Friday Night yeah. Podcast t-shirt, She guys. picked a, a Catwoman, too. That was her first. Nice. Catwoman. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. And we've got one large left before I'm going to do another order. So if anybody wants that last large, please let me know. And I still have shirts on reserve for certain people. Crystal, I know you're holding out for one of those. She says, I... Go ahead, double A. I don't know how they had a werewolf baby. Supernaturals are talented. Makes sense. Well, Makes like sense. I said, maybe Grandpa put a werewolf dick on her. There so, may have been some witch stuff going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe maybe half a body it. of Herman, because we never see Herman's legs. Maybe it's a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone give me your best Herman laugh. Yeah, can you imagine when he comes? Oh, oh man, that's why. See, there there's a little bit uh, you there know, or, uh, what is We it? just figure it out how the hell him and literally have. In, uh, young, in Young Frankenstein, <clears throat> what, you saying? what did the monster get from you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Crystal right. thinks that's one. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, well, 
Uh, if you caught the beginning of the show, <laughs> you know, then you know a little bit about what was uh, going on tonight. But we were coming to We you. weren't talking about the monsters. We weren't talking about the monsters, actually. We were coming to you live from the fifth dimension tonight. It's been weird. Yeah, it's definitely been weird. You, you, you did not. We've been, we were sitting on opposite sides. There was like a whole other world on this side that I'm on with double A. I'm like, what the fuck's going on over here? Uh, we got some great cool shit from uh, Justin Martin. Guys, go check it out. Uh, Graph X <clears throat> Plus. <laughs> Post those again. <laughs> See what I mean? And then, uh, you know, our names have been backwards. Uh, if you want to know what we say at the end of every show, go back to the beginning of this show to, well, hear, that that, to hear that. Yeah, I know. You want to hear the same. ending? Go to the yeah. beginning. It's like Tenet. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like uh, Memento. Memento. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have we got here? Joe says Frankenstein made of parts. He actually got Wolfman Nards. You yep. know what? I think Joe's explanation might have been better. I give you props on that one, Joe. <laughs> you know me, I was always a fan of Frankenberry person. But the monsters is a mystery. We must find out the truth. Send them to Maury. <laughs> yeah, Rich. Herman, you are not oh, the father. Man. Oh man. Yeah. You know what? Eddie was cool, but he was a kid that I wasn't annoyed by. You know what I mean? So <laughs> And I like the Adam Stanley movies. I think that that pugs Those me. movies are great. And yeah. obviously Christina Ricci slay is as, uh, yeah. as Wednesday. Although yeah. I do love that meme where Wednesday is like dancing and she's like, you know, <laughs> doing the little Pete and stuff. So uh, great show, guys. Great talk all about the Twilight Zone, uh, specifically five uh, episodes in particular uh, that we jumped into specifically for, you know, like we said, Memorial Day. Uh, and, and before Don't forget D-Day. D-Day. Yes. Remember no, D-Day history, on guys. Sunday. It's yeah. a very big event not just for america for the world yeah okay? i think we have very few world war ii veterans like they, they are, are sadly you know. passing away so but again guys no reason at all for them to be forgotten obviously yep. we had memorial day just passed and we spent that day remembering had the flag fly, flying in my front yard yeah i saw that that was uh, great so that yeah. was great i wish yeah. they would come over here and do that you know what uh i should send that guy your way i wish they would i, I, I wouldn't mind doing it it's 30 bucks for the whole year and it goes to the boy scouts that's awesome. so it's great yeah, i like it better awesome. than girl scout cookies which is uh, saying a lot because I love cookies. Yeah, so. you do. Yeah, I do. Uh, so let's hey, see here. I don't know if you guys realize, but he's fucking controlling this right-handed. Yeah, and uh, it's not that's not as fun as I had hoped. Oh, that's right. I forgot what? about this. Rob yeah, Zombie's making the Monsters I'm, movie? I'm a little leery. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's the way I feel. Too. What is he going to make it? Blood and good? <laughs> Friday Night Faithful, what do you guys say about the Rob Zombie Monsters movie? I was like, golly. Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's be good. I'm sure Sherry's gonna be a Lily. Sherry, <laughs> his wife. Oh, really? And he puts in Is everything. Is she in the on the other one? Yeah, she oh, puts okay. her, He puts her in everything. Yeah, she's the the crazy uh, the crazy chick from, from the. the you yeah. know what? Uh, I'm not except for the Halloween's. I'm not that deep in his whole movie shtick. I, I, I would watch him. My wife's a huge Rob Zombie fan. Okay, so. okay, yeah. I'll check it out. I'll watch anything. Let's yeah. Who's watching the Conjuring tonight? Are you guys gonna watch tonight? Uh, Are you gonna I'll hold see. off? You're gonna wait. Uh, I'll probably go straight home and, and start checking it out. So um, we won't talk about it here on this show. Maybe it will be discussed on the show. Like now, watch this. I don't know, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> Crystal says, "I just hope they're not hillbilly <laughs> monster monsters." I know. Yeah, yeah. Herman's gonna have a fucking you know. right, right. It's such an interesting uh, <laughs> choice for him to do that or whatever. But okay, Rob Zombie. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I give it to you. Uh, yes, his wife is in it. I don't know about it. All right, oh, all right. Yeah. Is this like old news, or is this just recently going to come uh, out? I mean, I want to know. I want to know some more. So, uh, Crystal says I like some of his movies. I do like the the first two. Uh, what is it? The Devil's Rejects and the uh, the the second one. I forget. That was House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand, or that first one is House of a Thousand. Okay. That one's Devil Rejects. Okay. The Halloween, I don't like how he made an origin for Michael. I think that should have always been a mystery. Mm. So, I the Michael looked cool though. Look, Tyler Maine was awesome. That, that, Sabretooth? Big fucker. Man. Sabretooth yeah. from... Oh, that's uh, him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great, oh, great. And the mask. I mean, there's certain things I think he did. Certain things. I just don't like the, the typical background. Right, you know? right. I mean, you got to ask yourself. I mean, that's... You know, Halloween, that's a that's a beast to tackle. I would never... Yeah. You can't touch that, man. Yeah. That's, a, and, that's too much. You know, John Carpenter all of a sudden like gave it like bad reviews, too. But oh, really? <laughs> yeah, after he after he told Rob Zombie that he thought they were great. So I was like, all right. Well. Turns, turns it turns down. <clears> yeah. Okay. All right, then. Well, you oh, know. wow. Crystal says... Uh, he just bought the rights to make Dracula. I thought those were all going to Blumhouse because I thought Blumhouse 
was going to restart the whole horror monster thing. Right. right. Wow. Yeah, that's... the monster verse or whatever. Yeah. So, Holy that's shit. interesting. I mean, I, I, now that I can feel him. See, like to see what he does with that, maybe. You know? Wow. Um, okay. What was the last good Dracula, man? Bram Stoker's one? That's uh, the, the, yeah. The, the, uh, if you're talking about one? just straight up Dracula, right? Just straight mm -hmm. up. Uh, you know what? I wasn't. I thought Dracula on Toad was fine. Oh, that's right. You did say I that. I thought that was fine. Yeah. I thought that Netflix one, Blue, that one that, that they're like a three parter. Oh, really? That's oh, okay. okay. And, and that was supposed to go into the, the universal horror. That was supposed to be the first one. Oh, that's but right. That one didn't said. make money. And then the Tom Cruise mummy flops. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Joe says that the last few months, that, that's when okay. the news come out. Okay. All right. Well, and, and I like that horror stuff's happening. You know, that's then cool. Crystal says, House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Regis, and then Three from Hell. Three from Hell was more comedy, you know? That? Really? Yeah. That went straight from like really horror to like comedy. I would check these <laughs> out because I know they've got Sid Haig, and I, I think Sid Haig is cool. And, and so Three from I'll Hell is like his last movie. He did look pretty sickly. sickly oh, right. Oh, really? Yeah. Already? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely check them out. You know? uh, best classic monster movie still is Monster Squad. <laughs> you know what? I always say that the creatures in that movie look really good. Like the wolf looks good. The the, yeah. the, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon looks fucking scary. Even the Dracula it looks pretty. You know, I'm gonna give him the classic kind of outfit, but it looks pretty, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty intense looking. I think those are good creatures. Uh, really I've always thought uh, Gary Oldman just looks fucking sweet. I mm -hmm. love the way he looks in that gray suit. Mm -hmm. You know, the armor. Looks mm -hmm. very intimidating that armor and the old know. man Dracula like and the old man. Know. Well, even like that robe that he has on at the end, you know, yes, yeah. like great. <laughs> yeah, uh, he looks great as the wolf. That's a, a oh, very wolf too. interesting yeah. version looking of the wolf man. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's a very uh, interesting the way to make it look. Yeah, oh, that was fucking scary. Yeah, but um, no man, yeah, that's I love that Bram Stoker Dracula, but that Coppola one is just really fantastic. I've got all those pops you've seen them on my. On our thing there so uh where are we at here uh right below uh there we go uh crystal says i'm with you the netflix dracula story was really dope you did like so no i didn't like it i thought it was uh terrible it, it was uh, what was it what, 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 why didn't you it like was kind of like a modern like he was like it was a modern story uh, a bit i don't remember but i thought the guy was too cheesy he made it too cheesy okay. it wasn't he didn't look good i feel like, the like dracula that hell scene cheesy dracula <laughs> like you know you know that dracula was cheesy. yeah but that felt kind of like tongue in cheek i know it did i know it was this like one, some, it was supposed to be like a 50s like this one felt movie. like it was supposed to be serious but it was not so okay no, no. <laughs> My bad. But you know what I mean, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I like Van Helsing. I think it's no, good. no. I like the movie, but that Dracula was like oh, no, very man, fucking so. cheesy. Yeah, it's super cheesy. <laughs> uh, oh, Rich says it's all about Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Favorite, favorite Dracula monster movie. Yeah, that's <laughs> rad, man. You know what? I'm telling you guys, I love the monster cereals. Those are my favorite cereals. <laughs> Number one, you got to bring back Yummy Mummy and the Fruit Brew. Oh, that's right. They took them off, right? Yeah. And once you bring them back, let's get the monster cereal movie going. Whoa. Forget Rob Zombie. Yeah. I'm buying the rights to it. Damn. I'm, I'm going to make it happen. And on that note, we're Oop. going purple up in here. Purple so we're in the, we're in the twilight zone in the fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Joe says, I'm here for the monster verse. It needs to be done right. And that's why I thought Blumhouse was going to get it. Yeah. Because um, if there is one studio that will do that, I think it's Blumhouse. I you, thought The Invisible Man was actually pretty good. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I it was like good, it. good suspense, good intensity. Yeah. Uh, she acted great. Yeah. And then the effects were neat. So yeah. uh, I know that was supposed to be tied in as well. That's yeah, but that was actually it. like, that's supposed to be like now the first one. And that one has made a shitload of money for a very little budget. So. Yeah, and remember too, that was kind of one of the home premieres during the start of the pandemic. It yes, was, it was. It was, it was in that's theater right. for like a minute. And, and then they. Yeah, that's right, because I ended up buying that movie. On pay per view. Oh, really? Okay. Because they had released it afterwards. You know what? We did too. We paid the twenty yeah. bucks, so, and like, it was worth it. I was like, yeah, yeah we're on. Oh, no, home. I thought so too because I was like, it's like it'll be more. <laughs> it'll be more with four tickets. You yeah, know, it'll be more than twenty bucks with just four tickets. Remember <laughs> the pandemic, guys? Remember when we thought it was kind of cool at first? You know what I mean? With being at home, and you know, and then we were like, we hated it or whatever. Oh and, man, people you know, right you know what, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does he say? Uh, I wish Van Helsing. Uh, was continue man i was so excited for i love the movie i i thought it was great i don't know how i didn't make money that sucked at it yeah you know because i was like oh cool uh he jackman's gonna have another franchise yeah because it you was know? kind of in the midst of his uh yeah, with x-men uh, fame yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so 
I gotta say, some of these lights on this side don't cast me so so handsome. It looks like we're in two different places. Here. <laughs> he but, does uh, not like this area. Uh, He's now, a I'm lefty. Not, I'm not it's not a righty. I'm not ready to get back on, on that side. Uh, next week. <laughs> Chris Rocky, fifth dimension. Crystal says, "I love the Van Helsing movie too." Okay, Van Helsing getting some love for yeah. the Friday Night Faithful. Yeah, All right, right. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I guess like, I didn't hate that one. I just was like, "No, I liked it a lot." I liked how it kind of felt like a fifties movie. Yeah, you know. So that was cool. But if somebody were to put me and say, "What well, did you buy it? I would say no. And they'd say, when was the last time you saw it? I'd be like, damn it. It's been a long time. I actually it do. It was probably own, on cable. I something. do own the movie, and I have seen it okay. quite a few times. Those I are like my, Benny as Igor. Those are my criteria. Yeah. Benny from The Mummy. I like oh, nice. Igor. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, Joe says, yes, Invisible Man was good. I hope it does launch some movies that don't need to be blockbusters, but good classically made. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Blumhouse is perfect for that. Very little budget, but those movies always end up making like over a hundred million. So speaking of kind of horror movies, uh, we hear that another Evil Dead is on the horizon as well, really? right? Yeah, that's what I heard. I think that Sam okay. Raimi and and, uh, and Bruce uh, Bruce Campbell is on board. So. Well, he had the show. They had the show for a while on Stars. Remember? Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, and I heard that I, that was, had done good. People liked it. So, okay. You know. Uh, I love that original Evil Dead, the first one. You know what I mean? And I love that episode of Creepshow that it kind of was a, a, a play to it. With the, did you watch that episode? Oh, yes, the yes, I did. And yes. I wonder if all that ties in, if there's like a, a running thread of that whole story. Because in that episode, his brother, Ted yeah. Raimi, plays himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, what? You know what I mean? Like he exists in the world of the Evil Dead. You know? uh, Crystal says, honestly, my tattoos that I have done on my leg, uh, I took a lot of inspiration from the Van Helsing movie. Really, cool. Crystal? Is, okay, is, is she in the Friday Night Faithful? She is. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Send some pics of your leg if you can. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Which ones did you get tattooed? Did, did you get the, got, like a werewolf? I believe I've seen. The pretty Gabriel. Cool. I mean, the Hugh Jackman man, uh, werewolf. Because uh, he turns into a werewolf. Yeah, I don't remember what which one is, but that's the one I remember it specifically sets out in my mind. Whatever. But okay. Yeah. Feel free. Uh, post away, y'all. Post away. Did y'all watch that Army of the Dead? Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And if you want to hear a great podcast about Army of the Dead, I will highly suggest that now watch this podcast with Lucky and Joe. They did a great big breakdown of it, and they found and pointed out some really cool things in it that I missed. I was like, cool. oh, I didn't know that. That was like, you know, they were like, a I enjoyed it. I, I, yeah. You hadn't watched it last time we talked. So yeah. okay, I enjoyed it. I <clears throat> I usually enjoy the zombie movies. They're fine. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this one is a bigger budget, so. I liked it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I liked it a lot too. I thought that it was a fun movie. It had, uh, when I was hearing negatives about it, I was like, "What were you going and expecting?" To me, I, it was. I know. I, when, when you're expecting a zombie movie, they don't expect like a Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> it had action. It had like. A, a, it, it had a plot. It had yeah. a plot. There was a big ass plot holes yeah. or whatever. There was some stuff I didn't like. Could have done without. You could have you could have stripped out some of that stuff and just made it even tighter. I liked that it was like kind of a, almost like a Latino led team. It was like four Latinos, and you know I think we forget that Bautista's is some type right. of Latino. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, him and of course the chick that was like a callback to uh, from Alien, she was cool. And then the other Latino dude, yeah, the, right. the YouTubers, right. and so that incorporating that aspect that's or right. whatever. That's and right. so uh, you know the fucking zombie tiger. I mean that was badass. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know. It was fine. It was was that fine. a shot at Walking Dead with Ezekiel? I maybe yeah. we never got to see that in that one. So I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Rich says, "Let me change it up." I hated Van Helsing. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. It was a good movie. I wish it would have continued. It, it's okay to hate it, Rich. If you didn't love it, was it for everybody? Nah, you know I mean, like I said, just admitted it. He's like, yeah, I'm not. I, I liked it, but it's not rewatchability. Some anymore. stuff I'm going to go home and rewatch. The Twilight yeah. Zone. Van Helsing. CM has a very specific guideline, so rewatchability. It's very tight. Two, two, two points there. Uh, Joe says, "And for the Universal mo Movie Monsters, watch Abbott and Costello meet the Wolfman." Can I go wrong with that? I, I he might mean uh, Frankenstein. Oh, okay. Because that Didn't one has mean? Lon Chaney. That one has Bella Lugosi. Yeah. And then even Vincent Price does the voice of an Invisible Man. Nice. So it's like wow. My mom and dad love those. They yeah. always uh, refer to those. And what was so cool is that I've heard that the you know the characters stayed kind of in character. They were still being like the regular Frankenstein. So. I liked it. I I mean those are horror movie legends. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. And comedy uh, legends with Abbott and Costello. Yeah. So. Uh, Richard says, speaking of vampire movies, what about Underworld? I love that first Underworld. The first one is uh, really solid. I yeah, think. Really I like good. that one a lot. Yeah. It really uh, made my love for vampires grow again. Yeah, you know, was she in all of them? Kate yeah, Beckinsale. Yeah, she was. So, yeah. So, yeah, it yeah. went off it's the rails the somewhere. That doesn't pop up after part two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere it got away from me, and I was kind of like, okay, I didn't need to go back, whatever. But it was doing some and cool see, things for me too. Like I'm a huge werewolf fan, so mm -hmm. like 
you know, just them bringing back werewolves was fucking cool. And then I think part three yeah. is the origin of the werewolf story. That's so right. I, the rise you know, of I'm, a lichen I'm like huge that. on werewolves. So. I laugh because I remember your brother impersonating uh, Victor a lot as a Victor. Yeah, he loved Victor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he loved Victor. That guy's a good actor, then. I like him in uh, Love Actually. <laughs> I know. He's fucking funny in that movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe says, we always get happy when we get some Raza on screen. <laughs> there we go. I know. I'm like, man, where's our peeps at, man? Right on. I, I feel you, Joe, on that. I was like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. Uh, let's uh -oh. see. We're doing the color change here. And uh, that's kind of subtle. I don't know. I tell you, but this, I don't know how you do that. To you. How do you do the fucking whole show like this? I'm like, I am so blind right now. Like, you know what I mean? I already um, have my angle, man. I have my angle. There you go. You're right, AA. Oh, oh the Frank is. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I, I I know it's weird. It's a weird title, because uh, it more it deals more with uh, the Wolfman than it does with Frankenstein. That's what's weird. <laughs> I thought they meant all the Universal monsters. It, yeah, it is in that movie. Oh, okay. It's in Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. But they all come out. They all come out, but it's cool because it's Lon Chaney, it's Bella Bagosi, you know. So yeah. it's you have the classic Wolfman, you have the classic Dracula. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, and the Lon only thing would have been cool if Boris would have been Frankenstein. Yeah. That would have been fucking now, cool. Now, see, I can't remember what it was I was yeah. watching, but they were talking about that where Boris Karloff, he they did like an album and he pretty much talked about the Universal Monsters or whatever. Well, I looked this up on YouTube or whatever, and you can listen to it or you can hear him talk about the monsters. And uh, it's got clips cut it, excuse me, from the movies or whatever with the other actors or whatever. But he talks about the actors as well, like who they are oh. and how they like, you know, okay. how to love and affinity for the characters. It's pretty neat. Like there's apparently an actual album uh, that they made back at that time, whatever, I guess we were trying to like garner up, you know, um, interest again, interest again in that. Um, but, uh, and he has a really cool, find, he has oh, a cool movie that he narrates, you know, Black Sabbath. Mm. Uh, it's a, it's an anthology movie too, a horror anthology that he narrates. So no that's shit. pretty cool. Yeah. It's actually where the band got the name from. Really? Yeah. Pretty yeah. So look it up. Uh, Boris Karloff, Black Sabbath. Uh, Joe says it has all of them in it. That's what's so good about it. Yeah, it is. Like I said, and you know, just having that cameo, that little voice of Vincent Price. Because, oh, like yeah. I said, man, at that time, Vincent Price was your horror guy. Mm -hmm. That was like you needed Vincent Price if you're going to do a horror movie. You know, yeah, that voice, that look that he had. You know, yeah. I mean, I just saw that he's going to be in a comic with Elvira, so that's going to be pretty cool. Like, drawn in, awesome. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's always you know, awesome. It's a guy you draw him, and you're going to hear his voice. So yeah. it's like if they I never mean, Michael you know, Jackson wanted him for Thriller, you know, and Edward Scissorhands, Tim Burton wanted him, you know. I mean, totally, man, that was a legend. Yeah, yeah. dude, that's you know? so awesome. We got him, at Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Right? So for Tim Burton, that must have been like, oh, dude, dude, huge. You're working the, with the, 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 the Gothic. You know, mm -hmm. all that stuff that he's known for, you know. Uh, <laughs> double leg dropping knowledge. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's what I was doing. That's right I got there. the gauntlet back there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Crystal said, I mean, who who does it? I love Elvira. You have want, the distinction of meeting, meeting her yeah, in costume. in costume, yeah. Gosh, I love dang. Elvira. I wanted to be her when I grow up. Elvira is, everything about her just sells out. Uh, Crystal, if you go, she's having a book. Go to her website. She's... Like you can pre-order an autographed copy of hers for twenty nine ninety nine. That's not bad for an Elvira autograph. Yeah. Uh, go to her website and it'll show you links of where you can buy the book from. I need and you can get her autograph. I need Elvira to come back in costume so I can meet her. I got. Some I don't know how Billy Madison did yeah. it. Yeah, because I, I heard she's doing the costume less and less. Now yeah, she too, is. So. Like well, Mario said mm -hmm. too. He was like, "Man, you got lucky that you yeah. know she came." That's why I was like, "I don't know how yeah. Billy Madison." I'd be willing to travel for that a little bit of a Ooh, ways maybe, to get it because yeah, that's pretty iconic. And who knows how much longer she's going to be doing it? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I got to meet her, Cassandra Peterson. She was wonderful with it's, my dad. It's weird, uh, but not in costume. It's weird, right? Like how everything she puts out, it just sells out like crazy. Yeah. You know? Remember, I've told this story before that her and Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens, they're very, very smart because they own their property yeah, outright. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and she has her shit on all kinds of websites, guys. I look for her stuff all the time, and it is it's always sold out. Yeah, and it's fucking expensive. Like, I've like, always wanted calendars. She has calendars mm -hmm. that just always sell. She even sells like old calendars. Yeah. Like from 2018, and, 2017. And you know what? She does that smart. She only puts certain merch on certain sites. Yeah. So you can go to like yeah. Creepsville. I have a wonderful, I'll, I'll post it in the Friday Night Faithful, but you guys have probably seen my mouse pad before. It's like where your wrist <laughs> rests on her boobs. But uh, yeah, yeah, she's got a great um, uh, a shirt on a site called Fright Rags. It's a baseball tee and it's her oh. holding two beers, but it's uh, it's not Coors Light. It's uh, it's something, you know, cool. Like she's always just like, but uh, it's, it's, 
Number one, it's fucking 38 bucks for a baseball team, and it's always sold out. So I can never get it. Like I said, I, I love that line in the movie where, like, she bumps her head on the car, and he's like, how's your head? It's like, I never had any complaints about it before. Fucking <laughs> 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 okay, classic Elvira, man. She's so awesome. Uh, Joe says, uh, Thriller was awesome. Price is what put it over. I mean, man, that laugh at the end, <laughs> fucking awesome. I can't even do it justice. No, but that's, you know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Crystal says, yeah, I bought makeup off her website. Oh, and I just got her movies on DVD. Yeah, there you Very go. Very nice. There you go. Very nice. Uh, Joe says, I always like those creature feature hosts. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda Shear. What do you call Rhonda Shear? Rhonda Shear is on there, too. Where's Rhonda Shear at? She needs to see some stuff. Joe says he likes Elwire and Spengali. Mm, <laughs> I forgot about Sven, that guy. Spengali. <laughs> uh, Foxy Rocks is a fan of his. And I, was talking I about forgot him. about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's like in our conversation. Rich is, Rich is giving this. I yellow. watch the Elwire movie every season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. There was a time on Prime where there was like 13 nights or something like that. Yes, it was yes. uh -huh. And if you ever watch those movies, she pops up during them. Uh -huh. and she's like, what's going on with this guy? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like so one of the like movies. movie theater, right? Three yeah. Thousand, yeah. Whatever. One of the movies had fucking Bill Maher in it before he was like oh, Bill right. Maher. And I was like, look at this fucking guy. That's right. Because I remember Murder of the Children. Murder of mm -hmm. the Children. He comes out one episode. He's like some stupid game show. <laughs> yeah. And they're fucking, those movies are terrible. And I was like, it needs Elvira to pop out in it to make it worth it. Yeah. So great shit, guys. Uh, we gave you guys a whole block, but I think we're going to close it out. It's been a blast and a joy hanging out with y'all. Uh, shit, maybe we need to start later. So you guys get in the <laughs> The sun was still up, right? So, yeah, you creatures of the night you that guys, pop out. You guys truly are. The Friday night faithful are creatures of the night. They're the Friday night faithful. So that's at yeah, night. There you they go. There you go. Yeah. at night so guys thank you so much for joining us tonight in the fifth dimension um I have i'm been gonna go grab a margarita there you go i'm <laughs> gonna let double a get him he's been so uh supportive of me man i really appreciate oh, it yeah. whatever yeah. so uh you know me i'm gonna go grab a horror movie or two and maybe we'll watch some more or, episodes of the twilight no you have to watch the mass with just Mm, that's right. I gotta yeah, watch that gotta episode. Watch that episode. I gotta watch that one, guys. See if that jogs the memory. Definitely, definitely. So uh I think that's it. Let's see. Joe says <laughs> good night, guys. Yeah, Great guys and now we found this new feature, so we'll probably be throwing <laughs> yeah. your comments yeah, up see, on it there. Loves it. <laughs> uh make sure to check your spelling and you know I have you up here looking like a, a nut. Uh, let's see, Rich says it's always fun, guys. Have have good night, Richard. Night. Rich, we have appreciate you showing up. Never late here, guys. You guys are always, always welcome. Crystal, uh, good night. Good have night, a good Crystal. Weekend. Uh, and let's see who else here we got. Uh, Jason, Jason, good night, hey, man. Jason. I'm glad you're healthy. Yes, man, totally, man. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, Joe. Oh, here. shit. Eric Stosmax? <laughs> no, not yeah, that one. No, not that one. Not that one. I'll watch oh, Eric Stosmax. Uh, He's rich. He killed me. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, we're gonna not. We're you know they take Rich's comment yeah, off here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go back to hide on oh, that one. Joe, get us something on there, Joe, for Rich. Yankees, there. please, <laughs> please, somewhere, guys. Well, tonight <laughs> from the fifth dimension, it has been uh, one of your two hosts. I am Chuck MC, <laughs> and this has been Adam Adamantium. And if you want to know what we say at the end of every night, uh, every show, guys. Go check out the beginning of this show. We will leave you uh, with that. We're not going to tell you here what we always say. Uh, but we got a little something <laughs> from Joe there. Yankees. Me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. We greatly appreciate you guys being here tonight. Uh, it's been wonderful okay, hanging with you. Yankees, and we will see you guys next Friday <laughs> night. Good night. Good night.